Painkiller already, 563 with our guest, Finster. Taylor? This episode of PKA brought to you by Goat.com and Smartmouth. A couple of wonderful sponsors. We'll talk more about them later. Finster, thank you so much for joining us and taking the time to get all dolled up. Oh. We were all hoping you would. Half a day it took me. So long. Even what he tweeted at me that the show starts in <laughs> starts in seven hours or something. I think he's getting ready an hour ago. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Is that how long truth. that took? All oh. half a day? I would imagine you're quick by now, right? Yes. Uh, I've made some like improvements in my overall since I've been doing it for so long, I'm I've got like speedier at it, but it's it's still far too long, an annoyingly long time. <laughs> <laughs> Is any Finster. part? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, I, I just imagine some of our audience doesn't know you already, although we've talked about you before. Who are you? Oh God, how confusing! Would, how confused right? would they be? You can. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, what I really looks. hope is that we have a few deaf fans who watch with captions, and they're just over there, just like, <laughs> "Fuck, how do I get it to one? Can I just get it to let her her screen? Can I can I make that happen? <laughs> yeah, right. How do I get <laughs> Woody out of this picture? <laughs> oh, man. I, want, I want those three now. uggos out of here. <laughs> get these guys out and make her full. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Crop. So right really, there. like, how did how did this start? Like, you were a Twitch streamer before you started the uh, the cross dressing. How did that kind of become a thing? Weirdly, not. I actually Twitch was like the avenue that I chose to like expand on it. Like, it started oh, okay. in a different way. I started. Um, Weirdly enough, I can't. Uh, would I started in the same way Woody did? I do Minecraft, and I still do. I still, I still have a like half a million subscriber Minecraft channel that I still operate. I still run that, um, and I do that without even acknowledging any of this. I live like a Hannah Montana life of it, and I did that for like. Uh, oh, I started in like 2015. I think it must have been like three, four years before I did any of this. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even do this on that channel. I did it on a. I made an Omegle video. Um, you know that Omegle, that site you see a yeah, yeah. bunch of like, uh, dicks and a bunch dick. of you know people wanting to talk. <laughs> I guess because uh, I wanted to get everyone's reaction. A girlfriend at the time had done my makeup, and I did a video just going through all of that. And mm -hmm. I posted online. I'm I, I'm pretty competent with editing, so I put that on because I thought it was some funny footage. And it sat at like 500 views for like 10 months. And then, in I think like a weekend, it it went to like four hundred thousand views, and I suddenly it was just oh, I should I should be doing more of this. Yeah, <laughs> I went to Twitch for it. Nice. And what, how was the reception at first on Twitch when you started it? Was everybody full on loving it right away? What? Because I I started doing it on Twitch and I didn't promote it, so I had like fifty viewers doing it. Uh, like less than that, like barely any people watching, like 10, 20 view viewers at like the start. And so it grew its own little fandom. Like the, the 20 people that came from my channel that had recognized me were obviously very shocked to see me a bit looking a bit yeah. different. Um, and then it started to grow like on its own. So it, I didn't, I didn't get like a huge, like, holy, what the, what the hell are you doing reaction? I got like mainly, uh, people kind of were in on it as they, as they came in. It was all yeah. right. Well, it seems to be going very well for you. Yeah, I was really yeah. taken aback. <clears throat> for those who don't know, I've, I've told it before, but I was I was streaming a month or so ago, and uh, and Fenster raided me um, with a couple thousand people right when I was just about to get off, and I was just and there were the, the chat was all like, "We're here for the thigh, we're here for the thigh, like 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 we want the thigh," and I'm just like. Is this like a wing stop joke or something? Like I don't get it. Like, like I'm not showing any thigh. Like, like what are y'all talking about? Like, like thighs. Like, like chicken thighs. What? What? And like, they're like, no, Finster's thighs. We're here because Finster's gonna show us her thighs. And I'm just like, oh, okay, Finster. Who? Well, thanks, Finster. And they're they're like, search who? Search who Finster is? <laughs> I'm just like, what? Like, yes, so hot. And I'm just like, oh, okay. And I'm just, I'm over here. I'm just like, Finster. And I, I wish I had the reaction because I just go, oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's so confusing. It's so confusing at first because you pull it off really well. You pull it yeah. off. In every, everyone I've shown your photos to, I start off by saying, hey, let me tell me what you think of this person. And I just show them your photos. And they're like, ooh, she's pretty. And I'm like, yeah, right? <laughs> let me show you one of her videos. Oh, is she one of those Twitch girls that gets naked and stuff? I'm like, kind of. <laughs> in a way, in a way. Yeah. And then I show a video, of, a video of you, you speaking, and then they are very confused. Yeah, that's uh, your reaction to it was the I love that clip. Uh, I'm, 
it's so good because you, you tried to be really uh like what's the word um politically correct about yeah. it <laughs> it was so funny to watch you like stumble <laughs> over what you could and couldn't say yeah because like, i rated you and what you said exactly was like when you googled me you went thank you to this kind individual <laughs> uh, what they identify as <laughs> it was so good you cool by me. yeah, yeah I, didn't I, know, I didn't know because I didn't know if you were a transsexual if you're transgender if you were yeah. I, I, did, I didn't know what you were it was very confusing <laughs> and like you'd been kind enough to raid me so I certainly wasn't gonna like give you any shit or anything or be like what is that thing <laughs> um, oh what an abomination I don't know what it is, but I want to fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've I've made my it. Like a say bit no, of a... but my cock can't hear. So <laughs> it's uh, I mean... yeah, very confusing at the time. Um, I think I've mostly figured it out now. <laughs> <laughs> just mostly now. <laughs> just mostly. Just mostly. Because like I, I'm curious. This is this is something that people like like have told. They're like. He must enjoy that, right? Like, like, like he's got to really enjoy the, the the dressing up at this point. Like, 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 if you do, you do do you, do you enjoy like going through the rigmarole or, or or and and like getting the attention and stuff? Like, is it? It fun depends how point? you mean. It depends how you mean because obviously getting views on YouTube is is very fun, uh, sure. very very nice. Um, but I know like that what's implied by that is like, is this your thing? You know, you're a kink. Yeah, and no, it's not. But uh, it's what it's one of those things that just the perfect storm of events happened that I've played through now and like seen where the spiral started to go down, um, and it was just I was always like always one of those dudes, you know, like there was always that one kid in like high school. I don't know what your equivalent is, like when you're like fifteen something like that. Yeah. Um, that like the girl, like girls, popular girls want to put like makeup on them. That's just what happens at that age. I was that kid. That was me. Um, so I was just fairly used to having like makeup and stuff put on me um in high school that was that did you parlay that into did you go to with frank castle huh frank castle you ever go to high school with him he's known to <laughs> to sissy hypno folks so I just maybe <laughs> oh is that the guy that <laughs> yes i was just wondering maybe yeah. he got his paws on you and get a little sissy hypno action we've been in contact for a very long time uh oh, <laughs> <he's been> <laughs> all these videos with strange spirals spirals uh, yep <laughs> No, uh, the oh god, that meme. But no, um, I, I, it's never really, it's never really been my thing. It's just at the time I was so fine with it happening. A girlfriend did it, did my makeup. I was like, oh fuck it, it was funny. There was a, a, some, you know, you get those stupid sponsor emails that make no sense, and they have clearly never watched your channel. They mm. just say, so, okay, you're at a uh, million subscribers. The mass email everyone, and then um. I got one of those from like a uh, like one of those cheap clothing companies, but they were saying like, "Oh, you're a perfect fit for our brand," and on this female clothing company. And I'd never done this before, and I thought it was so funny that they'd really follow through and pay me for this. Mm -hmm. That like my girlfriend came over, did my makeup for, and everything. And there's pictures of it that I don't think I've ever seen in the light of day because mm -hmm. it is not up to par with where I'm at now. But uh, no, it just it just kind of slowly became my thing. I had like the personality from it from YouTube, so I was all right at recording videos. You know, when you were uh, when you were getting dolled up by the girls in high school, did mm -hmm. that ever lead to some action on your part? Well, okay, <laughs> the uh, I, bet. I dated a girl that was big on that for like a couple weeks, and there was another one that was a little bit, but not. It's it's really kicked off now that like. Mm -hmm. I've gotten better at it. It's surprisingly a good tactic, just in case you guys wanted to buy a wig and a dress. Um, Way ahead of it you. Works. <laughs> <laughs> we would all be ugly women, more or less. Uh, yeah. okay, we no, we, we no. We've I'm had the debate on this in the Discord. Who would make the best uh, in the Hangout Discord? Who would make the best woman? There is a there is a tier list, but I don't know if it would hurt your feelings. No, it wouldn't hurt oh, my yeah. feelings. <laughs> Wait, I is wanna... it a host tier list or a hangout tier list? No, it's a host tier list. Host My guess list. of what they said would be Kyle number one, and then Woody, and then me. That's my guess as well. Yeah. Is that yes. right? But I, I, it was really I, harmful, I, hurtful. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I actually put you at number one, though, because I remember, like, back well, at, before, because <laughs> I'd yeah. never seen you from below here. <laughs> I didn't know that you were just jacked. 
<laughs> I watched like the old clips of you without a beard, and I was like, oh no, he's got a kind of feminine face. He could maybe pull it off a little mm -hmm. bit better than Woody, at least. Is your hair yeah. that fabulous, or is it a wig? Yeah, this is this is my real hair now. You know, you're crushing um, it. Looks great. <laughs> it's I've been growing it out. I said it as like a sub sub goal to grow it out, and I it kind of works now. I look really good in hats suddenly. <laughs> and I never used to look good in hats. It's cool. <laughs> I like hats now. Oh, oh tremendous man. looking in hats. Yeah, yeah and out better. of hats. <laughs> 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 no, well, I'm glad to hear that. Like you were at least. So how did you determine what your the, the how did you stuff. determine what your what, what your breast size was going to be? Because there had to be a point where you were like, all right, there's small, medium, large, and absurd. Like 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 at what point did you did you pick a a, a boob size? I have all of them. They're interchangeable. <laughs> I have a drawer of all of them laid out. Uh, the ones that occasionally, like, someone will donate, like, some upset <laughs> amount of money, and then just say, like, go a size up, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's easy for me. It doesn't, it, it's, it weighs a little bit more, but it's not that big of a deal. What Asking a hilarious a friend, way to make a living. Cost? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, what, got... what, what would it cost to go up a cup? I've been donated like a thousand dollars to go up like to the largest one immediately, or like five hundred. To I've got like e cups that are like oh. they have a back to them that sticks to you that is mildly mm -hmm. uncomfortable. It sound it feels about as much as it you know it feels the same way it sounds, but they're like e cups, and if you do that, they will. <laughs> it's a really weird sensation that you get because it's you're feeling the weight of them because they're heavy. So you're always starting the streams with the smaller tits. And then, you know, incentivize a little bit of donos. That's good. Yeah. That's way healthier a little than bit what of Only feedback. Use Me Blade did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got a little bit of feedback as well. So a little bit less harmful than what Blade did. <laughs> These are just <laughs> fake boobs. Well, the whole thing is just ridiculous. Um, I, I'm convinced <laughs> that this is your kink now. And, and <laughs> what, what I'm even more convinced of is that you're going to eventually let the person that you're going to end up with it's going to be their kink, so now you're now it's definitely going to have to be your kink. Yeah, we've um, <laughs> <laughs> just the resigned. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not mine. This is my popular belief, but I would say that the, if I was going to be with someone, right, they'd have to be into it. They'd have to at least be okay with it. Yeah, right. Otherwise, it's a requirement. it requirement. Yeah, if you start if Woody started wearing a dress all of a sudden, I imagine there'd be a bit of pushback from his wife, like. It'd be a bit of a... It's worth trying. Yeah, we could all do so. it. People will donate for us to undress and yeah. be men again. Five hundred dollars. Put a goddamn shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> you piece of shit. That's great. Start working <laughs> biceps again, please. <laughs> <laughs> you have a bulldog so, shirt uh, on. Yes, oh, George Bulldogs. Oh, I decided. Everybody's coming on board the bandwagon. Let's go. I Unlike Kyle, when the when my blues are in the playoffs, he goes for whatever team they're against. No, I'm a I'm a great, wonderful guy, a good friend. I'm on Team Bulldogs, not just because okay. Mizzou already trashed their season. Certainly not. Well, you could have gone Alabama on me. You could have you could have gone full Crimson Tide. You could you could just just Roll Tide could have been your 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 go to line. If they win, if they beat Georgia, I'm going to be a Roll Tide fan. Or sure. boom, they're gonna right? they're gonna. He told yes. me he's going to have sex with his sister just to celebrate. Oh, that's a good one. Alabama thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah. I know, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> it works because he has no sister. It's less insulting. Have sex with my brother dressed up Finn style like a sister. <laughs> <laughs> Your younger brother, he could be a cutie. I don't oh. know about that. How old is the younger brother? <laughs> that you can uh, say that he's like, uh, he's eleven. <laughs> no, I'm mean, he's, he's, he's in his early twenties. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I have like I have like a nine year old brother. God, oh. fuck. Can you imagine? Like, 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 I've always wondered if like what that would be like. Like, if like if if sex with a nine year old, the, the child. Yeah, no. I mean they're just so little, and you could throw them around, and like if they don't do what you tell them, you just send them to their room. No, not sex with a nine-year-old, you fuck. <laughs> no, no, like if, if you're if your sex father, with his sister, you idiot. Like if any of our like, like, like all three of our fathers are like 50, 60, 70, I think, in order, something like that, yeah. roughly. Um right -ish. so like what if they had another kid? You're gonna have to put headphones on, my my sweetness. As oh, much as I hate to muff, muff your beautiful hair. Um I'm so sorry. no, Thank you're good. You. No problem, man. But um <clears throat> but if one of our dads like decided 
think I want another one. Now, in some cases, that's that that's like like we require what adoption over here. But carry on. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. With the advances in medical science, maybe they could maybe they could make your. I think my mom just turned seventy one. That would be a that'd be a rough trip. That would be like a global phenomenon if a seventy one year old woman had a child. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if that's possible anymore. Yeah, I don't think but, it but is. It, with medic, I mean, I, I watch this thing where there are um, two, different, two different things I've been watching because I, I go down the YouTube rabbit hole with genetics and, uh, and, and dinosaurs and shit. But um, they're trying to de- – because they can't do the Michael Crichton thing, right, that they did in Jurassic Park. And there's no way to, to, to salvage DNA from dinosaurs. It's impossible. Apparently, DNA, like, literally completely degrades after, like, 7 million years. So even if there was that mosquito or tick that had – bitten a dinosaur then immediately been encased in amber and somehow they were able to get dna out of that it wouldn't matter because after seven million years there's no dna the dinosaur you fill in the it. gaps with frogs they cover that there, in the movie they, well there are no gaps to, it would there's be no, all there's, frog it'd be all frog <laughs> we made a frog um, wait you're telling me that that whole scene about like dino dna dino that that's DNA. not even real they couldn't uh, do that no no that, that was, was a cartoon taylor that was a no, cartoon. That, of that course, it wasn't real. It was a cartoon they showed at uh, fucking whatever Corporation Island that was. That was Jurassic <laughs> Park. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, no, that can't be done. But what they are doing and what they can do, the thing is that like chickens evolved from dinosaurs. So, like in their genetic code, are the genes to be a dinosaur? They're just turned off, you know. So they're de-evolving chickens and trying to turn them into dino chickens. And they've uh, they've done like several different experiments to like target specific genes. Like one like like one, once they did one like all right, let's make a naked chicken. Did it easy. All right, let's make one with a mouth with teeth in it. Done easy. They got a chicken with teeth. Yeah, and and like a mouth, not a beak. They're like all right let, now let's make one that has like reptilian oh, legs. What? B- because like dinosaurs have different like uh, leg bones, like like bird leg bones. I think the tibula is longer than the fibula or something like that. There's this disparity in the length. Whichever one is longer or shorter, it doesn't matter. But um, the dinosaurs had a, a, didn't have that disparity because because of the way they walked or something like that. Don't the science isn't important. I, I need um, to well, hold on real quick. So they made it have a mouth and te- so did it have lips? They, they, when, whatever they create, one of these abominations, once they've created it in utero, then they kill it so that it doesn't have to live a life as some sort of freak oh. of nature. So they don't uh, even really know if that. This know, could be a successful YouTube chicken. genre if they let it live. <laughs> I would totally I mean, watch chicken. It probably it, wouldn't have even survived, it, right? It's inhumane. No, it will survive. It'll work. It's just inhumane to make it live as some sort of weird freak of nature. We eat them. Yeah, but we don't like turn them into. Like like disgusting blob monsters and make them live like you ever see the fly too when they make when they keep that poor boy's golden retriever alive for years suffering and and like a, it's like oh it's so sad I cry every time yeah that's a dog though. you're out there listening watch fly two uh, and and skip and then, the first one and, and, or and, don't and, 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 it, it's, it's like terrible. Ove Yeller with t- with torture it's a uh, it's it's awful so uh, perfect this is an exact <laughs> this is exactly what they're going to do uh, this is exactly it um this is very scientific what what we have here um not at all though um but no they are literally working on this right now they, they've got the funding to de-evolve a chicken into a dino chicken and it's it's being worked on as we speak they've got the funding there's potholes all over the road <laughs> <laughs> it's not people. government funding it's it's oh, private it's- funding um and uh, and then paying for that to have dude, chickens with like mouths a, a fourth tier billionaire <laughs> and you can't buy a penis shaped spacecraft like Bezos did you should just go dinosaur like there's less it's the less competitive dude, it's cheap enough mm-hmm. that we could crowdfund one of these things here like really? like, like they were like they were like now we have a million dollars worth of funding I'm like <laughs> that's all it took like, like 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 a big YouTuber could make that happen like boys. We're going to make a dino chicken. You guys get to name it. It'll be just like that Mountain Dew flavor. We're not naming it Hitler. <laughs> but, you know, there's a few things we're not going to name it. But, but yeah, they, um, it, they, were, they were bragging about this million dollars in funding they had, prop- they had finally, like, gotten their hands on. But they've been working on this for some time, like, doing one gene at a time. Like I said, like, like oh, let's give it the mouth. That worked. Okay, so now we know how to do that. Now let's fix the legs and, and, and just reactivating genes and its uh dna that i mean i, I won't get excited things. about this until you see like one grown up that's been oh, born agreed. And agreed. Great grows up. yeah i need to see it done and so but and then the other thing they're doing and they're saying that this could be a come to fruition in the next five to seven years 
mm -hmm. is uh, bringing back the mammoths because they do have mammoth DNA. And the, the, they, they say that they can clone one and then put it in the womb of an Asian elephant, I believe. And, and they, they think that they can actually bring mammoths back. So just in time for global warming, we're going to have mammoths again. <laughs> that would be cool. Like It'd be like having a Siberian husky in Florida. I'm it, I'm more I'm more interested in the mammoth honestly because the dino chicken sounds like it's going to be like very underwhelming. It's going to be like wah, wah, wah. There have to be some other things too like you know what about recently extinct animals? Do we have their DNA at all? Well, the dodo. Um they dodo? were talking about um I think the, the dodo is the one that like uh, always gets the most votes they said to bring back. Um is there some a tiger there? extinct maybe? Yeah, the or... the Tasmanian tiger. Um, okay. Th th that I'm sure we've all seen that like footage of on Reddit. Uh, recently, they re right? They recently colorized it, which was a new thing, and, and uh, smoothed it out a little bit. Is it that video from like the 1905, 04 when World they've got Fair like the, or something? It's really sad when you know the background because it's like this is the la the world's last Tasmanian tiger. He lives here alone on a concrete behind bars for all of us in London to ogle at. Look at him. Soon there will be none, and he doesn't oh. even know it. And, and like, that's not even like the most offensive exhibit because it's 1870 and they like yeah, they, they pan over African a little bit more. People they pan over a little more. There. And this is Matumbo. We took him from Eastern Africa. He is the last of his tribe, and he knows it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they just because he watched us slaughter them. He's just like, dude. I'm a person. Let me out. <laughs> For, you know they used to do that, right? They they would put people. Yeah. In too. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They would. They would they, like go. They would, they would like go kidnap like aboriginals. And, and then and go Africans. put them in a zoo, and That's, like a bunch of people would like walk around and be like, "Oi, jolly good!" Like, <laughs> <laughs> "Oh, this is a right bit of fun before we have our shepherd's pie." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not supposed to be British or Australian. Oh, I don't know how to do either one, Will. So it always, just becomes, Aust <laughs> it always becomes Australian. <laughs> I got a little cockney thing there. I, I'm, I'm co signing. She's just pit too picky. And I'm going with she Boy, for she, you. That's your pronoun. Too picky. <laughs> no, that was, that's no, I'm, I'm just going to be the. Wait, what's the guy from Mary Poppins? Just the worst accent ever. Oh, the, the chimney sweep? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't remember the character's name. I don't either. It's I very dirty. Since I was a child. But yeah, this is uh, th this is this is how bad things happen. You know, they're gonna fuck up one gene, and they're gonna make a full blown T Rex. And actually, that's a pretty cool fuck up. We have guns; we could totally yeah, we just fucking kill yeah. that thing. Yeah, any like they need to skip no to reason, the end of this. No reason to be afraid of a T Rex anymore. Like I mean, uh, like, like what, we're gonna give it years and years to get big enough to hurt somebody? Just blow it away the first sign of trouble. That Jurassic Park movie where they were suddenly bulletproof is so BS every time. You know, the new Jurassic Parks, they're shooting yeah. at that, like, the genetically engineered one. Somehow they've made flesh bulletproof. It's yeah. so, like... Yeah. I, I, is that the one where, like, they're, they're like, selling genetically modified yeah. dinosaurs to billionaires? And it's, like... The, billionaires are billionaires because they're not buying genetically modified dinosaurs. Like they're, well, like, they're that's probably. Oh not. come on! They no. That, that look. That's, yeah, but they they, they, they weren't going sell. in there. N none of okay. If it was like Elon Musk sitting there being like, make one with even bigger fins. That's sick. I'm buying an island. It's gonna live there. But these were like yakuza billionaires. Like these will revolutionize warfare. And it's like no. Well, oh, it's not oh, helpful. Yeah, that that well, that's absurd. That's yeah. A, maybe if you wanted to attack raptor or something, like like instead of mm. attack dogs on your property, that'd be kind of sick. But uh, but, yeah, but no, I don't, I don't, I don't buy into any of this. You can't trust reptiles anyway, or whatever the fuck dinosaurs. Yeah, are. I think if you want to have a army where people don't get hurt, you go cybernetic, cyborg yeah. type thing. Not and maybe cyborg means people, but uh, anyway, you go robots. You don't yeah, go dinos for sure. We're way too close to robots to revert back to to dinos. We're there. We're there. They just don't look like robots on two feet. It, we already have like little drone tanks and stuff we could do. Oh but, yeah. You remember those I, Japanese videos from like 10 years ago where it'd be like, look at this robot. And it looks like an ATM that like walks three steps and falls over. Just like <laughs> yes. that, that was that was just 10 years ago. And now I saw a video comparing it. And this new one can like it can run. It can jump over things. Yeah. You can kick it and it'll recover and they balance. Dance. Dude, yeah. I watched a video in like 1987. Now, this is when like Terminators were dropping and stuff. And in that video, they explained that robots are not going to take over the earth. They're not even sophisticated enough to cross the street yet. Apparently, it was a problem, like I, detecting how fast the cars were going and stuff like that. I learned that robots can't cross a busy street 
and I held on to that fact way too long. <laughs> way too. It was like 15 years later, and I'm like, guys, you don't even know. Robots can't cross the street as if they were stuck like I was. It's, yeah, it's like 9 11 was five years ago, and you're talking about a clip from, from 1987. He's out there sending emails to Boston Dynamics. Just, you got this all wrong. You know, you're about, you're like, like linking them shitty, grainy footage of a 1983 <laughs> 60 minutes. Proving my point. Yeah. <laughs> I no, ask, I, uh, I, Finn. Oh, go ahead, Kyle. I, I was going to talk more about robots. I, I saw this little GIF on Reddit, and it was robots. like. Um, there was a a, a a a cleaning robot. It was just like this little. It looked like a copy machine, but at the base of it, it's got like squeegees and like those rotating like scrubber brushes. And it was in a mall, just moving along rather slowly, perfectly cleaning the floor. And uh, it was like a super Roomba, like 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 an industrial Roomba. The thing probably weighed two hundred fifty pounds. And then there's like an old man with a mop, and he's just <laughs> staring at it like, what the fuck. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, like you tell, he was just like, <sighs> shit. If you're a, if you're, a, but, but if you're a 65 year old janitor in a mall, how much longer did you think that gig was going to last anyway? Right? Like, yeah. I'm surprised they even clean the malls anymore. What about Dude, those grocery uh, stacking robots? Have you seen those? I've heard they're out in public. Are you about to say that too? I, I, <laughs> wait, wait, grocery stacking. Yeah, they'll like, there's seen robots these. that go around and they'll like they'll see like okay this is out yeah this is out of stock just reach a little claw out and put stuff back. Oh, that's I've also cool. seen. I've never I've never I think this is an American thing because I've never even heard of anyone in the UK, but I've seen videos on Reddit about it. I want to see it in the wild. Well, that me would too. require me to yeah. go grocery shopping. So never the, mind. The, Fuck that. The, Fuck this that. robot, I'm I'm linking the article. Uh, it is like the most useless robot ever. It's this big thing that goes around grocery stores called oh, Marty the Robot, oh, yeah. except it doesn't clean anything. If it detects a spill, it'll just like notify, make a siren to notify some minimum wage worker to come clean it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like what $55,000 for a robot to tell you where something is spilled. The title of that article is so fucking funny. <laughs> yes. Marty, the grocery store robot, is a glimpse into our hellish future. <laughs> Top them so we can shop in peace. Yeah, it says Marty does a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> it's advertised, advertised as an aisle-sweeping superhero, but it's simply a messenger that shouts about a problem until a human comes and removes whatever the hazard may be. So we're working for the robot. <laughs> That's so funny. He's like, like our overlord now. He's like human. You spilled. This you're, is like, can you imagine? Like, you're you're a minimum wage employee at a grocery store. You hate your job. It's grueling. You get paid nothing. Hey, we're introducing a robot. A oh, little bit of help. This is great. It's gonna berate. It's gonna call you a retard when someone drops eggs until you go over there and sweep it up under the watchful eye of Marty. Like th this is. So that's nonsense. not good. That's what it is. That's what it says what, in the thing. Uh, what would you read the article a, a bit like, to like, you? Like, oh. I thought it washed the floor, the unimpressed mystery shopper can be heard saying. <laughs> oh, I've got a husband to tell me there's a mess, she considered. It. She continued, <laughs> delivering a burn to both her husband and Marty. <laughs> it's not really doing much of anything besides getting in the way, an employee told Mackenzie. <laughs> That's yeah. great. I wonder what the cost. 55 grand. Oh, oh. my God. Yeah. They should take the Give vacuums out of rooms. Grand. I'll, I'll fucking walk around and tell you, uh, yeah, miss spot. Woo, 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 woo. You don't, you don't even clean it. You just yeah. Yell at them. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm saving so, money. They pay me fifty-four thousand dollars a year. What, <laughs> so, would you, what, what, what robot would be useful in your life? Like, 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 if you could have a robot that did something for you, what would it? Like do? some sort of chef robot, where you could like arrange oh. ingredients and be like, "What I would like," and then like on the back, you got like a panel, and then it just does it for you. That'd be sick. A Hello chef Fresh, robot, but like a robot, yeah, like one of those, like you just feed it material and it spits something out, or even like just yeah. one that puts it into enough portions so you can do it would be better. That's got to be possible. Just yeah, dividing stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that could be done. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about I don't know about keeping it clean. I I just want like oh. the like the full like 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 the, from this from the 50 sci-fi robot the big bulky cocksucker with arms with a chef hat on inexplicably like chopping stuff up that's what i was picturing also I, I yeah. wanted, if i have a robot i, I wanted to have legs. one idea but kyle's idea of a big bulky cocksucker sounds better <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah my original you, idea was a roomba that mows the yard just they that exists that, 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 that 
They yeah. have those for pussy yards. They, they have, have those, those pussy yards. Yeah, no, I've looked into it. They're pretty expensive, but not like super. Like, look, if it was seven grand or something, I'd buy it. But the, it's seven grand, and they're battery operated, and they do like a tenth of an acre. Like, get out of here. That's, oh, that's not what I need. I think, and I may be wrong about this. Maybe I dreamt this or something, or just mm. saw like like one of those like uh, Black Mirror episodes. I think I've seen combines, like like in Ooh. big industrial combines that like are like you know like like autonomous pick, yeah autonomous and they're like you know like in those big wheat fields or corn fields or whatever just doing that job so if that can be automated i'm sure your yard could be like, like i'm i'm pretty sure the combine still have a person sitting in it you know making mm, sure that it does it's gps operated I got, I got so they just know. do all that and they do it better than a person would typically oh, yeah. but it's still smart to have some dude be like whoa dog in front of us your wildest dreams are insanely boring. That you go, I would like something that exists but with a bigger battery <laughs> than my ultimate robot. I don't oh, know. I jumped no, no, on no. the cock sucking robot pretty quickly. I feel uh, like okay. <laughs> I, I, I that, that, that exists as well. Robot. I thought. Don't does that exist? <laughs> yeah, but not big jacked ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here it is. Here he it wants is. his. He wants his robot to. Oh man my goodness. <laughs> This thing that he linked is a demonstration of pussy lawn mowing robot. Oh, this isn't um, this isn't here. This is this is legit. This is from 2017. It's called the world's first harvest by autonomous combine. Oh, you're it is a bitch made combine. I'll say that. Like like this looks like a European combine. Like, like like they're harvesting enough wheat for this guy's extended family or something like that. <laughs> but, like like the combines where I'm from are are like. Almost like a million dollar piece of machinery, but this thing looks like it could do some work. Um, you, gotta, then, you have to kind of skip forward to like actually watch it do its thing, but still, it's an autonomous combine. This thing, Zach Link, is good for less than one acre, yeah, 0.9 acres, and that's the absolute best they can claim. Uh, yeah, that's their that's their claim. Oh, well, hang on, yeah. it's only four thousand dollars, yeah, for a, for 0.9 acres. That's but horrible. I would have so figured I would it need needs 14 of them. <laughs> well, all right. So it won't work like in your lot. house, but like the average like city dweller, like my yard's small. Like I don't have an acre. No, nah, I don't have an acre here. And yeah. I pay like I think I pay forty five a week to like have a guy come and just do the edging and mowing and trim the bushes. So it would pay itself, you and, know, like you know, eighty months. So. <laughs> <laughs> 80 months by the time it pays itself off it's so obsolete there's no point in even having it anymore i'm surprised yeah. you picked a mowing one woody like i've maybe i'm like foisting my own belief onto you but i've always thought like yeah woody he's a very like hank hill guy with his lawn he enjoys going out there with his toys with his tools taking See, care of it. there was a time that. when that was true Woody can correct me if i'm wrong that was his hobby three or four years ago when, when, when he when he had first like become a a, a country boy a country boy Woody. Um, he he was like an episode of Green Acres. He was like, I I got land. I'm su I'm so surprised you didn't you didn't start gardening like on a on a large scale. I really expected you to start planting corn and potatoes and like tomatoes and stuff and like like have a big garden going. I'm shocked you never did it. That like, I really am. I so Kyle's on target a little bit here. I actually heavily considered the potato thing because the harvesting equipment that does it is the coolest like it, <laughs> you drag it behind a tractor and it just pulls up all the potatoes separates them from the dirt and like it's pretty neat but um uh i i guess i still have i enjoy mowing i have to mow this weekend but uh it can also be a bit i don't usually i like it once i get going but there's other shit wrapped around it that's not as much fun they're set up you know, you got to yeah. there and start greasing the uh, grease points. And I don't like greasing. I don't like, I love like greasing. opening the barn door and get and filling it up with fuel and all that. But once I'm and I don't like the detail work, like around the edges of my yard, you have to be careful exactly where you're going. But once you're past that and I'm just doing sort of mindless circles in the middle, listening to songs or audiobook, then it gets good. That was uh, that was one of my jobs when I was really young was like hitting all the grease points on the tractors and the equipment. And we didn't have one of those electric grease guns. We had the hand pump one. And for mm. those who don't know, you've got, basically got these little metal nipples all over this piece of machinery. And you like attach this thing to the nipple and you pump it. And it pumps this thick, thick grease. Like, I don't, it's, uh, I don't even know what to describe it as. It's incredibly thick grease. And it like pumps it into that nipple until it like squeegees out from the uh, other points. 
uh, to grease the bearings and stuff. And it's kind of satisfying to do. You're like, oh, I bet it's slippery in there now. <laughs> I have a I have a battery operated one. It's by Milwaukee. And when I used the kind that Kyle used, I didn't like it. Like it is a task to sort of hold it on there and pump it at the same time. Um, if the this is boring, but if the hose going to the nipple is flexible, then it wants to pop off. If it's rigid, then you have to pump it while also holding it steady because it's easy to pry it off. It's a task. You want the battery one. Yep. But uh, yeah, if you could remove lawn mowing for me or make it a want to do instead of a have to do, I think that'd be nice. Yeah, that makes sense. I think, uh, I don't know what, I, I would like one that just fucking kept my house clean. My house is a goddamn disaster. It's just so messy right now. It needs to be cleaned up. I've got a it's friend coming task, over this. So you have things to, th you have decisions to be made, right? Like this needs to be put away. This needs to be declared as trash. This needs, that's the kind of mess you have, right? I'm just messy. Like, like I let things get out of hand really quickly um, because I do live alone and, I, and there's no one to shame me. So unless somebody's coming over and even if somebody's coming over, I can kind of like slide the mess to one side or like, we just won't turn the lights on in that room over there. <laughs> or like, oh. That is such a, a third grader way to, yeah. to handle I'm like, that. I'm like, I'm like fucking Adam Sandler in Big Daddy, just like putting a newspaper on top of vomit. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure it's not like, it's not filth. It's just It's clutter. not filth. It's clutter. It's like, yeah. it's like. Big it's difference. Just, it's just like th stuff like these empty bottles. Like, like, like they're just, they're, there's like six of them on this desk. You know, it's not one, so two, much. Three, four, our house yeah. is like that too much as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, like there's some little. OK, so we have big dogs and my wife moves things around with carts like laundry and stuff. The trim where the hardwood floor meets the baseboards sometimes gets knocked out of place. I had like six of them built up that I needed to they grab a little nail gun and put them back in place. I bet it's been over two years of this like task waiting for me to do it. We have someone coming over next week. I did all of it. We have another little trim on a piece of furniture. I fixed that today. I fixed something else the other day. I'm just like tidying up these little maintenance items that I let accumulate because I don't want to be shamed. And the other part is like I'm moving fairly soon. So it's like I kind of just want to do one big clean. You know what I mean? It's 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 like nobody's coming over here that'll judge me anyway. Like 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 if ladies come mm. over, I can just guide them down the hallway to into the bedroom and then right back out again. <laughs> Like they don't need to see. They don't need Usually, to see. we don't put on the blindfold when we're still in the garage. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my garage was full. I've started the process of getting rid of cardboard boxes. Like, like when I get those normal Amazon boxes, I, I burn those right away. But I had the cardboard boxes that my like eighty inch TV came in. The cardboard boxes that my that both of my beds came in, uh, like these big, thick, heavy duty ones. How long um, have they been out there? Like you've years. had that TV for years. Years. In the, oh. they just in the in the in the in the garage, you know, I I park one Don't car in there in a motorcycle. Box for moving, or will it not move? It's not. No, it, it's like thin and like narrow. Like like it. You mean to put the TV back in? I would think that if you had that box and you knew you the move was coming, it might be worth keeping. Um, if I had all the the styrofoam that like went around it, probably. But I think that's long gone. They they make these special moving boxes for like nice televisions. They're a little expensive, but I think I'm gonna like spend the hundred fifty dollars just to guarantee my TV makes it to where I'm going. Um, cause I would, it's, I don't know, I think it was like three, three or $4,000. It wasn't some like, it wasn't one of those million dollar like wall TVs that I drool over every time I see. Have you seen those million dollar televisions they have now? I can't imagine. They're, no. they're incredible. What's they're, the they're, they up to now? They are gigantic. Like I don't, it's, they, they stopped measuring in inches. Like, like, like it, it's, it's <laughs> you're measuring square feet. <laughs> yeah. It's enormous. Like, like it's, it's, it's like a movie theater, but it's a, like a, a an, what an, should an I TV. Google? Uh, one, a new one just came out the other day that was literally like maybe fifteen million dollars or something like that. Like, like, search like world's largest television or something. I don't know. Um, I think Philips might make it, but there's a couple different models, and one of them is around a million. And it 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 alone looks like the little screens at like uh, the movie theaters. It's it's crazy big. But but yeah, I I went out and I I took all those boxes the other night, and they wouldn't even fit in my little burn pit, so I just put them on the stone. And can you I just drag them out to your street? There it is. That's it. Oh, look at that! Wow, look at that child. He's gonna he's gonna run up and put his hands on it right away. <laughs> oh, that man, looks what a cool better than a projector because it, it, a, a projector could not live in a room with that much lighting. Uh uh this isn't a real photo, right? I can't even tell. It's, that. it's no. almost certainly a rendering. Like the the people are animated, Taylor. Man, I need new <laughs> glasses so bad. <laughs> I keep telling myself I was driving my wife home from something like 
like a week end ago, like Saturday night, and like I got like onto the highway before I'm like, oh, these lights are wild. Like <laughs> every single light is just a giant crucifix because of my astigmatism. I'm like, like white knuckling. Like I, I probably shouldn't be driving at night right now. Yeah. So when you wear glasses, like th- these are your regular. Oh, I don't know. When you wear mm-hmm. your regular glasses, like you would for driving, can you read in them? Uh, d- during the day, yeah, easily. At night, not as well. Do but you have I, a separate? Do you have separate glasses for reading? No, I, no. I, I, these are my everything glasses. Yeah, you, you just have everything glasses. Mm-hmm. I have a question. Yeah, what's up? If you if you're completely without your glasses and contacts, how would you fare in a fist fight? Oh, really bad. Like interesting. Like I would get, like one hit would knock my glasses off, and then like I would start to panic. No, oh, no, you're starting without them. Oh, there's like I'm right attacking now, you in the dead of night. I'm I'm two oh. feet from my monitor. I can't see any of the three of your facial features at all. Oh. It's just a blur. Actually, I can see. I I can't can tell you if tell I can I'm see wearing it. glasses. That's what I was gonna say. I can tell you're wearing glasses, but I. Yeah. Maybe this is absurd. How many, how many how many fingers? Um. Oh shit! <laughs> um, um. I well, well, it looked like three, but there was a bleed out, and so I, I was thinking. Four. Yeah, I was trying to. Yeah, he was holding them close together. By, like, I don't mean to brag, together. but I knew right away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> knew right away. Not without your glasses, you well, you would because you still would. have yeah, good it just eyes. Makes goodness, easier. goodness. Yeah, I, my I, eyes are shit. I, I, I have faith that there's going to be some LASIK for you down the road, even though you have the thin corneas. I, I hope so, man. That would be. I've all, I've looked looked forward to LASIK for so long. I really hope I get it someday. If if here's if there here's a bit of technology that I hope happens in the future. Um, what about some sort of an ocular implant? What if they could put a robot eye in you? That's it, sick. It, yeah. it involved taking your eye out. You couldn't. Yeah, just, you, it's not I, like a contact lens. Oh, it. not his awful shitty eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I don't. He's like one of those guys with a little flipper, and 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 they're, like, <laughs> and they're like, "We have the new robot arm three thousand, sir." And he's like, "Flip my flipper arm. <laughs> you have to take it off." How am I going to make messes at restaurants? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but I wouldn't want to do both eyes. Like we all know how like the cyborg look looks cool because you have the point of comparison. The same reason I don't like you want it to glow two... red like the Terminator. Yeah, I want one like <laughs> uh, like cool implant eye. That makes me look threatening. Ex- you okay. word yeah. in my mouth. Yes. You need something around it, or like just at least a scar going right diagonally. You want across to it. literally be Kano. Yeah, I want the bad haircut too. Like, <laughs> That's a terrible haircut. <laughs> I don't know about the chest, the Iron Man thing, but yeah, a, a bionic guy. That's cool. how Jackie cuts my hair once a month. That's how well my fade goes. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely go left eye because my left eye is my bad eye, and I would get, I'd get that optimized. I would there, want some form of aggression available too. Like I want it to be able to shoot something, or even if it's not like a harmful laser, like I could point in something. But people, I'll be like, "Look at that over there." It's just a laser point. He can't just, start fires or anything. But I just like go to hockey games and distract the opposing goalie. <laughs> you can't, you can't kick me out. That's ableism, idiot. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, He's get himself like in trouble with the FAA. So There's I, I a, wanted, yeah, Taylor so, had this yeah. skit, let well, not skit, but he was doing a bit sort of where he realized that one of his eyes was just a total freeloader. And he said it with this like enthusiasm and, and sort of like a funny inflection that it burns into my head whenever like I'm trying to read my phone and I'm like, no, are you worse? Total freeloader. Yeah. Like, is, you play for me whenever my one eye is uh, not carrying Good. its weight. Yeah. The, my left eye is just there for looks. And for depth perception, I guess. <laughs> but uh, so I want to bounce back to Finn. So, what was kind of the reaction of your family if they had one when you started doing this online? I mm. I was imagining myself, and like I was just thinking, like, mm. man, my my dad and my my parents would not have been cool with me doing that. Is my this actually telling them was a remarkably smooth thing? But there was plenty Good. of times that like they. It was happening, and they got glimpses into it, and I hadn't told them yet, which is so goddamn funny to me. Like they, um, I was in a car ride. I was on like a bit of a road trip with my mom, and I was in the passenger seat. She was driving, and I was just going through my photos, and there was a selfie that I took, and my mom happened to look over at that one minute, and she go, "Oh, who's she?" I went, "Oh, my friend." Um, <laughs> I, I forgot what name I made up, but yeah. And then you know, half That's a year later, I said, "Your mom thinks you're cute." <laughs> So then, uh, when like, you just went and told, told them, 
And they were like, you know what? That's great. Good for you. This yeah, would be, I, this is almost this would make such a good episode, like a sitcom where you like have to keep. You're like, oh, that, that's that's my girlfriend. Oh, what's her name? And you have to make up a whole persona, and like and like and like you ha- like like they come over and you have to pretend to be the girlfriend. You're uh, like I leaving wonder, the room and then yeah. getting dressed again. <laughs> yeah, 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 Tom yeah. Hanks sitcom, bosom buddies. Oh yeah, wasn't that where like the the landlord wouldn't allow like 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 cohabitation between like a man and a woman, and so he had to like dress up as a woman so that he could like. If I recall, the entire building was female only, Uh, but the rent was low. So he and his male co-star pretended to be women every time they entered the building. And some of their friends knew and some didn't. That's a good premise for a show. That wouldn't work anymore. Yeah, yeah, somehow they'd get canceled, even though it didn't seem all that harmful. Was there a difference in the way your mom and dad responded to it or were they both cool? I've got a worse thing, one about my about my dad, which I've told mm-hmm. before, but oh my god, it makes me cringe just thinking about it, because the way he <laughs> yeah, the, the way he initially um, at least got his first glimpse into what I was doing was that he'd found weirdly enough like he'd found a uh, a pair of underwear, which uh, you know a pair of women's <laughs> underwear that I had yeah. for a stream at some point, and he saw them in the laundry, and he. Didn't assume, by the way, I've just remember just thinking about this now. He didn't assume I had a girlfriend. He immediately went to, oh, he's a crossdresser. Okay, cool. <laughs> that was it. He <laughs> assumed that I had a secret girl. I'm just now thinking about that. He's an intuitive guy. <laughs> yeah. No, I think he just didn't think much of me. <laughs> my <secret life. laughs> I'm trying didn't not think to think much of me. I have so many jokes, but I don't want to be mean. <laughs> it's just like, oh, there's no way he's got a girl that's hot enough to wear these coming over. He. <laughs> These are my Leave son's it. panties. These are my son's <laughs> panties. <laughs> the moment every father dreams about. <laughs> Victor's, uh, Victor's secret. Yep. Yep. Victor's <laughs> secret. <laughs> well, that, that's good. Like, Your parents are cool. It's got to be a website. Oh, it must be. Just male lingerie. It's, it Victor's exists. Secret. It's got to be like cross-dressing wear. Oh, please. But, Isn't you know, he, he went on with that assumption. No one ever corrected him. My, like... I got told like months later that about that story from my mom and she was like, Oh, he was right. After I told her what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> but then, um, then yeah, no, he, he, I remember his, his words or something or how it was quoted to me was just his reaction was, Oh, at least he's not boring. And then that's just how it went on from that. It was nice. Well, it's certainly not boring. Yeah. We, we were talking prior to the show, Kyle said something like, Oh, I thought girls were neater than that. Uh, referring to the, <laughs> the back of your room, and you seem to disagree. But I'm hiding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, I get the comment a lot that like, oh, he's like every other woman. That their room is an absolute state. <laughs> like, there's just a pile of heels behind me. That I noticed chair that immediately. is just any. If I move my camera either way, it gets so much worse than it is. Like, <laughs> it's so bad, es- especially when there are so many tools to create this illusion. That like, yeah. <laughs> oh god, there's so much stuff just around me. And then, um, yeah, no, every every girl's house I've been to seems to just have a random assortment of like bras, underwear on the floor. And that's just how they. Maybe it's a like twenty year old thing they just haven't learned. Mm-hmm. I was like when Kyle was saying how he just had shit around. I was re- I was thinking in my head, God, I thought I grew out of that. I thought he's <laughs> supposed to grow out of that. I thought, like, naturally, I'd get better at it. No, <laughs> you naturally get neater. Yeah, yeah, I thought that would happen. It's like when. You remember being like 18, 20, like early 20s, and like you still have that thought of like, I wonder when I'm going to like tick over into a full adult mode. And now being 30, I'm like, oh, that's just not going to happen. Like I'm going to have the same brain in my head when I'm 72, except I'll just be like horrified of how quickly life is passing me by. Like, yeah. it, what do you want? Yeah, but like you you think different. that you haven't matured, and and by the way, that just can, carries on where you're like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm 48 years old and as immature as ever. But then you hang out with young people who are laughing at like stupid TV commercials, and you're like, "You guys are fucking imbeciles." And, and <laughs> well, I guess that is true. Yeah, over time, I, it's, it's so slow that you don't notice. We become more sophisticated, but I still think there's that part of us that would love to like. I've tried just... wine. <laughs> <laughs> you do the. I, I prefer a, a red, red, a 2021 red from the gas station. <laughs> oh, I, I can't. I can't remember what movie that's from. Where the guys he gets the wine, he does. He sniffs it. He goes. Blah, 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 blah. He does that bubbly thing where you like suck it through your tongue. He goes. This one is a red. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's about my level of knowledge too. Yeah, yeah. I like like wine is bullshit. Um they, like, like, I love good. I love when they they like uh they get those wine connoisseurs, those sommeliers. Mm-hmm. Um uh and uh and they they like have them try to tell the difference between like a $12 bottle of wine and a $1200 bottle of wine and they can't. There's like this you get to this point like around I think it's around twenty dollars, where it's like this is as good as it's gonna, as it can get. At twenty dollars, no. we've we, we, we're there. We're, like twenty dollars will get you like a, an eight out of ten wine, and twenty thousand dollars gets you like a nine out of ten wine. Is that true? Like, what percentage of like are huge amounts of sommeliers failing like a a twenty dollar versus two thousand yeah. dollar test? Yeah, they can't tell the difference. <clears throat> I mean, but that's really truly just sales. They seem if they seem confident and their name is French, I would trust them. I wonder how that works with audio equipment. I suspect there's a similar type thing mm. where like a 200 and a $20,000 microphone, I'd have a hard time telling which one's better. Yeah, diminishing returns of that. But then if you took the labels off of a car, and I said, show me the 2021 model Honda and the 2020, <laughs> you'd still have a hard time with it. I yeah. Actually, I, like I t- I, the new Kia, I, I, saw, I saw one of the new Kias the other day. And what they've done is they've like removed the Kia badge which like like I don't know about you, but like when I see Kia, when I see that K I A and that little triangle or whatever the fuck, I'm like yeah. cheap, cheap thing, cheap plastic sure. thing. Made in Cor- where they made Korea or something, Vietnam, wherever the it fuck. Means kill could be. <laughs> they took that badging off, and I don't know what the new Kia is, but I was like, ooh, what is that? Is that one of those Fiskers or is that one? Is that is that a new Tesla? Like it looked to me like a fancy high end. Like it didn't necessarily appeal to me, but I was like, ooh, that's a fancy thing there, and like and. and I don't remember how I found out that it was a Kia because like the badging wasn't like in your face at all. But when I found out, I was like, Oh, that's a cheap thing. Like it, it was just complete. Is it a K5? Oh. Can you Google yeah, it? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, I think it is a K5. I want to see it. I really do. I can't even picture in my head what a, a nice Kia looks like. Dude, when I, yeah. look. but it does look cool. When I was at, uh, when I worked at Enterprise many years ago, every once in a while, they'd be like, we got this really good car. Try and upsell to it. And, it was a Kia K900. And when you're at the airport, you can't show them a picture of it. So you just have to be like, we got a really cool Kia K900. And they're like, Kia, fuck off. And it's like, no, it's really cool. It actually is nice. But like, they clearly learned their lesson from that and got rid of the Kia branding. Yeah. Like, there's a reason Honda has yeah, Acura, Toyota has Lexus. Their like, SUV looks cool too. Like, like, like the, the Kia, uh, I don't know what their SUV is. It's called like a um, Sorento. A Tellur- is it a Telluride? Telluride? Some, there is an SUV called the Telluride. I don't know if it's the key or not. Yeah, yeah it is but, the Telluride. You. But it looks nice, like, like especially from behind. Like, like I, I was like, yeah, that, that's the that's the K five thing. It looks better from behind, and it particularly looks, looks good at night and in black because the the headlights light up in a really uh, sort oh, of scroll down modern Zach, way, not across. That really appeals to me. I really like that. Did that, did you change? I don't know. What no, he did. opened up the, you, the gallery for it. Yeah, go go to the link I gave you. I and mean, this, this looks cool. Yeah. Tesla's yeah. got like. If we get bit... past this, there's an interior. I'm sorry, I cut you off. Oh, no, no, no. I was, I was just saying, like, Tesla's after a while, they kind of. I've seen so many of them, and they seem to I always follow that uh, same design style. They've kind of got a little bit. Like, I've seen. I'm a little bit bored of them. But this one looks really neat. I kind of just see that, and I imagine, like, modern car is electric car. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I really like those. The self driving stuff. I'm too terrible of a driver to invest in any of it, though. Most women are. <laughs> oh. I was going Bazinga. there too. What uh, what kind of car do you drive now? I don't. I I own a car strictly so I can have the um, was the no claims bonus because before you're 25, I'm 21. Uh, mm. before you're 25, I don't know if it's the same everywhere. It's just awful. Insurance is so high. As soon as you hit 25, you know, if I've got like you know, if I have like seven years of no claims bonus, then it, it should be great. But so where in the world are you? Like, <clears throat> I'm in the UK. I'm in yourself. England. Okay. I've, I've said what city I'm in. I, when you were talking about accents before, and you're like, who's that guy with the awful accent? I was like, it's my city. <laughs> <laughs> I know the one you're on about. It's uh, I live in Birmingham, which is fine to say. I've said it before. But the um, it's it's why if you ask people in the UK, they'll say, like, I think it's probably the, the Brummy accent, the Birmingham accent that's the worst. Birmingham. It is pretty terrible. Is it? You don't have... a like a bad accent no but then i speak to americans all the time and i've just it's just and you've got all your teeth too most of them (laughs) (laughs) actually no i don't have all my teeth (laughs) i don't have all my teeth two of them never grew through my canines i don't have canines 
What? What? That is yeah. bizarre. I can't. Do you see have that. fake ones? Do you have fake ones in? No. But what they did was I don't have canines. But when I was getting braces, they figured out that I didn't have canines. They're like, you don't have fuck. You don't have canines. Do you want us to make your other teeth that are besides your teeth? Do you want me to make them pointed, make them look like it? And I was a stupid kid, so I didn't even ask my parents. I was like, yeah. I'm pointy teeth. <laughs> you know what? Bro, can Make you sharpen all, all the pointy? Yeah. <laughs> I want to look like an that? Amazonian tribes person. <laughs> <laughs> the oh, uber predator. I've got like a. I, I also it makes it funnier that I'm. I've always been a vegetarian my entire life. I've never tried meat ever. Huh. Just funny in one way. Really? You made it through <laughs> like your whole child. I I just know like if I had pulled oh, that right. as a we kid, they would the be day. like, no, yeah. you're trying chicken, you're trying beef, and then you can make it. So your parents never. Your parents are really what? chill. We were, Finn well, and I were looking yeah. at her her diet the other day, and uh, and she was showing me how many <laughs> calories she ate, and I was like, "You're eating like an actual girl. You realize that, right? Like, like this is so few calories. You're gonna you're gonna melt." And and <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, I think I've got a slow metabolism. And like a week later, so I lost like four pounds. You were right. <laughs> <laughs> it's four yeah. kilograms too. You're, you're eating nothing. You were eating nothing. She's and, like and, shaking and, in the morning. Yeah, and I, I, we were talking, and and like, but then you were like, "Oh, I'm a vegetarian," and I'm like, "Oh, well, I don't even know where to begin with like f making a diet model for someone who doesn't eat meat." No, it's uh the the, the stuff that I've got now, it, it's I think people th people have this idea that uh, being vegetarian is like this really healthy or vegan is is really really it's a health orientated thing, and it, the mm -hmm. people that tend to be vegan tend to be more or vegetarian uh, tend to be more health focused, so it's kind of like causation not uh you know co or correlation not causation yeah. thing mm -hmm. well like if you ask for the vegetarian menu you can get a burger and they'll sell with a, a vegetarian burger but they'll give you a side of salad like you can yeah. very much have you know everything that you know a, a, like vegetarian meat substitute for burgers there's still like you know 300 calories in them i never They're thought not, about like, that healthy. it's not the meat making you fat is it like no. i could just as easily have a really nut based diet and be fat as fuck exactly yeah. I knew someone in college who went vegetarian to lose weight, and they just ate like chips. Yeah, yeah I, know. It, I was gonna say that. And it doesn't and work. Salsa? Yeah, it's or... like chips and salsa. Ooh, <laughs> cheese dip, queso, fully, <laughs> fully vegetarian. Ve Which is, ve you know. But the gap between like meat eater and vegetarian, it, I assume everyone's giving me the reaction of just like vegetarian. I couldn't live without bacon. I couldn't live without chicken, fried chicken, whatever. I have the same gap in oh my god, how to vegans. Because mm -hmm. we still have like cheese, eggs, all that, and that's the majority yeah. of my diet. But vegans, what the fuck do they eat? Is yeah. it just I don't know. Oh, cut and drywall? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a absurd way to live. I, I, I don't, I don't understand the vegan. Vegan thing. is like, no, like, no meat. It's vegetarian yeah. plus no eggs and cheese and no dairy. Yeah, no dairy from animals. They don't do no. honey either, right? They count bugs and, as animals. And 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 even and it's. <laughs> I don't know about honey. That's <laughs> that true. <laughs> I'm, I, don't, I'm, I may have made oh, that up. I don't know. I, I saw a thing the other day, um, and it was talking about the McDonald's French fries. And I don't, I don't know if you're aware, but like if you look at the ingredients in McDonald's French fries, one of the ingredients is natural flavoring. They mm -hmm. don't have to divulge what that is. Um, this Indian guy who was like part of one of those um, really strict Hindu cults yeah. uh, was like, "Hey, um, we're curious, what's in that natural flavoring?" And they're like, "Oh, beef tallow, which is like beef fat." So the mm -hmm. McDonald's French fries have not been vegetarian forever. They might be like currently because um, they, th this guy's sect, I'll call them, is so strict about like harming an animal that he only washes his hands. He only washes his hands because he doesn't want to kill bacteria and he sweeps the sidewalk in front of him to avoid stepping on any insects. He's like, just like, destroying um, their homes like a like a twister. <laughs> right? yeah. Imagine, uh, move aside, little one. Like, like he's like brushing bugs out of the way so he doesn't step on them. This and guy's a only, fucking loser. Like, like he doesn't want to. Like, <laughs> he must smell so bad. Like, like, like because he's not washing his ass because he doesn't want to kill the bacteria. Yeah, that the is a guy that, that is backed what into that. That guy's that guy. That's a guy who backed into that lifestyle to excuse not bathing. Like, oh, I, like I don't. I don't. <laughs> I, I do not believe the bacteria thing. Come the on. The insect thing is the one. So. Like 15 years ago, I started camping on my own as opposed to when I was a child as a Boy Scout with adults really running the show. So I bought a book on camping. And one of the things it told me was not to move rocks because this wreaks havoc on the insect world. And that's when I thought, I've got the wrong book. This yeah. is yeah. horseshit. <laughs> I, I wreaks yeah. havoc on the insect The thing to remember world. about insects is that you're bigger than them. And you, <laughs> you can do whatever the fuck they you want. They hate gasoline. So whenever you see a bunch <laughs> of them, 
Glug, glug, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they hate fire. They hate gasoline. They hate guns. Yeah, that, that's. <laughs> <They> hate guns. <laughs> you, you fire I don't think guns insects are that scared of guns, actually. Well, they should be. No, that'd be hard. To I, I got a question for Finn. Yeah, I don't like that. When you, so you've come to the last two at least uh, fifty dollars Patreon hangouts. Yeah, and when you are there, you get attention just like the hosts do. Does it feel like work? Almost answering interview questions, being the center of attention. No, this is awesome. I love this. <laughs> this is okay. so cool. Um, right. It's were, were you the in the were, were you in one of the ones where the guy did DMT? He did that. Oh, I saw them twice. talking about it. Yeah, he, he. Yeah, I don't think yeah, Vince was there for that. So yeah, we've been talking about DMT a lot lately, and uh, and our fifty dollar patron group is made up of a lot of really interesting people and a few degenerates here and there. And uh, not that uh, this gentleman's a degenerate. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't call us. No, uh, he's very clean cut. Like, him like that. Successful cool guy. I guy. like him. Yeah. yeah there are call. others, though. Definitely. Yes. <laughs> there's some there are some. It's a mixed some bag. A few <laughs> autists mixed in. Uh, there, there's, there's, some, there's some guys that look like they smell. I never um, miss one. <laughs> we're talking um, about yeah. it like we're above them. We're part of it. <laughs> I, I, I mean, we're the ringleaders of these yeah. people. So it's just like, <laughs> like, like, we're just being honest. Like, 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 if you, if you, we say this to their faces. They, they know who they are. Um, but but this guy was we were talking about the DMT and he's like oh yeah I got some right here and he pulls out the vape or whatever and we're like dude do you want to do it like no pressure because you know there's like 25 people watching you do you want to do it like, yeah I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it and he's just like took a few hits of that thing and he went to another fucking place it was cool to watch you were doing I, a really good job because Kyle started like trying to be the what, what what is the, the shaman the oracle, the shaman i guess yeah, i like oracle like, more yeah the oracle <laughs> yeah you're, you're like you're walking what do you see and he's like sitting there and like i didn't know what i expected from dmt i expected him to hit it and then immediately like be comatose and then we're like man i can't wait to hear what he says in 15 minutes but like it was really like he was sitting there he was 30 he's like there. he's, he's he smiling listening. like at our jokes and stuff and it's like what do you see and he's like a whole line of fractal shapes and collars and kyle's like walk towards the shapes the closer oh, wow. you get to the shapes you're gonna start to walk through them and you can look side to side and you can see the shapes like a forest do you see that and he's like yeah i do <laughs> see that and and it went swimmingly he like came out of it he was like kyle you're really persuasive you're good at that and just a like tremendous amount 20, of power yeah, huge amount of power. Everybody's being <laughs> very, trust. very chill. Everybody's being very chill with them. Everybody's being respectful, being quiet. And then maybe 20 minutes later, he goes, I'm ready to go back into the Matrix. <laughs> and, so, and this, and apparently there's a rule in DMT I didn't know where that Kyle seemed to be familiar with. Where like you take two hits and like you're like kind of he took two at first and he was kind of middling. And this time he took three big old hits. That's the it. ticket. And he was visibly fucked up. And Kyle starts to walk him through this. Like, what do you see? And he's like, everything's shaking and moving. And it was at that point, probably should have known he did too much. And then Dirty, piece of shit that he is. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like uh, can, can I, Kyle's, can, yeah, you go ahead. You I, 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 I'm like, I'm like, what's the most predominant color you see right now? And he's like, gold. And I'm like, look up. There's a waterfall of gold. It's flowing down over you. Look up and you can feel it flowing and washing over you. The warm gold happiness. <laughs> I'm like, and he's and he, he has a little grin on his face because he's seeing this shit. Yeah. And I'm like, now spread your arms wide. And he does it. And now you can fly. You're going to fly straight up through the waterfall. And I'm about to tell him that he's going to burst through a, a pane of glass into another dimension. And we're about to get wacky with, with, with this little mm -hmm. guided trip. And Dirty dirty pops in the room and he goes, you're on fire! You're on <laughs> fire and it burns! <laughs> <laughs> and like everybody else knows and in the whole chat, like Kyle's like, let's go ahead and keep that to a minimum. Let's not do that. <laughs> and the other people are like, shut the fuck up. He did, he did it repeatedly him. until I yeah. server muted him. Yeah. yeah he's going to make a golden fire. shower joke and at that. That the first thing you came <laughs> up with was the gold. Oh, I, my head went to the lava gold too. I'm like, that molten gold is, f don't fuck around with that, Kyle. But I kept it <laughs> but, to myself. But, yeah. So, like, so like, Dirty got me. Uh, apparently, he didn't hear Dirty. So, like, no harm done. It's mm -hmm. weird they didn't hear him. He said he didn't. But who knows? Maybe part of him heard it and caught on fire, and it's 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 existing in another realm right now. And he said he, he he like fractured his soul like fucking something out of oh, Harry yeah. Potter, and it's burning yeah. somewhere right now, and can't get back to his brain yet. And uh, but but no, then he then he started convulsing a little bit and vomited on himself, and it was a it was a rough sight. It didn't look that part did not look fun. He was just like. <laughs> 
<laughs> and like spit up like a baby would, like this thick white yeah, mucus, yeah. Like, yeah. like coming down his face, and it was like, "Ooh, this is the dark side of DMT." They don't and tell it, you about. It was funny that it looked like like baby spit up because I don't think anybody caught it. He was like when he came back a little, like twenty minutes later, he was totally fine. He was like, "Oh, I've been eating Cheerios all day." <laughs> so he just threw up Cheerios yeah. like a like a little kid. But yeah, shout out to that guy. That was very cool of you to yeah to be to put yourself in a situation that vulnerable. Like I I in my head as he was doing it, I'm like I don't want to give people bad ideas, but there is not a chance in hell I'm doing DMT on this call. Like no. with with all these people in my ear, no, they're gonna try and fuck with me. I would yeah. imagine, but, but but nobody did. Everybody was super respectful. Wait, Sam's wait, dirty. That's not true. Yeah, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> Sam's dirty. Everybody was like, hey, you know, you don't do that. But dirt, like, like Woody was saying, and I agreed with them that the first little DMT thing he did, I was like, okay, this this is not nearly as intense as I thought it would be. I thought it was going to be like world shattering, and he was still able to respond to questions. Mm -hmm. It was the three hit time. That I, I I want nothing to do with. But that, that's, yeah, in my in my so research, I think that's that true. Dose. So Kyle's done research. Two doses is kind of a lightweight thing, and three is heavy duty. I have a suspicion that because he did a two and followed up with a three twenty minutes later, three was too much. Probably. Yeah, it, it could yeah. have been like, like they describe it as like it's almost like a binary uh, state of being. It's like like one puff. It will. Oh yeah, you're seeing some funny stuff. Two. Ooh, it's a little brighter now and I have sensation in it. And like three, it's like now you've left the realm of existence. Like, like, like <laughs> the, the, the step from two to three is like the big step. They call it breaking through. And uh and, and I, I like like it, it reminds me of the, is it the doors that have us break on through to the other side? Like yeah. he's gotta be talking about LSD there, right? Like like for sure. Like yeah, Jim definitely. Morrison, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, this is really gonna quickly become Joe Rogan's thing, <laughs> just it already, it, yeah. Like, like whenever I, Rogan talks about it a ton, it, it's fascinating to me though. Like, like the stuff that people see. Oh, I'm I'm so upset that I missed that. I wish someone told me. That's I mean, really cool. I I'm mean, sure he'll go back in later. You know, he's next, not next even month. The, he's not even the only one in the fifty dollar hangouts who does DMT on a regular basis. So, like, like I'm sure you'll see it again. It's funny. The thing with Dirty is that I I watched the podcast for a while. That's how I, you know, I I, mm -hmm. I, fit, I found you guys sort of uh, when Carl went to jail, and that got on on everyone's you recommended, and that's how I got into it. And I just watched a ton of content, and you've been talking about Dirty, who's a fifty dollar Patreon for a while, and um, I just kind of like yeah, it's some guy, right? And then I met him. <laughs> <laughs> he stands out, doesn't he? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, he's he's really uh, an interesting guy. Um, is it a dumb idea for him to be a guest? He's, he's quite a character. Know. Yes, it is. It is a dumb idea. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking about the the pug thing. Have you talked about that yet? Oh, no. pug? oh yeah. Oh so, my god, he is, <laughs> we, we really gave him a hard time. I, yeah. Not me. Dirty wants to get a pug as a pet, and uh, the whole reason he wants this, he wants a pug, is because he wants to name it. Tony the Thug Pug, that rhymes, and he likes that. And he wants to dress it up with like a gold chain and like some sunglasses, and ha and have Tony the Thug Pug as like his fucking sidekick in life. And uh, I, I, be an this Instagram is a man famous dog. He can't keep fish alive. He's gone through so many fish that his it's a fucking graveyard over there. Two weeks old, and I feel like you're downplaying that. If they make it three, I'll be shocked. <laughs> Here's the thing: Dirty's coming to Colorado with me next week. Like, like I, right. I leave, I leave like tomorrow, to, couple days. I leave like Saturday afternoon. I Shortly. leave. Shortly, and uh, a week late. Dirty, we're doing two weeks, and Dirty's week a week two guy. Like, like he'll be so in, in like a week or so. Like he's joining me in Colorado for a week. Who's gonna be watching the fish, Woody? His girlfriend. His girlfriend, fucking Long John Silver over there. She's going to kill those things. They're going to be dead when he gets back. There's no way they survive. Fish sitting. What an interesting <sighs> gig. Of There's like no a, way they survive. And he's talking about getting these fancy fish. They're like 1200 bucks each. And and they're like, oh, oh the yeah. The Moorish you, idols. Oh, the Moorish idols. And it's just like, oh, yeah, but you can't just get one. They get lonely. <laughs> they do. Well, they're not the only animal that doesn't do well in isolation. That's, That's a true. thing. That's true. But fish, I always think of as like, I don't know, almost a step up from like bacteria and algae or something. They're schooling like animals. <laughs> Some of them are schooling animals. So is bacteria. 
<laughs> I actually don't know much about Nigeria. <laughs> ah, they're always wiggling together. Oh, okay, okay. Um, my my Indian friend says they are anyway. Moorish idols are <laughs> kind of the pinnacle of like the fish keeping hobby. And uh, it's like, you know, I think I like football. I'm going to play in the NFL. Like, nah, probably not. Yeah. You ever, you, have you ever seen uh, the Naked Gun movies with uh, Leslie Nielsen? You know, yes. the white haired. There's, a, there's the one where um, he goes to like this incredibly wealthy man's office and he's got inc- all these, he's got cool shit. You know how like rich guys will have like stuff in their office to like show off, like, oh, this is, he's got like Ty Cobb's. No, that's a different move. But he's got he's got like a, an indestructible titanium pin, like from from Japan, mm. that was made by some samurai. And he's also got like this fish in this fish tank, and he's like, they're a million dollars each. It look I don't know what kind of fish it is. And, and lionfish. It might actually have Ooh. been a lionfish. It looks spiky a little bit. It, it was I it looks so. beautiful. Long story short, somehow the pin ends up in the fish tank, and he's reaching down in the fish tank trying to retrieve it, and he ends up impaling the goddamn fish. So now the fish is on. The, the pin and he's 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 killed this man's fish it's fuck that's one of the movies i need to watch when i can get high in colorado that, that shit's so <laughs> have I'm you hoping... watched squid games yet oh. everybody's talking about squid games am i do i have to get on board uh, i, need I you think to it's just so i can have you explain it it's overrated but it's still a good like seven out of ten six and a half out of ten okay show. the the premise and i can do this without spoiling is um there are people from all walks of life rich and poor who have huge debt problems. So I guess they're all poor, but you follow where I'm saying some are like titans of business who've become, you know, who you don't know are poor. And uh, there are strong people. There are smart people. There are women, there are men, and they play this game to get lots and lots of money. It's hard to understand how much money it is because it's not U S dollars, but it's, you know, billions or something. And, uh, um, So throughout the thing, they partner up, they form alliances. Sometimes the game requires alliances. Sometimes the alliances are informal. And the people who lose each round are killed, typically. Or maybe they die in game. Sometimes they're murdered by the people who host the game for losing. And uh, they don't know what the game is going to be each round. So it makes it difficult to choose your teammates, right? What's a typical competition? Let me give one away. I'll spoil one. So they say, all right. In this game, you're going to play in pairs. And uh, so everyone chooses one teammate. And I might go to someone and say, look, I'm really smart. Like, let's just accept that. You are really strong. We don't know what this game is, but I think if we team up, we'll be a good, you know, we'll be ready for anything. And uh, God be like, okay, okay. And there's another case where maybe two guys are really strong and they're like, dude, the two of us will kick so much ass or a husband and wife team. And we go and we learn the game is marbles. And then we learn that the loser, oh, oh, they don't play marbles like we do. The, the, the common, they could choose games, but one common one is I hold some marbles in my hand. You guess if I have an odd or even amount, you hold some marbles in your hand and that determines how much you win or lose. So if you put six in your hand out of these 10, you're making a really big bet. If you have one in your hand, small bet and you win or lose. Okay. Thing is we're playing against each other. So now like we were buds, we were like friends ready to, you know, fight to the death side by side. And now we're fighting to the death against each other. There's a husband wife team who paired up and now they're playing until one of them is murdered. And like, there's a level of drama and hurt that goes in every round of the game. And then oh, there's talking sort of about a squid game. Yeah. Yeah. And then oh. there's a meta thing as to why are these people hosting this? What is the master? Um, is it televised? Mission is, behind this. Uh, no. Maybe that's a, maybe that's no. a. No, it's sort of on the down low. Like people uh, don't I, know it. It reminds happens. me a little bit of Cube, right? Where, a little yeah. bit anyway. Like, are you familiar with the Cube series of movies? I've where seen all are, the Cube series. It's, series. It's, sure. <clears throat> basically, um, it's a little bit of a mixture between Saw and Escape Room. So, like, okay. pe- these these strangers all find themselves. But it's waking, worse than both. It's much worse. Yeah. Um, that you, you like wake up in this like room, this cube shaped room. And we all know how cubes work, you know, wall in front of you, behind you, left, right, up and down. And there are portals to each of doors, if you will. And every one of them is another cube sized room. And you're essentially inside of a gigantic three dimensional puzzle. And you're trying to like find the exit. It's like a hedge maze, but three dimensional. And Mm -hmm. each room provides a new booby trap that you have to navigate. Like, Like some of them, each room is different. There might be lasers or there might be flamethrowers or... It's it's one of those movies where you're just 
intently watching for an interesting way for the next person to die yes. because there is no character development there's no structure gotcha. at no point are you like man 40 minutes ago i thought alan was a no good selfish guy but he's demonstrated himself to be valuable to the team like no it's all right are they gonna jump into the next cube oh look at that fucking retard got cut in half one thing about uh squid games that i want people to know mm -hmm. is you have to give it at least two full episodes to hook you it spends the first two episodes doing character development and stuff, which becomes important. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, you got to do your work before you can enjoy the show. How yeah. far into it are you, Woody? I, I, I'm I have five one more episode. Oh, I'm okay. on nine. Well, well I haven't seen nine. Sorry to, to go back. Uh, you're, you're liking it so far? A little mixed? I like it, but I feel like people have oversold it, you know, where they like it's they're just riveted by it. It's a 10 out of 10. And I'm giving it like a six and a half, seven. Like, I think it's good. I think it's worth watching. I recommend it. But a seven out of 10 isn't something I'm going to be talking about two years from now. Yeah. It's a good yeah. Netflix show. They don't produce as much stuff. So it's kind of just, they got, an, they got another hit that's just finally, because it's kind of yeah. becoming a bit, Netflix has kind of become a bit like, eh, recently. Did they, they, again. Do they have Ozark? Do they own Ozark? Is that right? Yeah, they do. Yeah, Ozark okay. is great. Is there a new one? A When's the last time Ozark came out? I think we're probably due for a new Ozark. It's been like few, or like at least a year, year and a half. That show rocks. I really, really like Ozark. That's probably if that's Netflix. That's my favorite thing Netflix has done. But yeah. the uh, the Squid Game thing, I, you know, I'm only halfway through. But I like these like silly premises where they don't even try and backfill. With like, and the incentive for the billionaires to do this is because blah 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 blah. It's like, it's like, no, we got a cool premise. Just assume like a couple billionaires are crazy and that they want to watch people get killed in games. I'm, I'm not to any kind of reveal of like the VIPs or anything yet, Woody. But uh, I hope they don't try and do like a convoluted explanation of it because they already pulled that once in this series, and I thought it was ridiculous. Like it, it's a spoiler, Zach, so you can you can put it up, but um. Basically, that the one guard, um, I don't want to give anything away for Kyle who hasn't watched it yet, but one guard fucks up and reveals himself and revealing who you are is a huge no-no. You can't do that. Everybody has to have masks on other than the players, and that keeps it fair. And, like, the main guy comes out with his gun to, you know, end the guy who revealed his face because, you know, that's a rule. You get fucked up if you reveal who you are. And he's like, you've destroyed the principle of the game, which is everyone is equal here, unlike out, uh, outside, and you've defied our prince. And it's like, after that bit of, of monologue, I'm like, that's so stupid. Like, I had in my head that this guy was, like, uber genius. And then he comes out here with this milk toast. We're giving them a final chance to be equal. And it's like, bitch, the game is not equal by any metric. That group stole the other group's food and nobody did anything. Like, <laughs> it's not fair at all. So I thought that was a little ham-handed and a lot of a uh, little bit silly. But overall, it's a really interesting <clears throat> show. It's a cool premise. I like those. I don't know what the genre is called, but I like when people are, like, trapped in something. And they have to figure out how to get out of it, or stuck they're like porn, on an island. Cool. And what's that? Stuck porn. That's called. Yes. Stuck. Porn. Exactly. <laughs> stuck porn. Yeah. That's what um, I'm into. Being stuck in a killer game. We haven't talked about it on the show at all, but uh, the Marvel thing. Uh, what if the animated Marvel stuff? Um, Woody and I talked about this like privately, or maybe in the Hangouts or something, about how it's it's passable an animation. It's animation's okay. The stories have good premises, but they're poorly executed. It's like the writing is bad. I did find out a woman is dir directs it. I think, uh, no, <laughs> just saying. You know, she's doing an amazing job. You said uh, the anim. You like the animation? It's it's good enough. It's good enough. Is it's what it's I would say. It's a style thing, right? I like it's not necessarily. It's, it's like there, weird a bit, there's, CG. There's a yeah. There's a weird texture thing going on. Like 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 a, it's it, There's a little less texture on like faces and stuff than you would like. And explosions yeah. kind of have this sort of 2D look to them, like fireballs and stuff. But what I wanted to get at is most of the episodes are kind of meh. The first one was okay. It's like, what if Captain America was a woman? Okay, this is kind of cool. Like, first of all, fucking kill me. What is it? Snoo Death by Snoo Snoo? Like, like, <laughs> yeah, like, she's like, awesome. Her, she's just super fucking hot. Um, and, uh, and, and I love that Like, she's still into Steve Rogers, even though he's still that little twig man. And now she's like... Like there, there's so many guys who are into that. Her fetish. name is Penny Carter, maybe. Peggy. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have given it you. I could have watched you guess at that. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> but the newest episode. Is that the so, Thor one? 
So, no, there's one after that. So, do you remember what happened at the end of the Thor one? I think so. Like Ultron landed? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not Ultron, I don't think. It is Ultron. It's not the same bad guy that was in the Thor movie with the lava face or something? Oh, no, that's Surtur. Uh, um, Yeah, it was. Oh, no, that's Ultron. Ultron lands, and then that's the end of the episode. The newest episode picks picks up. And now we're dealing with Ultron and, and, and not directly after the episode that you watched, because that's a different universe. We go back to our prime, uh, one of the prime universes or something like a completely different universe. But he's there, too. And you and you're in the and this episode is what if Ultron had won if he had if he had beaten the, the Avengers when he first came into being. Uh, you know, there was that issue where, like, you know, Vision's body was was meant to be Ultron's body, but the Avengers stole it and they put the they put the good AI in it. Uh-huh. But but so the what if is what if Ultron had gotten his Vision body and become Vision, and uh, and and so they they follow that narrative, and it's it's either I guess it's the a two parter because after a 30, 35 minute episode it's it ends and there's definitely a lot more to come because Ultron is such a hassle to deal with they've had to go get some help and uh, it's like, like like his power level is greater than anything we've ever seen like in in all of Marvel. Like, like they make they they really well, Thanos make you... exists more than that. You say, oh, that's such I don't a good sp- moment with yeah, that. I, <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, um, okay, what, actually, don't spoil it for me. I think I want to wait another you. week yeah. and watch them back to back. Dude, it's one of those. It, that episode was... is one of those things where you every after like five minutes, shit starts just popping off. Every moment after that is like, holy shit, he can just do that. You know. Yeah. Like, yeah, his because power level is really, way above anything we've ever seen before. So the, it's the Marvel What If series is a bunch of like, hey, what if uh, zombies attacked in the Marvel world? What if, um, you know, instead of Captain America, we had Captain Britain, female chick? What, what if this? What if that? Every one of the premises is a 10 out of 10. You know how Kyle has this superpower where he can uh, describe a TV show or a movie to you? You absolutely fucking love it. And it's usually better than the movie itself, right? Everyone watching this knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. Kyle's good what if that. does that? What if they're like, hey, what if? And then they lay out this premise and you're like, oh, oh, oh I'm, I'm so glad I live in the world where you made this. And then you watch it and you're like, oh, okay. It didn't live up to the... Uh, uh, it didn't live up to the trailer, I guess I should say. Yeah. It's worth noting that like all of those seem like they're the first part of something. Like They all end on a bit of a cliffhanger, so yeah. I get where you're coming from with that, but there's you got to watch the next episode of it because it, it, it does a little bit of tying in. Yeah, um, it starts tying them in. And like, I don't think it's a sport. I don't think this is a sport because this is something I don't know. I don't know if this is going to happen, but I, I, I'm guessing that maybe... Maybe all of the universes we've touched on, like like those individual characters, maybe they maybe like the survivors from all of them are gonna have to band together or something like that. Maybe like that Thor we saw, who was like only child Thor. He was cool. To, he was cool. He was like Gaston. Uh, maybe he has <laughs> to. <laughs> maybe he has to band together with like the survivors from the zombie universe, and and like maybe the Killmonger from the uh, the 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 universe where he became Black Panther. Maybe all of those characters have to like come together in in their in like a singular universe to like deal with uh, the big bad in this current episode. It's it's if they do that, then this the whole series redeems itself a little bit in my eyes. Now, I, I don't know anything about superheroes, but Captain Britain, that doesn't seem like it's going to be anything different than Captain America. Like if they want a different world, like wouldn't they do like Captain Russia? And it's like, how is the U.S. going to beat this super soldier without a super soldier? Like, you know what I mean? Because like, if England has the super soldier and America's like, fuck, we need help, England's just going to send Captain UK over here, right? <laughs> like, they're like, where, whereas if Russia or if it's like Captain China, now we got a problem. How are we going to deal with this when we don't have a Captain America? That um, well, the, the, there already is a Russian Captain America. He's called the Red Guardian. Um, so that's already a thing. No, never but, mind. Uh, yeah, but but in this and, and actually there's a little Red Guardian teaser in the in the new uh in the newest episode. Um but 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 no, I get what you're saying to some mm-hmm. extent. Um like seeing what, how we would fight back against superheroes without having access to them would be neat. You are right about that whole Captain Britain thing that it, the premise seems kind of odd because in the comics they knew that and t- Captain Britain in the comics can like he has the ability to like go into the time travel, go into the multiverse. He's like a police officer, yeah. which is really fitting of the UK. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's that. It's like this weird, like 
it doesn't really fit how you'd think Captain Britain would be. I've just named him. He's that a super time. soldier with just still just with a shitty baton. He really <laughs> because, hates, he, because he can't get yeah. a license or anything. More. He really <laughs> he hates do you remember? The, do you remember the episode of it's all of um not it's always sunny? It's the episode of uh, Reno nine one one when the English Bobby cop comes over and the yeah. Reno nine one one cops are all just like giving him a hard time. They're like, so you don't have a gun? No, no, no firearms, no firearms. You don't have a gun. You don't have a siren. What do you do? You blow your whistle at them? Well, yes, that, that usually gets their attention. It's like, they're just, all right, well, we're going to have a little traffic stop here. You just you just hang back here. I want you to get muffed up or anything. And like he, he's, he like pulls over guys like, you're going a little fast back there, weren't you? And, and he's like, here, hold my flashlight while I go ch check on this driver. You're going a little fast, weren't you? And he's like, yeah, I guess I didn't. You see the sign back there. And the next thing you know, the British cop, is dragging him out of the passenger side window. <laughs> Get out, you dirty speeder! You dirty speeder! <laughs> and he's pummeling him with a flashlight, just beating the shit up. The man's crying like a little girl. He's like, oh, please stop! Oh, I oh, wish the big man that was here, the big man who was speeding! <laughs> the little girl going too fast on my road! Here's your license back. And he goes, thank you. That's right. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> they get back to the car, and the Reno 911 cop is just like shaken and disturbed. He's just like, he's like, there's your flashlight. But it was, that's a nice piece there. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> From then on, that, so that show is that show is such a sleeper. Like people I oh, know who have like the same sense of humor as me have never seen an episode of that, and everyone loves it. Reno 911 is Halloween hilarious. costume last year. Oh yeah, Mr. Dangle. You did. You killed I it, killed Lieutenant it. Dangle. <laughs> yeah. It was just a way for you to show off your legs. <laughs> <laughs> you can't show off your legs on this show. <laughs> oh, when you were walking away, though, there was a lot of ass. There was a lot of ass. <laughs> Dude, you couldn't wear underwear with those bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me I wore a short skirt for nothing? I can't even show legs on this show? This is BS. You whatever you want. You uh, dude, you I, want. I haven't had the chance to slide the chair back, but like, this is the sort of skirt you need to cross your legs with. I wonder <laughs> if you showed your nipples right now if we'd get in trouble. <laughs> That's an odd suggestion, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> would, they, would they be wonder, like, well, clearly, if they were to show he's just dressing were to, like, up. Slowly oh. caress them. Yeah, or, or they'd be like, no, no, that lens. counts. That counts, bitch. You're in trouble. That's that's something I've been like eh, with oh. on Twitch TOS because every now and then mm -hmm. a staff member will show up, and you can see when a staff member joins on Twitch, and the rules are so fucking skewed because they obviously weren't meant for me. Mm -hmm. Like, it's something like you can't show a female presenting nipple, and it's like okay, fair. So how? What's the line? Like, where does it become like? What I'm, if I button this jacket up, am I now like a male present and then I can yeah. show nipple? Or like, uh, you know, guys can't tell if you're wearing makeup unless you wear like red lipstick. So like maybe I just have this and no one can tell I can show nipple. Or I've got uh, these things, the false mm -hmm. ones that I've got. I've got another one over there and I I still don't know whether I can show them. I can show that you the back of it so you can see what I'm on about. Sure. It's, it's just a toy, right. I would imagine. It's okay. We've shown dildos. No, it's yeah, yeah. Nice. We've shown gigantic anal plugs. I feel like <laughs> you're not breaking well, new ground here. Yeah, this. and if it's just a piece of rubber, like that's fine. I would well, imagine. Okay, look, this is the back of it. It looks like a chicken cutlet Cut or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the front of it front has, of it has like a nipple. nipple on, and it's. Uh -huh. Do you know what I'm on about? Like, do you know yeah. what these look like? It's not a realistic looking nipple, but it is a. It, you can tell it is a nipple, but it is. I look a little bit like a serial killer with all this like random female body parts lying around my house. There's like <laughs> there's something you can get that's like a full top you fuck made me. of <laughs> I'd are, fuck me. <laughs> are fake boobs different for people who have boobs and people who don't? Like does do the mean? question make sense? Like like if it, there are chicks who uh, wear those chicken cutlets uh yeah. to to enhance what they have. Yeah, but then there are guys who wear them because they're they don't have anything to start with. It, 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 is one like hollow backed and the other not? You'd think uh, that this I think is branded for like drag queens, cross dressers, and like people Pastec with desert. Yes, I was about to uh, have trouble on the word for that. That's what it's like branded on, on Amazon. So that's where like you have like maybe one or both uh, mm -hmm. that have needed to be gone for surgery. I've never heard of anything for like expansion because you just use like foam, like. Every bra has like a bit of foam padding because you know all yeah. of them do. I haven't found one. I think it's called a bralette when it's not. Yeah, or something when you don't. Yeah, it doesn't have anything, anything at all to add. Okay. Yeah, I, I've got a lady friend who's got like a cups, but but she wears this absurd bra, and it's yeah. just like when you feel it, it's just like I'm like. 
what am I grabbing here? You're like a football player with pads on or something like that. Like, <laughs> None of this is real. And she takes that, it off. That is a and form of like, lying. There's so mm. much padding. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, your little titties are cool. Like, 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 I, I got a problem with your little titties. I knew, mm. I knew you had little titties. You weigh 85 fucking pounds. You weren't mm. fooling me with the, the socks. and the, like, 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 yeah. like she, She's like, ah, I just I can't go out without my padding. <laughs> mm. like, I don't get it's, it. It's a dangerous uh, precedent to set. If it's she a very dangerous a, precedent. A man yeah. who's less tolerant than you. Yeah, yeah. Mm. If you ever get attacked, you know, and the rapist discovers that he's been bamboozled, he's going to rip. You got to think about him. That's and how you're going to escape. Like, how can you be so upset that like the girl that you are after you get you get to the point where you're about you're in the bedroom of the girl only a cups are you kidding me i expect you <laughs> to be at least <laughs> you vomit get the fuck out of my house <laughs> you're going to vomit you kind of can't fake you kind of can't fake an ass though that's one thing that's like quite hard oh, to do oh false no really? there's, there's a pan there's that underwear that does that have you not seen that underwear I have some, and it it's it's so hard to make look realistic. Like it's a talent in itself. Like mm. you need to have experience with wearing them to make them look okay. Because I have some. They're like a they're like you know proper full hip pads and everything. Because um, I am shaped like Michael Phelps, so I, <laughs> I kind of need that sometimes. But um, yeah, that it's it's really hard to make look good because. Or at least, okay, let's say a girl's wearing leggings, right? You can kind of get the outline of an ass. Like, you can see, like, the crack mm -hmm. and everything. When you're wearing, yeah. like, pants that do that, that goes away. It's not the same, like, shape. It's more like a flat. It just doesn't look good. And it looks pretty good in right? Zach's link. That's yeah. Sweet. They make If it's, a, if it's an Amazon also? thing, they've just, yeah, that's just a Photoshop thing. <laughs> oh, fair. Yeah. Oh, damn it. Was that not fact-checked? <laughs> <laughs> what, do, you think, do you think the people that are hiring models for the for their like oh make your butt look giant then you're gonna hire small oh yeah i like the ones where it, like it's clearly like someone in china scamming you with like it it best ass implant in a whole world ass <laughs> equals area on the back and it's like, like just un, it's like unhelpful tips yeah <laughs> i love that, maybe, on amazon. that i shop exclusively on amazon so there's like uh it's it's maybe my quality margin's not quite as high as it should be. Um, so you never go to the store and try on the the wear you're oh doing, or God. do you? No. <laughs> well, I was curious, like if you're just like the when you walk in like a dude and you're like, oh uh, yeah, I wear a size eleven and I want five pairs of shoes. Yeah, but, I'm like I'm I do wear a size eleven weirdly. All those heels they look fine over there, but I've picked them up before and went, oh, okay, I'm gonna try on these shoes. And people go, that, that, you, what? <laughs> They're massive. Hold on. Look, look, look. I've got <laughs> something next to me. Like, these are large. Oh, my. Yeah. No, you're, you're a big bitch. I am. <laughs> <laughs> large feet, even larger thigh highs. <laughs> but there's a, uh, oh, my God. No, I couldn't even imagine. People have, uh, th now online shopping's so easy. You can almost get better, you know, and you can get better stuff. And if you shop at place like Next, I'm not buying Louis Vuitton dresses mm -hmm. to wear one time for a stream. You know, yeah. like I'm like Shein. You can get like a, an outfit that looks really good in photos for, for like three dollars. You know, like it. It's so much. Wait, easier. are you following the female only wear an outfit once rule? That I'm a, a silly performer, rule. Woody. Seems like it's more of a streamer rule. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. okay. All right, I'm a performer. I, I'm, I'm on board again. Is, is any what? part of you, like, when you're doing the shopping, like, oh, that's going to look real cute on me. I like that. Or is, I it like, that or is it like, I'm just, all right, time to buckle down, get work done. Ah, oh, that'll work. That'll work. <laughs> <laughs> no, I my mindset is now slowly morphed into like, okay, <laughs> that looks quite... I hate when I know I get those thoughts. Like, sometimes I'll be sitting streaming and I'll be playing with my hair and like, fuck. <laughs> Sometimes I'll just be sitting there looking at gay porn. <laughs> <still in my head. laughs> yeah, no, that that thought definitely does cross my mind, or at least I think practically I shop at stuff. I'm like, oh, okay, right, that's got like it's black and it covers my shoulders, it's gonna make my shoulders look smaller, blah blah blah, stuff like that, right? Or like, oh, okay, I can show like this much chest because mm -hmm. I wish I did it because it looks so it looks so cool. If you give me like thirty minutes, I could do it off camera but like i can create pretty damn realistic cleavage 
So what, every time I find something that would work for that, that that's something I I go to. Is it like makeup? Like you're like drawing shades in? I've uh, no, well, kind of. It's a bunch of different stuff. My method is uh, a secret and patented, hopefully, uh, <laughs> pending for it. But basically, I get like there's if you've never heard of them, they're very strange. There are fully strapless bras. Because yep. strapless bras, most times, they're just like, okay, the strap doesn't go over your shoulder, but there's still a band. These mm -hmm. ones, like, they just stick, like, two pads, and they just stick to you. And so I get those, and they're, like, two different things that you, like, clip onto each other. So I just put them a little bit further back, and then clip them, and then suddenly it looks... It is... I wouldn't say indistinguishable, but indistinguishable from, like, head-on, and, like, this angle. Like, you know, yeah, as I mean, soon as I move more than that, it doesn't work anymore. But... That's Have you considered, good. like, making a workout plan, like, just ass day and just, like, chest flies? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, and that's it, and you're just, like, no, no curls, none of that shit, like, that's really optimize about, yourself? That's the thing about being a vegetarian, is that pretty much every meat substitute is pure protein. I think I was talking to Kyle about it, too, uh, that, like... The, the stuff I've been eating is, I've been, I, people take the uh, the piss out of me, they like, I don't work out upper body, I don't need to. Like, mm -hmm. me just lifting a few boxes around the house, which I rarely do, gets me, like, strong enough, like, like average or but like, I'm pretty, I'm a pretty strong guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope, I don't really measure up to you three, but still, you know, I'm not doing too bad. But, like, it's all 95% protein in that, it's like my, my co micro protein, micro protein. It's made like mushrooms, and people took the mic that I, I was saying oh, I gain muscle really easily, and then I proved it with the fact that I looked into what I was eating. Oh. So what, if I keep mushroom? doing squats, I'll have a giant ass, hopefully. Do it up, yeah. <laughs> then you won't need those underwear. Exactly, it'll hmm. be That's powerful. The plan. How much money? How, how much of a donation are we going to need for you to get actual breast implants? I think that's what everyone wants to know. I've said how much it would be. I think it, I, I, the number changes all the time, um, but it depends how long they'd be for. Because there's everyone's got a number for like how long Until for a like year. Finish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, so breast implants for uh, twenty seconds. I don't know about that, but <laughs> people say a lot of the time for like a year. And there was, have you heard of that story about the guy? The oh my god, I bet. just think yeah. yeah. <laughs> he got breast implants for a year as on a bet for a hundred grand, and they just ended up keeping them. But my yeah. opinion is that was like yeah. My opinion of that was that 100 grand is kind of low to get tits for a, for a year. Like, and they're not small either. They're not A cups. They're like, they're like proper implants. Yeah, they have to uh, blur them out. So what's yeah, the number? A yeah. hundred thousand dollar boobs. I think it'd need to be enough money that I wouldn't need to work, right? If it was forever, I'd, it'd be in the millions. Yeah, you definitely you leave them in there for a few months or something. I mean, they're gonna need a while to heal up and like like. Eh. You know, like, like you're not gonna immediately. All right, they're healed. Time for another surgery. I do it for a out. year for like three hundred because they, it leave, it, we took them out. Three dollars or pounds? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not gonna three dollars grand, or pounds. We'll make I it like three thousand dollars right now. We'll start scheduling <laughs> the doctor. It costs more than that. I'd be out money. You would. <laughs> yeah, you lose Any money. Get breast implants. Yeah, <laughs> Doctor Nick will throw them in there for five hundred bucks. <laughs> That's. <laughs> God, and I, I imagine if you if you Nick. got them if you got them and then you got rid of them, like your skin would look really fucking bizarre, right? No, I uh, imagine a plastic surgeon's removing them too, and he would. Yeah, make they. It uh, right. I think I, I made that complaint because I always see like the girls, like trans uh, trans men, like when they go from men to, uh, from women to men, they have like a bit of scarring because obviously that's yeah. a lot to move. Yeah. But a breast implant is just what I showed you, these right, right? but under you, under the skin. And I think they go in from like your armpit, armpit or something. I just push them in, yep. and then you maybe have a tiny bit of scarring here. And then yep. that was the that was my mm -hmm. like they're just squashing every complaint they often that I have had. to I've move your women. nipple though. I've seen women that have a long scar underneath their entire boob. Is that bad mm. doctors or that's, different yeah, procedure? That's a, that there, there's a couple ways to do it, and there's a couple ways to place them. They they can go in they can go in from the bottom, and they can go in from the side. When they go in from the side. We you underestimate just how stretchy skin is, like because yeah. they make this tiny little incision and they shove a fucking Oof. turkey in into it. They're just like they've got a tool and they're just like working it roughly into that hole. They're just rawr, 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 packing this huge thing under there. But you want it under the muscle, uh, from what I understand, not like but just like skin and then 
implant when you feel implants feel gross they feel uh-huh. like water bottles for the most part sorry anybody was, out there who's fake titties they don't they don't feel good they can do better um, ones though. i'm sure they can but There's uh the fat implants too you can do that they don't look as like perfect though i've heard like they don't look as they don't look like just orbs <laughs> which a lot of them yeah. end up looking like but uh i've heard of that Something interesting was brought up to me. I've heard you can get 24 hours implants. So genuinely, un, like, unironically, you can get... There's women that are like, I couldn't find a use case for it un, unless, like, uh, a, you know, a woman's got, like, a really fancy date to go to or something. And she just <laughs> wants a bit of a... She really wants to deceive a rich man. Yeah, a, re- <laughs> a, really, a bit of a boost for something. Because it, it lasts 24 hours. They inject, like, uh, saline, I think. Ooh. And that's what it is. Yeah, I don't think it's, like, for, like, a guy to, like, have... D- you don't get D-cups out of that, but you get maybe maybe a size up or something. Yeah, I think oftentimes with implants, they have to move your nipple to another area, too, to make it, like, point the right way. God. So that's a thing. They move it back. <laughs> no, no, he's saying that... <laughs> Repositioned. Like, let's yeah. see. Uh, what would it be? Is it That nipple's boobs, upside down. <laughs> if the boob sags and then they, like, put it under the muscle, now it's, like, pointing down. They need to, like, take that no. nipple, reposition it in the proper spot. Can look up. It yeah, can no, be tricky. I think a better question would be how much for you guys. Because I'm already, I'm already deep in the hole here. Like, my number's right. probably going to be a bit lower. Or mm. maybe higher, because I know how much I probably get. But, like... I kind of want to know individually how much. How big? Like, like, like some just, big honkers? Just absolutely bananas. Oh, I'd man. say like C cups are pretty normal. Like they're the least um, but noticeable. You couldn't hide that. I would really. get C cups and keep them for a year for, I think a million dollars would do it. I think a million would do it. With the surgery paid for, all the expenses and everything. Yeah, yeah. You get, you get cash, a million. Or tax free, yeah. and, and I would uh, that would be pending speaking to the plastic surgeon and making sure that we're going right. to get back to something normal by the time <laughs> we're done. Um, yeah, can I, I like, think can I have him do lipo while he's there? <laughs> well, like, <laughs> just move it. Yeah, just just take all yeah. my all my oh, late great. night binge, take all my late night binge eating and just make it hot. Ah, right up to the tits. <laughs> yeah, probably about a million. I just I can't imagine like getting out of the shower. Putting my glasses on it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I think Every I can get a million five. I think if, if people hear a million five, they think a million, but it's significantly more. That's what that's my negotiation. That's tactic. a million after tax, <laughs> right? Oh, good point. Mm. Uh, the, damn, my number's definitely that? lower, which is a bit. I was gonna say like for me, like three hundred grand or something. But you would you okay if you were gonna do it? Especially I want Taylor as well. Yeah, because you two, Kyle, uh, Kyle and Taylor, you're both fucking jacked at this point like you're both too muscular to look good with boobs uh <laughs> so no such thing <laughs> <laughs> you'd pull it off yeah don't judge my porn you you i don't know i i would i just look so absurd i would be I'd too embarrassed to go anywhere. anywhere yeah that that would be that would suck but then also like a million 1.6 million dollars like i originally said Hmm. That's, <laughs> that's that's a, that's a what, what if what if some like what if what if some Saudi billionaire like throws five million dollars at us and 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 this time yeah. three months from now we all have tits sitting here and we're all just like what were we thinking? <laughs> <laughs> what he's like? I'm already a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> what were we Twenty two years. It's thrown off my flight patterns. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the difference between having four million dollars and having five point five million dollars is, Kyle? Tits. You've got tits. <laughs> <laughs> That's the difference. That's the difference. Uh, <laughs> Lots of back pain. <laughs> my wife won't sleep with me. <laughs> I mean, if it's a one year thing, right? I, I could I could see that for sure. I lo- what, what's that one? I feel uh, like for one year, right, God Jackie would whore me. me out. She'd be like, yeah. for another million, you can fuck him in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, only, uh, you've got an expensive yeah. asshole. I, mean, like, I don't mean to brag, but yeah. And you wouldn't even be able to tell, at least like I have so much chest hair, you wouldn't be able to tell the scars after it was done. It would just be good I'd, to go. Ideally, it's a minimal scarring thing. I have thing. no chest hair. You've seen my chest. There's the, I, I, I'm, I'm, like a, I'm like a hairless cat over here. It is, but you look great. You look even better with this. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the... Uh, okay. And stuff. I've started doing... Uh, 
bodybuilders do, i think they they shave like everything or they wax everything but mm-hmm. i've also been doing that i'm not like naturally a hairy guy but i shave my legs i've got sh- shaved legs or and stuff shave my armpits mm-hmm. out of doing all of that i've occasionally i've like uh razor shaved my arms because you can't really like oh uh, like electric razor if you shave your arms with a razor it fu- you ruin yeah, your arms it's awful oh awful. really Huh. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Fun tip: Don't ever try. You get bumps and stuff. It's gross. You want to use nair yeah. though. You should use nair because I like for those photos yeah. that I took. I nared my arms. I didn't do anything. I like trimmed my uh like like armpit hair so it's not all bushy and weird. But like, um, so you could actually see some like definition like in my armpit because like a, there was so little fat left. Like you could see striations in my goddamn armpit. Oh my but God. um, and um, I did. I I have. I I did nair my legs, but those pictures just looked too gay they just yeah. too gay. there was just i've never too had much. trouble shaving my far. arms i <laughs> never just... got the pin no i i just i don't know i guess i'm it's how far up because it's usually i've done it twice because I, I did it once right. and then the one time i was like i fucked this up somehow and i tried to do it in All a more professional way my whole way. arm my armpit my deltoid i was a swimmer oh you got lucky there i don't that's yeah. usually that's a pretty common thing the but area I'll... i had trouble is um I, I guess the whole like they called them pussy pimples, like the air. So back in the day, you wore those tiny swimsuits that the swimmers wore. Now mm-hmm. they have like bicycle shorts, but back in the day, they wore little banana holsters. And uh, it did a bikini one. Yeah, bikini yeah, one. I guess. So the bikini area would like probably rub against the newly shaved hair and cause little pimple things. That yeah, sucked. yeah. Nair is great for that. Like, like, like I use Nair there, and uh, you don't get like ingrown hairs or anything. You got to be careful whether you'll burn yourself. And uh, I use aftershave afterwards to like make sure there's not like because it will like burn enough skin. Yeah, it yeah, hurts like hell. Yeah, it's incredibly oh, painful. Fuck. Yeah, I remember yeah. when I was like 15, <laughs> I like started getting more chest hair, and like I started like it, it grew outward from my nipples, like you know, in the beginning of like Lord of the Rings, where like you see the orc army on the map, how it grows across Middle Earth. Like it started on the nipple area and like grew out from there, and. <laughs> I, I I hated that look because I just had that like middle tuft here and then just hairy ass nipples and then like enough hair around it to be noticeable. And I remember once in the bathroom, like before school, it was like swimming in gym or something. And I was like shaving around my nipples. And it yep. wasn't until after I did it that like mm. I was like, this is what this is the worst look you can imagine <laughs> because really? it's two perfectly clean areas around my nipples because oh, I had it's other hair it's just targets yeah. you, you underestimate oh, how weird. light your skin gets when there's no hair on it I guarantee yeah. you saw that with your legs just I was targets. really shocked how like bright they look I mean, no, because I, be- I shave my nipples too I, I, any, anywhere I want a girl's mouth to go man, that's getting shaved <laughs> but you like you trim the whole the whole there's thing no hair right? like like on like 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 the big part there's hair like there's a strip down the middle like like right down the middle of my chest and that's it my chest mm-hmm. hair ends here <laughs> <laughs> because he shaves his beard <laughs> yeah, i trimmed down my beard i'm using long hair of hair yeah like, like there's no hair up here at all like like there's nothing like the hair the hair starts like here yeah and there's like almost none and that's like, like two little quick like boop, boop, you're done mm. yeah i i was saying like if i Sorry to insult your chest hair. I was saying, like, uh, um, the, the things that I've, like, noticed now that, like, I think I will live the rest of my life doing this is, like, I will shave my armpit hair forever. It's really? so much better. Even just, like, if you want to trim it, it's so much better. It's so gross when it's, like, really long. And it's just kind of like a, a damn patch to me. Okay, it's just why do a- you feel like it's better? Because I feel like it's worse. And I've also done both. Why would you think it was better? Because it's just damn. Because I think have long hair, hair serves as a lubricant. It and does. I'm like, you know, look at me. Uh, look at me. I'm built for speed right now. Right? <laughs> You're a friction problem. <laughs> but you have a shirt on. That kind of does the same thing. Oh, like okay. shirt right now, the shirt does. Space. But I, I felt I was yeah. very aware of my skin, like rubbing and sticking and kind of like, I don't know. Yeah. Like the, it just, it, it didn't flow. I found it a definitely... happy medium in between that where like, I've never shaved my underarms or anything, but like when it gets really long and like I'm noticing myself swing more, I'll just mm. like take scissors and like get rid of half of the total length and like my my sweating really diminishes and you still don't get like an uncomfortable feeling. Yeah, I just take my trimmer that's got like a zero blade or whatever, the same thing that like I like shape my neck up with or like um, whatever and, and just like kind of wave it around in there. Like I, don't, I try not to touch the skin because I don't want to completely take the hair off, mm-hmm. but like really thin things out in there and it's a lot more comfortable but yeah but 
I'm with Woody. That it does add a certain amount of lubrication in there. And if you uh, if you were to shave it all off, which I think I have done before, it feels weird for a while. You know, yeah, that takes, that takes you getting used to. I've gotten maybe it's that I've gotten so used to it now that now I'm just like, it's the before times, <laughs> <laughs> and now it's I prefer long, how it is ago. now. Yeah, you don't feel like prude. Pubes are required lubrication. Pube? Uh, I didn't say pubes. That's a different Kyle, thing. Kyle, though, I know shaves. Mm-hmm. Wait, am I wrong? Uh, I don't. There, there's almost nothing down there. We're just right, we're right. Just getting, and you don't feel like they're useful lubrication that you're missing. No, no. I, I your pubic hair. Yeah, y- yeah. I don't. I don't need any. I'm pretty sure know. that's why they're there. That's why your pube. That's why you have armpit. Two hair. reasons. That's why you have pube hair? You know, there's a little lube going on. Yeah, it's two reasons. Uh, one of them is the lubrication that the hair provides, and the other is uh, to hold scents that are like important, like sexual pheromones, which isn't really vital to us at this evolved state. But like uh, when we were more uh, uh, closer to lower hominids, it was kind of important for you to have some funk going on down there, so the ladies could get a whiff of your your, your manliness. Babe, I smell your dick from a mile away. Yeah, oh, exactly. I know. Exactly. <laughs> I'm on the cheese only diet. Oh. <laughs> no, I've, I've swapped You're dipping that, your dick in it. I've swapped that. I've gone like shaved armpits and the same like trim buzz cut there. Like just very neat, but not. Uh, uh, yeah, that's what I go for yeah. too. I go, you know what? I'm, I'm trying to replicate someone who has perfect pubes. So I just trim <laughs> the hedges until I get what I want. Yeah, I don't want razor bumps. And I'm nair, too baby. I'm too much of a, a Nancy to to do Kyle's smear all your genitals in there and then wait what you feel like is an appropriate amount of time and hope you don't get a chemical burn. There's touch and go. So so like I, I've done this before, but but you know for anybody out there who's hairy and wishes they weren't quite so hairy, I use gl- first of all you want we want gloves because like you don't want nair on your hands. It it it's a it's depilatory cream. It, it's it's mm-hmm. it, it's some sort of corrosive material, and uh, you just rub it in. You get a little bit damp, but not like out of the shower, dripping wet. You just like splash some water on the areas that you're going to treat. And then you really like rub the the stuff in well. And just, I, I set a timer for like three to five minutes. And when it gets close to five, I hop in the shower and, and I've got like one of those loofahs and I start scrubbing it off as fast as I can, um, like, like trying to get it off. And like, usually it doesn't work very well the first time. You'll get like 85% of the way there and you look like you're you've been exposed to radiation where you have these patches of completely perfectly smooth skin and then patches of like tufts of like hair that's just like ah, what happened it's like that scene in RoboCop where the guy gets the toxic waste on him and the skin slopping off that's what the hairs look like mm-hmm. they're just they're fucked but then the second day you do the same thing again and and you you're able to like target those areas that were a little tougher than the rest and by the time that's done you're just incredibly smooth and and it, t- it it lasts longer than a shave, like because it melts the hair down like below the skin a little bit. Oh. It does burn if you go too far. I didn't know about that lasting longer. I might try that because shaving. Um, I think I've I spoke to a girl about it because like when I, I I these eyelashes are to stay. Like they're um they last like two weeks. These don't come off. I take the rest of my makeup off. There's not a ton, but I I take that off. But the eyelashes stay. And you're like laying on a bed getting these done. And she was talking about how she's had everything lasered, everything, yeah, mm-hmm. and how badly that hurts as a woman. And um, she asked, "Could you laser balls?" I was like, "I fucking hope, I hope not. I wouldn't want you to <laughs> laser by my balls." And I was saying no. how like she said how like nice smooth balls are, like as a you know tip mm-hmm. for for her. But um, oh my god, getting a razor by your, getting a razor like a, an actual razor, holy shit, that's terrifying no i got a town down there just i i do with an actual razor too but i'm very careful now in that like i remember when i was like 16 or so 17 (laughs) i was doing that and i like sliced my nutsack yeah and it was very yeah it just it'll keep bleeding (laughs) i uh I, I, to this I, day, I, uh, <laughs> to this day, I just my boss like is so infected. <laughs> just, <laughs> just fourteen years of oh. sepsis. <laughs> I was, I was, I was. There was a girl over, and I was like going to take a shower and get ready for us to like uh, have some sexy time. And uh, and I was like, all right, let, let's shave things up while we're in here. And I was in a hurry because the sooner I get done in here, the sooner we're, I can jump in bed with her. And I cut the top of my ass crack with a razor. And nothing has ever bled. 
like that before. And I'm literally like holding a washcloth on the top of my ass crack, like a, like a maxi pad. I'm like, open the door and like, look back in there. I'm like, I cut the top of my ass crack and it won't stop bleeding. And she, she laughed so fucking hard. <laughs> How are you shaped with an actual razor just behind you with a mirror or something? Yeah. Yeah. Just, just put a, put a leg up on something and get back there and go to work. I don't even like, want to begin to tackle. I mean, the my ass crack is like the side of a Detroit highway. <laughs> just, it hasn't been just untouched for it. 30 years. It's like Fangorn Forest. <laughs> it is like Fangorn Forest. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are sentient. <laughs> like, you, know, so you hear moans of pain. <laughs> yeah, what a nice that. way to say you've got crabs. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like yeah. the the crack of your ass if you're shaving was it the crack of your ass? Oh yeah, all everything. The top of the crack where it stops being a crack is like, where you yeah, cut that, it, right? That's where I that's where I cut myself. Yeah, yeah. you that's got hard really area. lucky that it was there because I feel like the inside crack of your ass is a fucking that's a scary place that's to get. That's an easier cut. place to shave, but because it's just kind of it, one direction. It's it's when you get to the top of the crack where the razor yeah. doesn't want to like conform. And like, like, like and, and like get in there. But you don't want to cut. You don't want to cut yourself in that area, like yeah. Finn's saying, because that's where you shit out of. Well, yeah, yeah. I and and like whenever I like shave that area, like especially if I'm not about to like have sex or whatever, uh, for aftershave and to like make sure I don't get like ingrown hairs or any sort of infection, I'll use Neosporin. I'll like, like put Neosporin in there and uh, and that, and that makes sure that everything heals up and doesn't get infected. Because I am afraid of that. Like if I were to get some sort of mm. ass crack infection, like. God, that'd be embarrassing to go to a doctor for. <laughs> have you, you ever had to go to a doctor? Nurse, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, have you ever had to go to a doctor for something like embarrassing, and you're like weighing the options of like losing a testicle versus telling a doctor that you've like nicked your ball shaving or something like that? I've like, had like the "you're an idiot" response from a doctor before. Like, I, yeah. I, when I was a kid, I like I when I was like I'm too old to like a kid, but like too old. Like 15, 16, something stupid. I, um, there was, you like, you have pencils, pens at school, and there's like, I don't know if you remember, it, there's little pots you can sharpen pencils in. Yeah. And I remember the pot had got full, and I tipped the pot out of like all the wood shavings and all that. I was like, oh, God damn it, there's my, you know, just wanting to be neat. There's still stuff in there. I can't get it out. So I just put it in front of my face and blew, and all <laughs> just went back into my eye. So I got wood in the back of my eye, oh, no. and the doctor just gave me a response: "If you're an idiot, why would you think that would work?" Ugh. Like there, lead and wood. <laughs> this is a, a different story. When I was in grade school, uh, this was a kid that got hurt as a result of a prank. But where, well, basically, I, I was large for my age. I was maybe you know third grade or so, and there was this small kid sitting next to me on the bleachers and you know how the bleachers is people can come up behind you and like fuck with your shoes fuck with your legs like jackass style and this one shithead the same guy who uh would spin the fire poi years and years later in the backyard uh, yep. on mushrooms this same guy he was a little shithead bully and he went up and i was sitting talking to this kid who got traditionally bullied a lot his name was nate and uh this other guy came in and unbeknownst to both of us he tied my shoes my shoelaces, two Nate's shoelaces, my right leg to his left leg. He did that and without you noticing? Without no noticing. He was a deft little fucker. And, uh, <laughs> and like, I'm on the, the far left side of the bleachers, right? And so then he calls me during recess, the same guy. He runs over there and goes, Taylor, we're playing football. And I, like, jump out of the bleachers to run over there and play football. And I dragged this poor kid out of the bleachers. And he just slammed on the ground. And he was all skint up. And this little bitch tried to, like frame it that i had tied my own shoelaces to this kids in an elaborate form of bullying but like teachers did not buy that they knew it was him they knew i didn't do shit like that but i did i felt bad anyway because he was like i think he went home that day he was like so skint up on his legs oh he was never kind of funny, it, it, was, though, like, it wasn't bleachers on grass it was on concrete so finster taylor hit puberty at like six years old so he essentially tied this poor kid i'm exaggerating <laughs> to a water buffalo and then Come here, boy. <laughs> I, was like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I may get four steps before I realize I'm dragging. Were <laughs> you yeah, that, that one kid that in school cool. that like had a beard at, at some really young age? I did. There's I was always growing. one of those. Yeah, yeah. I was. It's funny you say that because uh, I was really embarrassed of growing facial hair early because in in eighth grade there was only one guy 
who could grow like a big beard. And he was bullied ruthlessly by everyone for it. And not even just that. They'd be like, you're a fucking loser. You stink. You have BL. Like they were, they were so mean to this guy. Like to this day, sometimes I'll be like going to fall asleep and I'll be like, yeah, I hope that guy's doing all right. Like, like it was, it was, he's a wolf man now. Yeah. And I remember (laughs) it was was like, it was either late. I think it may have been even late seventh grade. And I like went to my dad and was like, will you please teach me how to shave so that no one knows I'm growing a beard? Cause I don't want to get bullied. Like, like Peter is. And he was like, yeah. And so he taught me to shave. And it was like freshman year over the summer that I did, that I like grew out the beard and everybody was like, that rocks. That's awesome. (laughs) And it was like, Oh, I've I've been, I could have done this like a couple of years ago too. Yeah. 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 We just hate, we just hate dog boy, Dave. Like it wasn't the beard. (laughs) Oh no. We like, we just hate Peter. You know, we just, we're just going to bully him no matter what. Yeah. There was a guy in my, uh, that I went to high school with named Jared, uh, really good guy. And, um, he had a beard, not to better than yours. Like he had, oh, man. A, he had a serious, thick, man. perfect beard that was like mm-hmm. as a top tier beard, the best of beards. Not tenth grade, like tenth grade. His legs were so goddamn hairy in middle school. It was it was a sight to see. Like I, <laughs> like, like I, I just remember being in math class with him, <laughs> and like <laughs> I just remember being in math class with him and looking at my legs. And it looked like when a woman forgets to shave for a couple days <laughs> and, then, and looking over at him and, and wondering if he's wearing pants or he just, he's just that fucking hairy. They were just so absurd. Just a hairy fucking dude that hit puberty and like, I don't know when he hit it, but he was like full blown a man grown in seventh grade. The problem was mm-hmm. he was a short guy. Uh. So like he topped out at his athletic potential in like ninth grade, like, like he's five foot nine maybe something like that like the, the the best basketball player that that of his age group but then everybody else mm-hmm. kept growing right so like now he's that fucking mugsy bowls kind of guy out on the basketball court like like everybody else is six three and he's five nine or whatever but yeah, yeah. He, he had a crazy beard yeah that was that was like seventh and eighth grade like i remember i was one of the tallest kids in the grade but there were a couple guys who were taller than me still and like i topped out at like like, well, I'm six foot. And so like in, in high school, I got to six foot. These other guys in middle school, I was like me and these other two guys, we're all going to be huge. And by like senior year of high school, I'm, I'm six foot and they're both six foot six. And it was like, God <laughs> damn it. Like they really took off on me there. Had no chance. I was, I I was a freshman in high school. I'm 13, 14 years old. I had pretty much no signs of puberty yet. Right. Not a hair on me. Voice hadn't changed. I looked like a little kid except I had massive calves. And when we sat in gym class, we'd all be on the basketball court sitting. You, you know how you sit, like your you're sort of feet in front of you and knees bent. And while waiting for like class to roll call or something, I'd just sit there and I'd wobble my calves back and forth because they're giant and they would swing underneath like, like back and <laughs> forth. And they're like my only good body part. And some pretty girl goes, ew. <laughs> 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 oh, that's brutal! You took that away from me, you bitch! <laughs> what what a cunt! No, she yes. undercut you. It's, it's funny how things like that stick with you. Yeah, it was maybe the worst response you can get in any, in any <laughs> yeah. yeah, even to this day, you is yeah. brutal. So, uh, before we jump to the next thing, we're going to hear from a couple of wonderful sponsors. Uh, Smart mouth. Everybody hates talking to someone with bad breath. That humid, awful smell keeps you from focusing on anything other than finding an excuse to leave. Now just think of all the times you were the gross, smelly one and the other person was thinking about trying to get away. You probably can't think of any examples. That's because we rarely have an accurate read on our own breath odor. In other words, you could be walking around with trash mouth, not even realize you're grossing everybody out. That's why Smart Mouth was invented. Smart Mouth's clinically proven two-liquid formula combines to instantly eliminate bad breath and prevent it from returning all day. Rinse once in the morning for all-day clean breath and once before bed to prevent morning breath. Just two uses a day, and you'll never have bad breath, guaranteed. Whether the boardroom or the bedroom, having confidence in your breath spells success. So go to smartmouth.com slash PKA now for a free coupon. You can find Smart Mouth products in the oral health aisle at Walgreens, CVS, Target, Rite Aid, Amazon, Walmart, or wherever you shop. Once again, that is smartmouth.com slash PKA. Get that coupon. Check it out. Get yourself some good breath. If your breath's good enough, maybe you have a chance with with Finn. You know, it, it doesn't hurt to try. Dare to dream. Dare to dream. <laughs> uh, this episode is also brought to you by Goat. 
If you're buying sneakers online, there's a good chance that the shoe you're looking at is a fake. How can you be sure it's real? Well, GOAT.com is the safest way to buy and sell authentic sneakers online. They're the largest marketplace in the world for authentic authentic Yeezys, Jordans, and over 600,000 sneaker listings. They've made the whole process frictionless and trustworthy. They do this by only accepting sellers with the best reputation and by verifying all sneakers to ensure their authenticity for buyers. Every detail is inspected from the stitching and color to the size and weight. GOAT certifies that every pair of sneakers on their site matches exact factory specifications. With over half a million sneakers on the platform and 10 million users, you're not going to find better prices for verified 100% authentic sneakers anywhere else. Find the perfect 100% authentic sneaker at goat.com slash pka that is goat.com slash pka plus you'll also be supporting our show but you got to go right now before the sneakers you want are gone so go to goat.com slash pka spelled g-o-a-t dot com slash pka for a hundred percent authentic sneakers so check that out don't buy knockoff sneakers you're gonna look yeah. like an idiot you're gonna look like a real asshole get the real thing <laughs> <laughs> you look like the biggest dick. A you're paid ever, for politician, a social <laughs> yeah, <you're, you're>, uh, <laughs> Everyone's going to be talking about you behind your uh, back. Look at, this, look at this fucking loser that didn't even go to go.com. <laughs> Did you hear about Josh? I was going to fuck him, but he didn't even go to go.com slash PKA. <laughs> that's, and that's, that's right in, right here in the copy. So. <laughs> Go to goat.com, check them out, slash PKA, and check out smartmouth.com slash PKA. Wonderful sponsors. Check All them right. out. And click yeah. on the links. Make us look good. Yes. Yes. Clicking on the we link does make us look good. That. I just bumped my microphone with my now e-cup tits. Oh, did you? <laughs> I just went oh, up I... as size as I went off camera. Then In the black color, just... I couldn't even... Oh, now I can tell. <laughs> Is that yeah. E, you said? Yeah, this is like E. I think that the, it's it's like there's weight now. Like now I'm now I want to sit like this. You'll like if I move any amount, there's like it's like a jiggle. To it. <laughs> Those are the ones that you said just stick to you, right? Yeah. yeah. How do cup sizes work, right? Like obviously they go A B C D, but then double D's are a thing. And E, I guess, is after double D. There's no triple D, and then. G? I think there is double of everything, but double. D I'm talking on my ass, but there's I think there is B? double. I think there's like double, double B, double, <laughs> triple A. There's, I think there's like um, a double of everything, but double D is like the people just know it, you know. Like that's that's just the holy shit. She's got double D cup tits, you know. Mm -hmm. Like uh, double C kind of sounds a bit weird. There's also a D D D apparently. <laughs> triple D, and triple that means D. at that point when I just go to E single yeah. E, right? Because the like, there's a noticeable change between, like, oh, it's got to suck. That's like getting, a, like, a B plus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? You're, like, <laughs> one step off. Uh, but, yeah, there's such a notable difference. I physically can't put my arms here anymore, by the way. Like, that's <laughs> the size of that. Uh, like, um, but there's, like, a, a size difference between A, B. You, you can tell. It's a significant difference. So I imagine yeah. there's a scale as well. Because you got to get a bra that fits. So. Now, uh, Kyle, you just returned. Uh, Finn just put in some e tits. Oh my! Yeah, <laughs> and we were we were talking about how the sizes work and what the biggest one is because it goes just, past D. Yeah, I just um, read how cup sizes work and I still don't get it. I think that the biggest size is Triple H, like the wrestler. Shit! I, thought you <laughs> <laughs> I hope he named himself after that. I, I, wish I, I knew swear what you could get like Zed, right? Because there's those women that went on the news, and they've got like their entire upper body is just the cleavage formed from it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that. It's like a being, like on camera when they cut to like the close up. That's like this, right? Mm -hmm. That's just like hips and up. It's still all. It's all you can't see the bottom of them. It looks really odd yeah this is bizarre Here, it's I'll too much a, i'll, I'll say, I'll say that. It's too these much. these are double h double h let's take a quick look see at the double in h's your, in your what's that oh, damn I don't even get and to how the double H's. I mean, I <laughs> you're gonna have to i mean you can just buy some and you know look it up oh, on yourself <laughs> why you can get a girlfriend you can become them yeah that's that's absurd <laughs> huh. I'm a, too I'm much a your fan well, let I me mean, look at the look at the cropping there. You think the, the it's just this area that's being cropped. 
everywhere outside of this area. Oh, well, is the rest of it a disaster area? No, like, it's did... great. I know this person. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Taylor is really committing some faux pas here. <laughs> no, this woman is atrocious. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that it was a cropped picture of just I'm the pretty boobs. sure she's a bird victim outside I... of the picture. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she's one of those lipless bitches. <laughs> <laughs> but with teeth, you know, the, yeah. the dinosaur. She got acid attacked. No, this is, this is this is someone I know. I cropped the picture for for purposes of right. anonymity. Okay, well then I try. I thought it was one of those fool me pictures where it's like, oh wow, look at the. Oh, it's because it's on a big fat person. It's just two knees together. We've seen those before. <laughs> right. I've seen it's those. Huge yeah. yeah, I mean that's like the South Park episode where they need to give the bullies a picture of uh, uh, Stan's mom's tits, and they just take a picture of Cartman's ass in a scoop neck. And they use that, is, that and give it to him. Yeah, that's far too much, Kyle. That's I've given. Have you ever had to give an uh, give a a girl like a, a one of those compliments in the same vein of like girl saying your dick is the perfect size for me? <laughs> have you ever had to do one of those? Like, but like I've I've said Never the teams. words like I've said the words. No, I prefer them. They're like a perfect handful. Like, like <laughs> <laughs> where you had so, to just <laughs> those titties are like this each. Yeah. Oh my god! You just get like them when and you smack them you like, together. If you like smack one, how long does it take for it to stop shaking? Oh, I <laughs> like could you start and stop like a stopwatch on it? Like <laughs> they, they move. <laughs> <laughs> stopwatch sound. I hope everyone caught it because it was the key. To this. <laughs> That's what I think they sound like. <laughs> I do that with my belly, Homer Simpson style, to see how much I let myself go. <laughs> Yeah. I've been watching. I've learned a little bit about bra sizes. A 34E is just a 34 double D. An F is a triple D, and a G is a quadruple D. And an H oh. is an H. Is there any other metric that's like that? That just for like clothes. What, what's the point of court? Like, it's how the French count numbers, where like 70 is like 30, 10, 10, 10, 10 <laughs> like that. Oh, so the reason for that, my understanding, you know is that. you 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 do the measurement below the bus line, and that's the that's the number. So like 32. And then, yeah. and so, and for every inch above that, that the that the boobs stick out, that's another letter they add, I believe. No. Yeah, but why does it go like a no, DD a, is equivalent to a different letter, and not just call it a different letter? Or was that what you said? It is what I said. Finn has it right. The letter is the cup size, but the sub the cup size is also proportionate to the strap size. So a thirty six C and a thirty four C are not the same cup size, even though they both have the same cup size letter. It's scaled up. Yeah, that's what mm. I said. Yeah, I know my bra size. And then I misunderstood what you said. Okay. I mean, your bra size is whatever you want on the day. So the, Yeah, but the cup yeah. size isn't consistent. But the band, you said it's just an inch up. Like, like eight, well, well like, thir but, and because the, the number changes, the, so does the cup size changes. Like, like, like a 30, a 32 double D is smaller than a 33 double D. That's true. It goes yeah. in twos. Yeah. And there are, there are um, cup sizes that are exactly the same. For example, I have a chart in front of me. A 36B is the same cup size as a 34C. Oh. oh. But the yeah. strap size is different. So I'm if gonna, you were to just say this. get fatter <laughs> without <laughs> gaining boob size, you'd move from a C to a B. Mm -hmm. Oh, I get it. Guys, I feel like I'm doing it. Do you remember doing that in school, like a teacher explaining a math problem to you, and you're just like, "Okay, okay," and then you go back and you sit down, and you're like, "Fuck!" I don't, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't always, know my always. <laughs> That's why I had to go to summer school because I spent a year going, "Uh huh, yeah." Did you go yeah. to summer school? Yeah, for for uh, algebra one year, I had to go to summer school. We learned nothing there. Algebra either. one. Yeah, yeah. I went yeah. to summer school. It was my um, first period class, and I, I. I was exhausted. I would sleep through sense. it. I went with Tug McGraw's daughter to the same summer school. We had class together. Tug McGraw was a Philly, a pitcher for the Phillies, and he was a big deal. I think they won a uh, the fuck is the championship called a World pennant? Series. But what's World Series? Is what I'm going for, but it, a pennant is what they call it. I think. Anyway, uh, so she was like a big deal, but she was. I'm calling her a screw up as we sat next to each other in summer school. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was so uh, above everyone else at summer school. <laughs> at least I attended. That's how I felt. She would straight up not show up to class all the time and be like, I didn't have money for tolls. And I remember the teacher's like, huh, 35 cents, you're kind of close not having toll money. But that yeah. was her excuse. And uh, 
I think everyone passes summer school. Yeah, yeah I, everyone passed. It was we did no work in there. Um, it was scary. Like, like, like it was it was like everybody in there was a, was a real rap scallion. Um, it, it was I, I want to say I was 15, so my mom had to drive me there. It was not fun. It was not fun. And it wasn't even that. It was most of the summer I had to be there at that fucking thing learning algebra. And we didn't learn algebra. That sucks. That sucks. I would not want to. This reminds me. Dude, it's the same guy who did the fire poi and tied my the, my shoelace to the other guys. The same guy. In eighth grade, uh, when, you, when you graduate guy. from middle school, <laughs> everybody got their diplomas that said, like, so-and-so graduated from blah, blah, blah. And he was, like, going around laughing, showing us his diploma that just said, uh... Thank you for participating in the eighth grade. And because he didn't oh. graduate, he had to do a whole nother. Like, I think they, and I think most schools do this, where like if it's a really, really shitty kid, they don't want you like mm -hmm. fucking with their test scores or anything. They will make it borderline impossible for you to get held back. They'll just be like, no, no, he, he fully understands that he just, uh, he's not a good test taker. That mm -hmm. part about uh, just displaying what knowledge you've gained, he's bad at that. I don't remember what comedian had that joke about like, oh, you're a bad test taker. You're bad at the thing where they measure if you've learned. <laughs> that, might be, that might be Bill Burr. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I love I that. I think that joke. might be Bill Burr. Yeah, that's, that's like every bad. that and uh, have you ever gotten the he's smart but he doesn't apply himself thing? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm if, with that. Yeah, yeah I've never heard anybody say that. <laughs> <laughs> I did. You guys all finish school? Like your um, education? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I dropped out. I was did you? Idiot. You know, uh, I, used to, I started how far did you go? like, huh? How far did you go? And you're UK, well, so it doesn't make any sense. But how far did you go? I'll Try just to answer. Use ages. I, I like. I got to um the stage before college. I think that's senior year for you. So yeah. I dropped out of like high school, which is uh, like almost. I've heard synonymous of just like, oh, we fucked up, <laughs> in yeah. America, a high school dropout. But I started laughing when you were like, when you're that bad of a student, they just don't want you anymore, mm -hmm. uh, because that is the meeting that I because. They do like have to check. They're not just gonna let you fuck up your entire life, because like some kid goes, "I want to leave." Like, because you when you're in the UK, like sixteen is basically the age where you're like you can kind of make decisions on most of your life besides like mm -hmm. you know voting. You can pay. Ta I was paying taxes at seven. You know, like yeah. so like <laughs> taxation without representation. But like the uh, the meet you had to go to a meeting. I had to go to a meeting with my uh, like the second head of this uh, a level which is what it's called um of like the senior year and that that meeting went far too smoothly <laughs> for, them, for them to think that i was doing well um because i i came in pretty strong i wasn't a terrible student i got all c's and b's in the level before that just all, it's just you know, not bad right right right, right right like it was enough for me to go to a decent school mm -hmm. and then as soon as i got in school we had like a I started doing the YouTube channel, uh, the Minecraft stuff, uh, and I ended up dropping out when I was at like, this is so dumb. I ended up dropping out at like twenty thousand subs, which is we're there. That's risky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah you're Just, betting on yourself, but you're a long shot. Yeah, definitely. Because uh, the second, in, the yeah, second head was like, I'm okay, twenty five dollars so a video. I'll have you know, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> you'll not be attending school. Third and this is from... guaranteed income <laughs> forever. <laughs> I remember it was seventy five dollars a video. I'm, it's not that well, much that, higher. Yeah, that was um, bad. That's pretty good. Yeah, better than Paramount videos. <laughs> yeah. But it was a. Uh, there's there's got to be an alternate reality where if you kept up Woodycraft, we would have worked together, because oh that could you're, been, yeah. you know like when YouTuber server deals and all that. Uh huh. This mm. is an area that only me and you are gonna know. By the way, yeah, people would pay content creators to play on their server because they bring their fan base to it too, or just yeah. advertise or whatever. You know, it was a it was a win win. Yeah, and then the servers got setups where you could make money through it and all that. Um, and like I played on Woodycraft. I wasn't necessarily, oh. yeah, I, I was like, uh, I must have been quite young, but like, uh, maybe like 13 or something, but like a bunch of faction servers, like I, like the, and now I still do that. Do you remember Gontroller? Yeah. Yeah. I, the, the head, the lead of that server now works for us. Best oh, one. really? Yeah. He's but a he great was, guy, um, by the way. That's cool. When we first started, Gontroller was, like, or is it Gun or Gone? I forget. Gun -troller, I think it was yeah. Gontroller. Um, yeah. They were like the titans of factions when, and then yeah. Woodycraft had its moment in the sun where we were the titan of factions. Oh, do you remember all the like 
Do you ah, oh, there was this thing. Have you ever seen um raid edits or like for everyone else, it's really yes. similar to like have you ever seen those videos on Twitter or Instagram where like someone will like put their favorite celebrity to a bunch of music and cut between photos of them? It's like a cutesy little thing. Um, for like 13 year old girls raid edits were the same way but for like edgy 16 year olds where they'd put like raiding this minecraft base blowing up someone else's like stash to like hardcore rap <laughs> <laughs> but i used to like that used to be the scene like that used to be and it got so awful like people would like people would like dox people they'd send what they'd swat people <laughs> in minecraft just, like well, you know, not swap people, you know, they swap people over the game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dude, that is child's play. Are you not aware of the shit that happened on Woodycraft? Like, so I am, but I don't know how much of, I don't know about Woodycraft, <laughs> but I know I've, I'm a server and I know the shit that gets spread around. I didn't don't know if we can talk about a lot of it. <laughs> the some of the ones I like to mention that are funny, funny. I hate to say that, but like, OK, of course, there's normal stuff like sending pizza doxing your parents yeah. right that's a spot of vulnerability for you perhaps not you but you know my a, my a opposition yeah yeah if, if i want to get to a 15 year old i don't say his social security number online i say his mom <laughs> social, security number, social security number online um but they were sending not just the police to people's houses but bouncy castles <laughs> a, a okay, crane like the for construction, favorite. the sailboat was my favorite. <laughs> Wait, how did you send a sailboat? I don't know, cash on delivery or something, but they sent a sailboat to somebody's house on a trailer. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, and the like, parents like, was like, was fun. like, I live in Kansas. What did you think I was going to do with it? <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, like they're they're basically cyber criminals just playing against each other all the time. Yeah, Discord <laughs> is where now that has gotten a lot worse. There was a there was an old server that I used to like. It was my first attempt at owning a server, and I didn't realize because there's a lot of money in these servers. Like, and it's fierce. It's really competitive. And when like the people that played those servers are now owning them, so the people that were sending boats to people's houses now own and compete with people. That they that like the people that they that they don't like, and now not just raiding their Minecraft base, they're like taking away from their money from their their, their competition. So they did much worse stuff. Like um, we had one where uh, someone sent some very explicit stuff into the Discord that like we offered therapy to the person that found it. We were like, oh my god, are you okay? To the poor. The helper, the mod, we didn't, they weren't paid to see this shit. Uh, Dude, we used to buy credit oh protection for people's parents because they got their docs went out and people were opening credit cards and stuff in their parents' name. And we like, look, this is something we run into quite a lot. <laughs> These are credit protection companies that we've worked with before. You know, Minecraft's can, a dirty wow. world, man. I'm sure you know that just, um, Dragon Slayer is a big part of it. Sometimes they were Woodycraft staff. Sometimes they were players, parents, you know, stuff like that. Uh, there was one I wanted to say. Shit, you got my mind racing on it and I forgot. Yeah, so anyway, my, it was it was ridiculous, the stuff. They were there ever like... Uh, like creepy old like pedophile like guys that would come on there that you'd have to get rid of i don't think so but we had a creative server so in a creative server you would um you get a plot of land and you didn't have to earn all your things your diamond blocks whatever and people would just build magnificent stuff uh. and woody Crafts creative server it was honestly the best in the universe. It was it was so good. And we kind of like cheated a little bit by like if you built something really magnificent, we'd put it closer to the spawn point to yeah. sort of raise the standards. Yeah. And when you first went there, um and we'd you rotate them all the see, time. You didn't just see some red flags with a strange symbol in the middle. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was no like low effort stuff. You had to go way out into the distance to find the lower effort builds. And sometimes we'd wipe it out if we didn't anyway. So uh but what happened was people were like sexy role playing and stuff. And there's a Minecraft animation. Just imagine. 
<laughs> and there's the shift thing as well where they crouch. Yeah. So what the, people would crouch and blow each other or just like bend over and re, like present. They do the masturbation thing. You and on social like, spot. So I like wasn't aware of this for a long time. Like honestly, sincerely didn't even know this was happening. But there are like sex clubs and stuff. And uh, people are like stripper poles and whatever. And <laughs> I saw it and I was like, I'd rather not have known this. So I just kind of buried my head for a while. And then after a while, you know, being an entrepreneur, it's like, all right, uh, for five bucks, you can get married. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> so it's just a strip club with like blocky tr strippers on yeah yeah me. people you know you can change your skin and you can get in like bikinis or, or whatever i think we didn't let people have full-on hairy dicks but like the borat <laughs> you know costume yeah like you could do something like that and um uh yeah and, and you, you just have to it. see like a really first class strip club built in minecraft it's better than you might guess with the stage and the fences and all that um and there were just like like there was role playing happening on the server and i, I never really liked it because because like you said I, I i actually think it was mostly like teenagers exploring online relationships in kind mm -hmm. of a healthy way but you don't know mm -hmm. who they are for sure right like what if yeah. some of these people i don't know but I, I I don't think there were I honestly don't think there were. Did they ever try to build like to Finn's point? Did they ever like try and build like Hitler's headquarters or something or like the, like the Mussolini uh, like face building on there? And you're like, I don't like it, but they got Mussolini's <laughs> face down to the block. It's it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. I'm like the Mussolini one. I may have kept. There are of course tons of Hitler references that we yeah, delete. All edgy the time. kids. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to put too much effort into like a something like that because the mods take it out, or I will personally. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever turned on uh, Social Spy? Do you know what I don't want by that command? I don't, what is what does it do? Social Spy is a command that admins can get on Minecraft that I don't think has quite the level of power in any other video game where it's a command. So Minecraft has like a messaging system, and yeah. Social Spy filters all of it to you. And you can see everyone's conversation happening at once. And there was a server That's that confusing. I... Oh, you see some shit, though. It's never... It's it's in Minecraft, so it's not like... They, they can't send links, they can't send pictures, anything like that. It's just mm -hmm. words, always. There's nothing else you can get from it. But I had admin powers on this other random server. And it's all e-dating. And the most cringy shit. It's 13-year-olds fumbling around trying to say... Oh, your, you know, your block tits look so great today, man. <laughs> <laughs> it is so bad, but it's this, so uh, fucking funny. Yeah, that's good for kids' development, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, like, be sincere. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I, on one hand, like, because this happened on my server. Like, it was 13-year-olds fumbling, probably maybe even 15-year-olds fumbling a little. Look, our Minecraft population isn't the Don Juans of, of the world. <laughs> um and they're just sort of fumbling amongst each other, knowing each other. And I don't know. It, it didn't strike me as evil, evil. Like it was just clumsy flirting. Yeah. It just like... sounds kind of cringy and silly, but I mean, you're yes. 13. Everybody's Ooh. cringy and silly when they're 13. When you move away from hyper competitive game modes, it just becomes Minecraft. Like there's really not a ton you can do. I think factions was a special case. That's why I wanted to mention it first, where it's just like that that one's just like any competitive game mode. It's like how CS:GO or Rust. You can really start shit talking, and you can do some crazy shit. Yeah, and the raid videos were neat. I wish more people understood the beauty of these raid videos, the engineering that goes into it. I used to make uh, them. I opened like I did like Cinema 4D for it. I have I I had up to a point. I've been surpassed. I think at a point in my career, I made the absolute peak of them. Um, like I was like tracking, like 3D tracking. Like I'd spend weeks. On these two-minute videos, Dude, um, they were pretty oh, good. Let me tell this story. So, Woodycraft. One of the things I felt like we did better than other servers was we held events, right? So we do these special things where you get prizes at the end of it. Sometimes they were silly, like mini games. Sometimes they were faction things where maybe we'd admin in an impossible to raid base, and then whoever gets in would get good prizes. Often, like. I don't know, hundreds of dollars at the Woodycraft store, like things that you might want as a teenager who plays there. And uh, this one faction 
spent like like they were prepping for days and understanding there so they came in with their act together and they built their their cannon to launch tnt across the map and it was a amazing feat of engineering that was a really big deal and they had been working on it for like uh, i don't know four hours online and then days ahead of, in advance and um my son walked up to the cannon and they let him like mill around because he's famous on the server colin pirate and he pressed their cannon go button and blew the whole thing up <laughs> Oh, my staff wanted to quit over it. My fucking staff, like the people that work there yeah. didn't want to be associated with us anymore. Um, they yeah, got very mad at it. Colin and he was very sensitive oh. and uh, it, it was just a button. It was a big button and it, it might have even had a sign that said, do not press. But oh, no, like, <laughs> <laughs> I had to press that button, press. too. <laughs> I mean, you, you think it's going to be like a little bit of confetti or something silly. <laughs> do not they, press. Uh, uh and they were they were really really mad i think we made it right with like giving them the winners yeah it's, you know uh, you can make you know, that right pretty easily i, I can imagine I, I, I like i can imagine if something like that happened in rust it, yeah it, it, very like, parallel like, like we i used to play with a more with a bigger group of guys who some of them were just kind of into rust it was like oh yeah yeah this is the flavor they would come and like play with me on the flavor of the week game or whatever what and if they're jumping into PUBG and they do poorly, who cares? You're going to play another one after this, and then they'll go to bed. We'll get somebody who's a little better. I don't mind losing. I'm getting my kills. I'm having fun. <laughs> but in Rust, it's like now you've got a couple of knuckleheads on the team that don't really understand the value of, of stuff. And, like, I remember one night we had been grinding so fucking hard. It was, like, day two of Wipe, and we had – I was like, I, I got to go to sleep, guys. I've got to get – I'm going to – I'll set an alarm. I'll be up in five hours. I'll be back, and we can get back to work. And like, I think it was, it was during the Easter event. So that's the time of year this was. And two of them were left. And closing your doors is a big deal in Rust. Each door requires X amount of explosives to bypass. And you build your bases in such a way that it's big spirals of doors, like door after door after door after door, make it very expensive to get in and time consuming. And, and uh, they left all the doors open except for the front door. And so these fucking, I, I, I log back on after my little nap. I just had a bad feeling. <laughs> and they've blown one door off its hinges, which is like not a big deal to do. And they've stolen all of our shit that was on like the first floor, which was like not our creme de la creme gear or anything, but like all of our wood, all of our like mm. stone, like, like the stuff that takes like, like three or four hours worth of work easily had been like stolen from us. And we had almost lost the whole base because the enemy had weren't there because they were taking the loot back to their house to like stockpile it. They were coming back for more. So I quickly, I quickly slap a door down and then these three guys walk up and they're like, Hey, and I'm like, Hey, what's up? Oh, nothing. Just walking by. I'm like, where do you guys <laughs> live? Oh, just right over there. We're your neighbors. Yeah. Nice to meet you. And I'm like, and I'm, and I know, I know it's them. Mm -hmm. We got a revenge. It took hours to, to get our revenge. We, we, ru we ruined their, their entire wife for them we, we raided their base slowly while they were inside of it and then like they who were your teammates oh everybody like everybody that i've ever played with like like scum and midi and uh and class and, and like all those guys i don't remember who exactly they're all gamers they're... i'm just wondering kyle has like two rust friends that are like oh. yeah yeah you know mike tyson and evander holyfield we like to go and roam oh, yeah, street yeah. fights <laughs> yeah that's that's timu and uh paris like, like if uh -huh. i really actually want to play like some legit rust i go pick up timu and paris and like they're like no joke like some of the best in the world like like they're there's, incredible there's maybe no greater stress you can put on someone in rust than like an overwhelming force raiding a base and the people are in there the pure hell that they're going through when they know everything. They're like panicking. Can we get it out? No, we can't get it out. Fuck, what do we do? Patch the walls. Shoot shit back at them that like, you're dying immediately. It's it's really something getting yeah. online rated. R I used to have that so in Call fun. of Duty. I loved it. it, it like, I play solos, maybe get verbally bullied by a guy or two. And it's like, Optic, Big Timer, and uh, Rambo. They're picking on me. Can you, you guys have a minute? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, like, all right, now, I, now I've got my friends with me. <laughs> Let's play again. That was, yeah, uh, yeah. It, like, like, we, 
last time I played with those guys, like pretty much every time I've ever played with those two guys, plus like, you know, maybe one or two others, we just kind of take over the whole server. And I'm not doing a lot. I'm not doing the heavy lifting. They are. But but just like listening to their call outs is so fun because like every now and then I'll be like, I got one headshot dead. You might hear me say that every like five minutes. But like Timu will be like, he doesn't talk because he's from, uh, oh, Timu listens now. I'm sorry, Timu. I don't remember what weird country you're from. Maybe some Baltic <laughs> nation or something. I don't know. Weird country. He, he's, he's got an accent, but he speaks very good English. But he'll just be, I see one dead. Two more. <laughs> Both dead. Both dead. Headshot dead. Headshot dead. I'm like, how many have you killed? Six. <laughs> seven. <laughs> eight. Like, you know, rust. Like, like I, 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 there's a on the uh, on the oil rig, you, there are cameras placed on it, and you can install this viewing station in your base, so you can remote view around this this area from your base. And so I'm there, like giving callouts, watching Timu fight an entire team of people, like six guys who are like trying to like come up and like take this thing over. And but he's up there and hit this weird glitch spot, just and it's just he's just killing them all. It's it, every time I watch him play, it looks like a rust montage. He's That's so goddamn really cool. good. It's so fun to watch watch those guys play. It's remarkable how competitive people can get over strange things, like over strange games, I guess. Like I've wrote, I wrote down something I wanted to mention, like uh, in Minecraft that like factions thing. I met a guy that set an alarm up so that he would wake up. He yes. would go to school, and if that alarm goes off, he would leave when when like <laughs> a raid was happening. Like he'd get like spammed on his phone, he'd leave, and he'd come back to defend it. There's like, a wave file on your computer that sounds like TNT. It goes, yeah. We had players that would replace it with an alarm clock, ah, ah, ah. so it would wake <laughs> them up at night when their base is being yeah. raided. So the 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 low tech way to do that in Rust is you can just put your character to sleep. You can just kind of like without killing him, um, and uh, and so you're sort of spectating your sleeping body. And you can hear the noises around you. So you just put set it to speakers in your room or whatever and turn it loud as fuck. And a raid is the loudest thing in the game. Like C4 and Rockets, they're the loudest sound files uh -huh. in the game. They're incredibly loud. And so, like, that would wake you up. But now, like, Rust is so good, the dev team. They've they, they introduced an app for your phone. And these sensors that you can install in-game in your base that'll send you, like, an alert to your phone. You're getting raided. It's like it's like a raid <laughs> alert, and so you just get a text message like "raid alert," and you, from wherever you are, or whatever you can just get back in game and defend. That's it, such a annoying a Woody crash, thing. So that the so that players wouldn't just like never log out like that because we didn't have that much service. Like we'd only have a couple hundred players on a game at a time. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't move or anything for fifteen minutes, we'd boot you. Mm -hmm. And these players would make these like elaborate MC Escher waterfalls that would have them going in a circle <laughs> <laughs> all the time. <laughs> oh god. Okay. It's just uh, the anti-AFK pools and everything. They got so inventive with that because you, as a server you can track when just a player is doing that. And then they started using pistons that would like they had a random Randomize generator. It. Yeah. Mm. Oh my god. People do the in most crazy things. Now that like servers have picked up a lot, like my servers got like we peaked at like three thousand people on a game. Nice, nice. Yeah, so like we we can handle a good amount of players, but we still have AFK kicks and all that. People, three thousand people, people like, on one game mode. We can, we can have ten. Uh, we like ten thousand in a single uh, yeah. ABM. Because what we did the same thing that Hypixel do. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if recently how into Minecraft you are now, but what happens is you go certain piece of the world. And the dev got so smart. He's so talented. He lives in his room coding. And mm. you, as soon as you walk past a block, you'll teleport into a different part of the world. But it's seamless. It just oh. moves you from one bit of the server to the other. So, like, technically, I think that I don't know enough about it to explain. But, like, each thread is a different thing. And mm -hmm. there's, like, you can hold, like, 50 people on each thread. And then it's just spread out across a Does lava server. flow properly across those servers? Yeah, it's stuff? fine. It it's literally just player position for it. Even lava flow and such. Everything. And well, if you wanted to, what we do, so we have a prison server uh, and a skyblock server. And skyblock's easy to do that with because they're yes. wholly separate things. And prison, we set it up really smart where you had to go somewhere to a mine that's not spawn. And it's basically a skyblock island with a mine on it. So it's just really hyper efficient. And then, I don't know, we've had like 
pe- people like in the industry have like said that they like you know it's it's a pretty common thing now, but it's like maybe ten servers have it, you know. But mm-hmm. everyone kind of knows about it. It's a lot of work to do. What's but. your server? Uh, <laughs> do I get some free promotion? Yes, on my Microsoft. of course. We're, we're, Colin might I'm play sure there. this is the prime demographic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we have a server called MC Prison and one called uh, Skyblocky. You'll know the owner actually. Um, this guy called Serain. He ran uh, Arkham. Arkham. Oh, I know of. I don't think I know. Like we're not friends or anything, but I definitely know yeah. of Arkham. Yeah, right. I, mean, I think I've talked to him. Yeah. Before. Yeah, I, I'm sure if I messaged him now, he'd say, "Ah, you know, yeah, I, I knew Woody. Everyone knew like Woody Craft." Um, yeah, there he was, was a guy. We were talking about like how the shady players became server owners, and now they're shady server owners. Yep. There was another server owner that couldn't bypass our DDoS protection, so he bought a server at the same like you know location in the cloud as us, and. DDoS us over the LAN, like <laughs> from server to server. <laughs> Instead of over oh the internet, God. he just did it right inside the same building. Jesus oh Christ, God. that's yeah. insane! <laughs> Good lord! <laughs> I was yeah. just looking at. Uh, <laughs> I was just looking around. I saw that show uh, Squid Game. You yes. know that little card they have that has a number on it, like a phone number. Mm-hmm. Apparently, oh, yeah. they didn't. They didn't even check. That's some dude in Korea's phone number, and he's been getting tens of thousands of calls from people. And so, like that's, I always imagine there's like, like a a barrier when they do phone numbers in TV shows five, five, and five. movies. Yeah, right. like that's come on, it's Netflix. The good ones will make that a number and then have it like be a directory or something. Like you can call them and then they say like fucking the magic hotline's down right now. Call back later, you know something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I can't. But like uh, maybe the Matrix or someone did that. It, it was it was a cool little promotional thing. If you if you called it, you got like a little t- a little Easter egg. Yeah. But oh, almost everybody cool. does like five 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 because it's a non existent area code. Hmm. Oh really? Yeah, five 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 one two one two is the phone company. That's the only thing. Oh, interesting. Yeah, what is that's information, right? Information for different. You know how you dial four one one. Yeah, you get information locally. You can do five 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 like six zero nine is an area code. Six zero nine five 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 one two one two will be four one one for that area code. I think you know, I haven't even work. thought of four one one as a number you dial since so long. I just think of it as yeah. like like an internet acronym or something like like LOL. Like, like, right. uh, but yeah, and I bet a lot of our viewers who are like younger than us don't either, because it's like mm-hmm. back in the day, kiddies, <laughs> you would pick up the telephone that that was hooked <laughs> into the wire of your home, and you didn't know the fucking number to like the Car Quest parts store three mm-hmm. towns over, but you wanted to find out if they had a carburetor for your '67 Nova, and you would dial four one one. High information, yeah, it's it's a Car Quest in Commerce, Georgia. One moment, and they would. Ask if they wanted them to dial the number for you, or if they mm-hmm. wanted to read it out to you, and they would connect you. It was right, but I've if it's done not that in so goddamn long, if it's not three towns over and it's three states over, you dial six zero nine five 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 one two one two and ask information over there. Do people still use those? I bet boomers probably. Still I do. doubt. I bet it's uh, automated now. I bet Maybe it's all defunct. voice recognition. Yeah. People yeah, still use AOL. Well. I imagine people using <laughs> touche. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> An AOL, an Alta Vista email account. Exactly. <laughs> Every now and then I get an email from someone with yahoo.com. Like, <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I, I still have my I'm pretty email. pretty sure I have a Yahoo account. I have my well, first probably. email. Does Yahoo even exist anymore? I thought I got shut yeah, down. Yeah, I want to say there. Yahoo Finance is one of the better ones. Someone's yeah. going to call me a boomer for saying that, but I think. I don't want to say what it is, um, but I have one of the original emails from, well, I have my original email from t- the year was t- either 1999 or 2000 was when I made my first email account. And I've still got that one. And it has tens and tens domain? of thousands. I'd rather not. I'll tell oh, okay. you. Okay. Um, it has tens and tens of thousands of unread messages because back then I just clicked everything and gave every gave it out on all. <laughs> any, any I didn't understand the ramifications of doing such. <laughs> so just there's so much junk in there and so much. Type it in. I want to know the domain. It's it's not like one of the old goofy ones, but it's this. Ah, yeah, yeah, that know. still exists. Every so, yeah, yeah. I, I've got one of there. I've I was going to say every so often you're required to use it for this or that, but yeah, I've got a yeah. very old one of those as well. 
but yeah. I couldn't tell you the password if you had a gun to my head. I bet I've got – doesn't everybody have like a dozen email accounts that they just forgot about or they just use to sign up for things they don't want to get harassed by? Yes. Oh, I, you, I, you always mean to be like, this is my one bullshit burner email account, password's convoluted, and then the next I time you need one, you just way. make another one. It's like this is my – true pure account that i don't tell everyone mm -hmm. about and then four years later it's like well, i've told too many people about this one <laughs> whenever you spam. want whenever you want a bullshit one that you can just put in to like bypass whatever like nonsense there's like a i don't remember what it's called but you can google it and you find it, it google like temporary email and like it's just a thing you copy paste in oh really it just, it just gives you like a free fake email that will process that's cool that's how a, do you get the code they send you do I don't that? remember, but it works. Okay. I think it might give you temporary access or something. Like, oh, like, like, yeah. and, and like, org. I'm seeing one. Oh, mine this is go. great. Yeah. I've no got mine spam. in like a tier system of the most bullshit to, to least. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like the absolute dog shit ones like that that should really be on a temp email. And then it goes up to like, eh, you know, mm. I like, keep stuff on here that's like, like if someone like you get a like on YouTube or something like that, it goes to that, you know, something like that. Uh, and yeah. then there's the next one that's like, it's like a uh, like if I've signed up to some subscription service, that's where all the emails go. And then there's like a more personal one and a business one and stuff like that. It's, it's like a tier list. And, and they then all have the same kind of password. <laughs> <laughs> well, boys, it is. Let's see what the old ticker says. It's close. We're close. Yes. What are we looking Ooh. at? A ticker? Kyle, oh, yeah. I'm down to freedom. I'm so I'm yeah. like I'm like vicariously excited for, for my friend Kyle. I'm so excited for him. I was on I was on the WhatsApp today. Like, hey, what, 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 today the day? Is, 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 <laughs> <laughs> did it happen? I felt guilty. Like I missed a birthday. Or I wouldn't something. be here. I mean, I'd be here, but like <laughs> here would be in Colorado. You'd be in like, the, like, in the on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe if, if, if Freedom if, Day was this morning, it, you'd probably wait till tonight or something. I don't I, know. I, no, really, <laughs> but you have to travel. You have to. How would you? It's a three-hour flight. Got a yeah, podcast okay. today. No, if Freedom was, I mean, midnight. I'd be here to do the show, but I'd oh, be yeah. doing it there. Like, like I'd, I'd have made it happen so You'd that have I figured there. it out. Um, Even if like, oh, mid, you, you mean yeah. if it was like in an hour in two hours. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do the same thing. I Even would, that, you probably leave after the show. Yeah, the, the yeah, real challenge is if show. it was right before I, I the show to. somehow. Yeah, I can't know? leave the state until like the ticker clicks over or whatever. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's one like a day, day and two hours, right? A day and two hours. Yeah, one day, one hour, fifty-seven minutes. Wow, exactly. I wanted yeah. to ask you some about that, like, like just kind of recapping all that. Is your current mentality like finally this is up, or is it like? Well, obviously it is, but like, do you look back and kind of think, how did I get through this? Like, <laughs> how did how did I buckle down and just grind this for so long? Because I'm sure looking back, it's it's a percentage of your life, like a tenth it's of been your such life. Such a grind. It's yeah. been such a grind. When it's been such a grind. When was the day at the post office? Do you know that date? Oh, I don't remember. We looked it up the other day. Um, it was twenty um, early twenty eighteen, late twenty seventeen. It was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe early um, twenty eighteen. Yeah, yeah. You can find it pretty easy. Um, it's uh, it's been four years ago almost. I would say. Mm -hmm. What was the most dip? I mean, obviously the prison part, but like uh, as far <laughs> as far as like I don't know if that's as far as as far as the waiting part, like what was the most difficult? Was it the very beginning where it's like this is an insurmountable amount of time? I can't fucking believe this. I can't even get high. Or was it like two months to go you can sniff it and it's oh. you know, times in slow motion i mean I, I put the timer on my phone like back in january or something like mm. that <laughs> like, like 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 i the timer started at like 250 days or something i don't really remember exactly um but but yeah like like and and just just looking at the timer slowly tick down from 250 days to like four months three months two months one month has mm -hmm. been has been just a real fucking grind. Yeah, it's... over ten percent of your life has been lived under the cloud of this fucking yeah. Oh my god, hot raid. Yeah, it was twenty seventeen, yeah. August twenty seventeen. And and Kyle's thirty nine years old. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while, man. It's been a while. I'm so glad that it's just on the cusp of being over. I'm, I'm so happy for you, man. Oh, it's going to be great. I, I, I've got the whole thing. 
I know what I'm doing uh, Saturday. I'm, I'm flying in, heading down to Telluride, getting in the fucking house. I know I've already talked to the the homeowner. I know when I'm getting like able to. I can't get into the house like as soon as I could because like somebody's staying there right now. So, but but like as soon as the cleaning is done, so I found like a place that I can stay and smoke weed. Um, like during the interim, like I found like like yeah. a hot bar where you can like. <laughs> You like That's you cool. like buy your weed um, at a, at a dispensary, take it in there, and you can smoke it indoors. But you you can't use like uh, like you have to use vapes or uh, or or, even, or nails. Uh, so you can do dabs and stuff. I've been to like, one of those. Light up they, joints. They sell pastries too. Yeah, yeah. They they sell all, all sorts of stuff. Pastries are like. Like, uh, uh, yeah, regular. Uh, I mean, you can go next door and get some weed pastries. No, like th- this place that sells zero weed, it is only a place for you to legally smoke what you've purchased somewhere else. So a lot of times it'll be like in uh, Denver when I go so there to visit my munchies. cousin. It'll yeah, literally it'll be oh, the weed cool. store, and then there's the little uh, <laughs> like coffee the shop. store. Yeah, and you just go over there and you can buy coffee or you can buy like uh, pastries, like uh, Starbucks. I know the place you're talking pastries. about. It, you're talking about the coffee joint. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, you're talking about the That's coffee. That's have a funny name. What are you doing for a car? Um, like, oh, you just rent one, right? Well, okay. I guess I was. So when I rent a car, maybe I do it dumbly. It's like as expensive as the room. Like it's kind of a big deal. And I and you were talking about staying for a month, and I'm like, shit. I think my dumbass would spend fifteen hundred on that car. No car, no car. Uh, I'm gonna Uber. Uber type yeah. stuff. Yeah, okay. and just split Ubers, and uh, and get everything delivered. Like like you know, I can just switch my Amazon address to the house. I can. I've got Instacart. I've got like um, for groceries and stuff. And uh, if they don't, you can't get weed delivered in Denver. So like we will have to like Uber out to do that. And if we are for our activities, like like everybody's talking a big game right now about all the things they want to do. I'm sitting there like if we do one of these things, I'll be shocked because I'm going to be comatose. I'm going to be so goddamn high the whole time. And they all yeah. are like like. None of these guys have gone on a vacation with you. And when you think Kyle is exaggerating when he says, I want to do nothing. He is not. He wants to, like, <laughs> like, if you bring something up, like, it could be anything. You want to go out to dinner? Uh, the the thing about that is, Taylor, they don't play Trailer Park Boys at restaurants. And <laughs> I'm high as shit. <laughs> and also, Taylor, we can't play Magic there. I'm like, all right, well, I guess I'm in for, <laughs> for just staying in the house for the fifth day in a row. Yeah. I, think, um, I, I don't usually go out very much. I think I will this time, just because I have such a big, diverse group of guys. Like, like the activities on the itinerary include, and, and again, if, if more than one of these happens, I'll be shocked. One of them wants to go fishing, and I'm just like, that ain't happening. Uh, yeah. Horseback riding, ATV rentals, skydiving, uh, motorcycle rentals. Um, Scum wants to go to a very fancy restaurant. Um, that'll That's probably, not undoable. Yeah, you can go to a That'll nice probably restaurant. happen. They don't um, play trailer park boys at fancy restaurants, Taylor. But you can just get, get stoned, head just get stoned as shit and like walk in in like slightly scared mode. And by the time you're sitting down, you're going to be in prime munch, you know. Yeah, I could just, I'll, I'll go into a restaurant with my vape at this point. I'll just go into the bathroom and get, oh, get yeah. the top up, you know. Uh, so, so yeah, like, like they want to do a whole bunch of activities, but I have, I have a whole playlist of like stone songs that I've got that I've been building for the last month. <laughs> <laughs> read, read a couple read a couple off of it oh uh, my my music taste is lame but uh it's enjoy the silence by depeche mode take me to church by hosler uh float on by modest mouse uh i like that's I like a good MIA, I like uh, mouse. paper planes by mia uh life on mars david Bowie. uh power by kanye west white rabbit by jefferson airplane which is one pill makes you larger one mm-hmm. pill makes you small uh, Live and Let Die by Wings. Uh, I Do Anything for Love by Meatloaf. Bad Out of Hell by Meatloaf. Hurricane by Bob Dylan. Psycho Killers by Talking Heads. And it goes on and on and on. I was Two waiting for the Ramones. Songs. I want to be sedated. No, he's a Meatloaf man. <laughs> 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 no room for the Ramones on, on the Meatloaf playlist. Hang on, like, I, let me see. I don't know much about music because I don't really listen to music, but I do like Modest Mouse. It's a very chill, good stoner band. Yeah, maybe that's not cool to say. I don't know. Is that not a cool band? I don't know. I like it. I added a couple. It was. I only listened to the coolest music, Taylor. I can't be bothered with that. (laughs) I I, I only listened to what I personally am recommended from high schoolers, so that I'm, I'm always on point. I've uh we've been we've we've got a whole like Discord to like figure out what movies to watch. Like like we've got like a gigantic list of movies I want to watch. 
Um, now this is of, interesting. What, what's a couple of the top yeah, ones? Can you, like, are they stack you, ranked? You're ready. Oh, so you got to keep in mind these are movies that I think will be fun high. So like not right. necessarily yeah. good movies, but movies that will be silly with a group of guys while we're stoned. And some of them are like so bad it's good movies, like The Room, um, mm -hmm. by uh, Tommy Wiseau. Um, Flash Gordon, the original with the terrible special effects. I haven't seen that. Childhood Flash. me love that movie and love that song. Yeah, so right. Much. Queen does the soundtrack. <laughs> I love so that much. song. So <laughs> much. <laughs> <laughs> He's like riding that silly sky scooter. Savior <laughs> like, of the universe, I think. Da, 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 da. It's great. Um, um, hang on, I've got to let me just pull up the the, the whole yeah, pull up the list. list. Yeah, I, 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 some of them, I. I, I like my suggestions. I ignored everyone else's suggestions. And some of them are new that you just have purposefully put off until you can smoke, right? Annihilation with Natalie Portman um, is supposed to be pretty – looked pretty trippy to me, so I've been putting it off. Um, so I'm going to watch that. Um, see, these guys have been filling my movie suggestion thing with nonsense. Samurai Cop. Uh, Samurai Cop. That's a very bad movie. That's Never so even good. heard it's of funny. it. funny. Um, Troll Two is 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 so bad it, that it's good, and it has like a cult fan base where they like there's like uh, there's like meetups and and group watches and theaters and stuff. Um, Mandy, uh, I want to see that. Um, I know Woody doesn't like it, but it's going to be so fucking trippy high with the colors and the the synth music. Princess Bride. Um, <laughs> I like that. I like Ted. I like the first Ted movie. Uh, Pineapple Express. Uh, I like the the Dread movie, not the Stallone one. Uh, the Carl Urban one. Um, it's very old, and like most people have seen it so much they don't want to anymore. But uh, super bad. I remember watching that in college and getting stoned to shit. Really liking it. I like Super Bad a lot. It is on the list, honestly. Um, it's it's one of my favorite movies of all time. It was so funny this first time I saw it. Um, I'm hoping it holds up. Haven't seen it in a while. Definitely gonna watch some Trailer Park Boys. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of them that are on my uh, I've been like I've been adding them to my um, list on my Amazon Fire device because I'm just going to bring that and plug it into the mm -hmm. the system. But uh, but yeah, a bunch of movies like that. A lot of so bad it's good. Uh, 2001: A Space Odyssey, stuff like that. Like movies with trippy visuals. Harold um, and Kumar go to White Castle. I don't like that one. Okay. I also didn't find it very dazed funny. and confused. Anybody? No. I know a lot. Is of that the like one that where one. he's like the thing I like about high school girls is I keep getting <laughs> yes, older and they stay the same age. That's I enjoyed that. That's movie. like a pedophile thing to say. It's very much a so. scene and where... like in that movie, it's like, damn, this guy. You're supposed to be like, damn, this guy is cool. <laughs> <laughs> There's a scene where this uh, the guy gets kind of bullied, and he decides to confront <laughs> the bully because he doesn't want to live with the introspection or self judgment that he bowed down to the bully. And I'm like, oh, I like that guy. I like that guy. He's like, you know what? It's not that he wanted to do this. It's that he didn't want to live a life where he d didn't. So he fucking bought the McConaughey up. character. No, it's a nerdier. I didn't character. think so. You know, McConaughey yeah. is talking about running for governor of Texas. Really? He's leading cool. in the polls. That sounds like a what, fantasy. Like a the TV governor show. of Texas. Yeah. Is he popular? Mm -hmm. So the governor of Texas is doing all this stuff around abortion right now. It's great, he's Abbott, made, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's made abortion effectively illegal. It's, I guess, Roe versus Wade somehow stops the government from enforcing abortion. So he passed a law saying that you, as a third party, can sue anyone and win for ten grand if they have an abortion. So all the abortion clinics, except one, have shut down. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he made, I think the day after pill illegal or something like i'm i'm, I'm close to really? that yeah uh really it, that was I a more like that. recent thing that's because um, the thing about the thing about the law isn't that, that abortion right. is illegal it's that um it's a six-week limit like, like you except can't have an abortion like after most, six weeks most women like that's not really giving a six-week window it's giving like a two-week window yeah yeah if it were for time just right then you wouldn't notice mm -hmm. for for um you'd only have two weeks lead time if it was like right at the if you just had had your period and then you got pregnant, you'd be expecting your period, you know, within four weeks later, but yeah. you're pregnant during that four weeks. And then so you have best two weeks case to... scenario, you get two weeks. Well, worst case scenario, you get two oh, weeks. Worst case scenario, you get two weeks. Either way, that's fucking stupid. I don't like that. So 
Getting rid of the morning after pill? I can't believe that. What I'm reading about that, I may have it wrong. They're saying there's confusion about whether or not he got rid of the morning after pill. So maybe what I read was wrong, or I'm I'm not sure. I hope I don't want to get. I think what there's, I think what it is, is there's confusion as to whether the law could be interpreted as covering the morning after pill, and I don't think it could because the whole thing is the six week notice. I don't think any, I don't think you could. I don't know what happens if you're six weeks pregnant and you take the morning after pill. That's you're awesome. you're six weeks pregnant. It doesn't do anything. Yeah, I, I don't know anything about all that, but um, uh, I'm 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 not a vagina doctor. I think they say 72 hours on the box, and like every day you wait, it's less effective. Like you're supposed yeah. to do it like the morning after. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense since they call it that. Um, but but yeah, uh, I think they're trying to in- institute a similar situation in Georgia. I heard something on the radio about that the other day. Uh, they usually call it like a heartbeat law or something like that. I think if you're like a pro, because because the I don't know. I think when people hear heartbeat, they Maybe that's the instead of being like for gun control, you're pro gun rights. You know, there's there's two sides of the same coin. But in any like, case, when does the kid get a heartbeat? Six weeks. Oh, About that's six cool. weeks. Okay. Yeah, a better. That's pretty early. one would be brain activity, right? Because you can have a heartbeat and still be dead. They don't use the heart, I think, to measure if someone's alive or not. I think I read that, um, but I feel like. We're talking about whether the kid's viable at all. Brain activity is like there'll never be a viable kid that doesn't have brain activity. Yet. This is interesting. It's the end of week five and into week six. The first electrical brain activity begins to occur. So it seems, oh, seems pretty similar that. to the oh. uh, to the heart. I guess that makes sense if you My think mistake. like if, if the heart's coming along, then like the brain's probably like pacing with it. I would imagine. Got to tell it what to do. I, I, I thought for some. Oh, that's a good point. I thought for some reason it was much later. I, I, like everyone sort of agrees that. Killing viable babies like the day before they're born is not cool, right? Yeah, not everyone. And, um, not everyone, but I, I agree. That's <laughs> right, right? Like, the, the, if we go all the way to that extreme, it's mm-hmm. bad. And I almost everyone agrees that, like, the day after pill is not so awful. Even that's, I think that's even legal in Texas. I'm not sure. Somewhere in between is where we have to define that limit. Six weeks seems really fast. Um, but if you told me it was seven months or six months, I'd be like, eh. Kids are born at six and seven months. Like, yeah, I, I could see stopping there for viable babies. It's usually the third trimester that they're like nothing after. The, is that everywhere you can't do it? After? It varies by state. And um, but the, so a pro choicer would tell you, I think accurately, almost all of these kids in the third trimester are not viable babies or the mom's mm-hmm. going to die. Right. It, in the third trimester. And I can say this from experience. You've painted that baby's room. You've bought the crib. You've named Ooh, that's it. That's bad luck. Oftentimes, yeah. mm-hmm. um, like this third, no one waits till eight and a half months and then changes their mind. Or at least I've never heard mm-hmm. of that. The, the, if there's a third trimester abortion, overwhelmingly, almost always, this is to uh, save the mother, to save the mom, or they've gotten some horrible medical news about this baby. Yeah, that be like a stillbirth okay. or something. <laughs> Or it's that, going to like be born with its heart on the outside with no eyes or something. Yep. Yep. And, and you know, and this is a kid, it, it, like I said, seven, eight months in, they were very much looking forward <laughs> to little baby. And uh, so anyway, the whole third trimester argument against abortion, they I feel like they misrepresent their side when they do mm-hmm. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Finster's, there, yeah. Finster's over there covering up under Kyle's <laughs> under Kyle's uh, chauvinist gaze. <laughs> I don't think anyone spotted it when I went like this. You can kind of get what I mean when I did this. You see what I mean? I see it. That's what it looks like go. all the yeah. time when I was talking about that trick I could do. Yeah, mush them mm. together. Mm. <laughs> mush them oh. together. <laughs> <laughs> God, that's so unsexy, I think. <laughs> Did, uh, mushroom. did mushroom. you guys see that Matt and Trey from South Park just put in a $3.1 million offer to buy the failing business, Casa, Casa Bonita. Bonita? Yeah, they just bought Casa Bonita. I don't know if Finn is Casa familiar or Woody. Or, so uh, there's this restaurant that has Mexican food. I've been to a Casa Bonita many years ago. I think I was it was in high school. It is a Mexican restaurant, but it has stuff like cliff divers and dancing and they throw sopapillas at you and it's supposed to be a huge event and it has a really cool atmosphere. It does. I remember like the bus for the the trip I was on stopped like we're going to Casa Bonita 
And we're like, that fucking, that's awesome. It's supposed to be so cool. And the, the something funny that happened in there is I have a very shy friend and unlike having like a couple people at Chevy's, if that's a national restaurant, come out and like clap for you, like happy birthday, happy birthday, uh, enjoy your cake. They have like a mariachi band and then a secondary mariachi band. And so like 11 people are coming at you just like so loud. And I remember going over and telling them like my friend, Tim, he's such, such a great guy. He would never tell you guys, but it's his birthday. Could you could you surprise him? He's actually at that table over there, the one facing us. It would be wonderful if you guys could come up from behind him and start playing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I remember just watching it. Like, Do you think like they watching, know the, the scoop on this? They're not. I don't know. Are they None, buying your they story? Barely. They didn't even respond to me in English. Like, see. Okay. And then they just went back. And I remember, like, it was like watching the video of the towers fall, where I saw, <laughs> where I saw them come behind him, and they just they got into like one. Da, 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 da. And he just like turned around and then got up and like jogged to the bathroom. And it was it was it was so fucking funny. But either way, the, the food is reprehensible. It's in it's borderline inedible. Inedible, the food is. And they have like a guy cliff diving into a fake lagoon. But it's a cool aesthetic. And there was a South Park about it where Cartman really wants to go to Casa Bonita, and so he lies and tricks butter into thinking there's a zombie apocalypse. Great episode. Uh but yeah, it's a failing business because their food is so bad and Matt and Trey bought it and they're going to try and get it back on its feet. First step, Matt and Trey, I know they're both listeners, redo the whole menu. It's got to be better food. If the, even the tortillas are bad, you have to go back to ground zero and rebuild. <laughs> yeah, it's a really good episode uh, of South Park. It's it's one of the earlier ones and it's one of my favorite ones. It's I think it's the first really good Butters episode maybe. Um it's it's good. It's either Kyle. I think it's Kyle's birthday, and yeah. he's like, "Yeah, my mom's taking me to Casa Bonita." And Cartman like perks up. Oh yeah, it's Casa Bonita, my favorite place in the world. And he's like, "Dude, you're not invited." He's like, "What?" Yeah, I'm taking Butters, and so Cartman has to find a way to take Butters out of the picture so he gets that invite. And it's it's pretty horrific what he does to Butters. Yeah, but you know the, the episode like in the episode Cartman is doing like the sopa pias, sopa pias, please, like with a little flag. That's yeah. a real thing. You can put a little flag up like it's a Brazilian steakhouse. Instead of delicious meat, though, it's the driest sopa pias <laughs> <laughs> on earth. <laughs> and usually those are pretty good. I imagine those are hard if, to fuck if up. If they take it over, like, and then they do another like Casa Bonita episode, like like they're It'll just printing money. They're printing yeah. money. <laughs> That it's is, so, like and, a, and they'll throw a South Park theme into it too, like little, little I hope bits so. there. I'm sure they will. Sorry, yeah. Finn, what were you saying? I was going to ask: Is there like a type of because we're in at least where I'm at? There's not a ton of different like different cultures of food. There's like where I'm at is it's like Indian and pizza. That's all you can really find, mm -hmm. or like, you know, the like McDonald's and stuff. Is there like a type of restaurant, like a whole class of food that is like considered not great? Like in the, the U.S., whole... yeah. Oh, I hate Jamaican food. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that's really I'm specific. With you. I like jerk chicken. No, I don't like any of it. I hate Jamaican food. Jama I, you know that um, oxtail and Thai shit. restaurant I love so much that had the human trafficking make the food yeah. and stuff. Yeah, they were fantastic. <laughs> um, <Thai> food. <laughs> food wasn't good. I just really like the process. I just liked <laughs> knowing that there were slaves serving. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they got replaced with a Jamaican restaurant. And I was like, all right, I'll give it a try. Who serves food with broken chicken bones in it? Right. Oh. Yeah. Dude, that is fair. That's their yeah. jam. <laughs> no, that is that is one. Wait, I was on my this honeymoon. With my, I was on a honeymoon with my wife, and I'm like eating the jerk chicken, and I multiple times have to pull like a shattered piece of bone out of my mouth. Just, they, oh. Like they don't. It's not like they poorly demoned it. In my case, it was just breaking the bones and putting like little landmines in your food. Was, was I think they, they just take it. like yeah. the boned chicken and smash it with a big mallet <laughs> and season it up for you real nice. No, okay, Jamaican fair enough. Food Jamaican food's not worse. good. But, you know, America is like the fucking melting pot of the world. So, like, even in my little air area, like, I'm south of Atlanta, I have every conceivable, like, kind of food. Like, there's, like, two really nice Indian restaurants, three really nice um, Thai restaurants, like, everything. Uh, I, I know that doesn't encompass everything, but, but like, yeah. everything I can think of. It's off the top of my head. Like, like um, there's, like, a really nice uh, English pub. That, that There's a French market and tavern. Um, there's just, just about anything you can imagine. And it depends what city you're in because, like, Obviously, like when people immigrated here, they like settled in different places. So yes. like St. Louis, where I am, like there's a huge 
like alcove carved out of the city where it's a bunch of Italians and mm-hmm. Italian immigrants and their descendants called the Hill. And they still like you, you drive around the hill and it's nothing but Italian restaurants and like little Italian flags everywhere. And somehow these fuckers like still have an accent. It's like you you've been here for years. Like, do you never leave the hill? So Italian's good here. Asian is everywhere. You can Asian's get good everywhere. Asian Mexicans food everywhere. everywhere. A, Mexican is gigantic and like yeah everywhere. I've never been anywhere where there wasn't a ton of Mexican. There's but probably more Mexicans where you this, are than where I am. So you probably have better Mexican food there. The best it's Mexican I've ever had was in uh, like the Southwest, though, because I think the closer you get yeah. to home base, like, totally. like like the better the stuff is. Like like I I ate at this Mexican place once in maybe New Mexico, which makes sense. Um, it was incredible. Actually, no, I take it back. Better than that was L.A. L.A. is the best Mexican food I've ever had. It was like like I tipped them. First of all, it was, it was incredibly cheap. Like I, I it was I was about to do an epic meal time thing when we did the Star Wars episode. But nobody was there yet, and I had been dropped off by my driver. And uh, so I just walking away from the studio house or whatever we're filming at, looking for food, and I walk into this random Mexican restaurant. The entire meal was like eight dollars, and I think I tipped him at least twenty dollars. I think it was I, that I, maybe more. It was so. I, I, I after I ate, I was just like, whoever cooked this, tell them this <laughs> is the greatest Mexican food I've ever had. It was like that scene from. Um, Hmm. you ever see that johnny depp movie um um where they're down in mexico it's the sequel to the mariachi movie where like um johnny oh. depp says uh he has that same roasted pork dish at every mexican restaurant he goes to and he's telling um antonio banderas he's like and this is the best i've ever had in fact it's so good that after i'm finished with my meal i'm going to pay the check i'm going to walk in the back and i'm going to murder the chef who cooked it <laughs> because the universe needs to be balanced out this is too good. <laughs> and he Was does. It once, it. He pays once upon, his, a, time once upon a time in Mexico. Yeah. He literally gets up, walks to the back and murders the fucking chef and walks out the back door. What a piece of shit. I've never seen scene. that movie, but I don't like that. He just deprived the whole, you know, he had to balance the balance of delicious. This Mexican was too food. good. You know what else is good? That like there's not as many, at least around me, there aren't as many. There's like a bunch of sushi places around me, a bunch of Korean barbecue, Chinese restaurants. Yeah. But those like pho, like Vietnamese. Yeah. I, I hadn't even tried that until a couple of years ago because I was like, pho, isn't that just like soup? Soup's not a meal. And then you go there and eat it, and it's like <laughs> it's like they're carving off the entire belly of a pig and putting it into a bowl for you. It's the tremendous. bowl is so big, you yeah. can fit not just a human head in it, like Taylor's. It's outrageous. <laughs> yeah, you could fit two human heads or half of mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is, it is a super big bowl. It's a ton of food. It's a ton to drink, which I, I walk out of there sloshing. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you typically, the, I guess the pho is the stuff they put on the side. That's what pho actually is. It's spelled P H O, by the way. And it's pretty. Yeah, I called pho. it pho for a long time. You would, right? Spelled P H O. I didn't know pho was the stuff to the side. I thought that was the whole meal. I could be wrong. I've been told that. Not, huh. I'm not positive. But uh, yeah, it's a ton it's of food. Great. And if you pair it with, they call it bubble tea. It's not muddy water like tea. Right. No, no. This is a milkshake with giant like pudding balls in it. And it's fantastic. And they give you a straw that's so big you could suck a dick through it. it is- <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. I mean, it literally <laughs> is just the sugariest water on earth with tapioca balls at the bottom. <laughs> uh, mine's more like a sugary smoothie with tapioca balls. Oh. It is not good for you at all. I haven't had it in a few years. I only tried fantastic. it once at like a bubble tea stand at the mall when I was maybe 16 and I didn't like it. It was way too sweet, but that I could be because I went to a bullshit mall. We're both in the minority on that one where the scent, I think it's the texture of bubble tea. Like it's a mm-hmm. really weird thing to be drinking a drink and then suddenly, you know, like a, like 10 balls. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was using the straw, so I was anticipating liquid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but every so often you get it. We are going to surprise. slowly murder every American by asphyxiation, <laughs> and then we will move in and avenge the Vietnam War. <laughs> that we won. <laughs> they're too large. They're not like BB sized either. They're like enough that you could. It would if you one went straight down, you'd have like a bit of. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's a like ping pong ball. What is it? The size? It, it's of? like it's like I don't know. It's like maybe 50 60 percent of a paintball. If you know how big a paintball. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> yeah. the straws are truly girthy. 
Like a milkshake. <laughs> <It's a big laughs> I, I'm really curious to see what they serve in an English pub in America, because I can oh. only hope it's a like a, just beans on toast. Oh my god, that'd be so beautiful. I would think it'd be there, a burger joint, right? Yeah, it's I would. Yeah, when there's pie. pubs, there's yeah, always shepherd's pie. pie. I heard you shit talk. I heard you shit talk beans on toast. It's undeserved. It's good. Beans on toast is vile. Put your silly knife away, first of all. And second of all, it's vile. (laughs) I like his knife. Is it still the bench made you're holding? (laughs) I'm growing random. He got the knife out. He was threatening me for making fun of his beans (laughs) on toast. I will. That's what was implied. That's what was implied. (laughs) He's going to stab you with that practice. I'll kiss you right on the lips. You come over here with that knife. (laughs) Talking a lot of shit for someone. Yeah, you even try it. You even try it. Stab him with a knife. That'll teach you. And You're he's going to bend you over. and <laughs> talking a lot of shit for someone that can't have a knife. <laughs> hey, I can't have you tomorrow. I picked it out. Get Sorry, we're in the same boat. I've, yeah, I've, I've never really... Actually, no. I've been to like English places that serve like breakfast, and they do like the full English breakfast. Right. Except that includes beans on toast, and so I've never gotten it. Because beans don't agree with me, and beans on toast just seems like a soggy mess. It's good it's really quite nice i i can vouch for beans on toast if there's like you they're just really unhealthy and it just make like you put butter on the toast and all mm-hmm. that and then you put beans you could have it on the side but that's not the traditional way you really want the the, the soggy mess of the, I mean, uh, of the english breakfast so i like the little food. uh <laughs> they have like the, the the tomatoes there i like that yeah. sometimes there's mushrooms on there i like that the yeah. sausages look really good they have like real sausage casing on them which is good but like the the beans on toast they the the english should have just taken a w on having a delicious breakfast and then they throw this absolute sludge mm. in the mix so it, it might I'm, the more i thought about it the more it's like one of those things that you grow up with because i know that the equivalent is probably like a grilled cheese in america it's like the equivalent level of like mm-hmm. everyone knows them it's a staple you know it's the easiest quick meal. It's not. But do you like toast. grilled cheese? You probably I got had a grilled told, cheese. I was. I remember the day I was told about a grilled cheese. Like I was. Old, I was seventeen when I got told that grilled cheese exists. It's yeah. just a grilled cheese sandwich. I. Know. You guys conquered the world. <laughs> 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 oh, you know you can it. put the cheese on there instead of putting beans on it. You can put cheese on it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the day I was talking to a friend where I was like, oh, I'm going to go make a sandwich. He's like, okay, what are you having on the sandwich? I'm like, cheese. He's like, are you making a grilled cheese? I'm like, no, just a, just a cheese sandwich. Like you just, you butter bread, you put cheese in it, then you eat it. So you grilled cheese, maybe a bit of lettuce. It's a cheese sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> what he's making. And then he goes, what? Like you put the cheese with the butter on the inside? He's like, well, yeah. No, no, you put the butter on the outside. And in my brain, that didn't compute. I was like, but your hands. Get the butter. <laughs> Mayonnaise. You want his mayonnaise uh, on the outside and the inside. That's forget the butter. What are you retarded? <laughs> you need the butter. What other backwards advice do you have? Do you put the relish on the outside, Kyle? I'm, forget I'm, the butter and order your drugs in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody makes fun of that one time I got caught. What about the dozens of shipments that made it in right under the radar? You guys Nobody... have no idea how many felonies I've committed. <laughs> Nobody, nobody ever talks about that all the times i won like, <laughs> one loss right uh, like like we're over here fucking undefeated season after undefeated season we lose <laughs> one game and all of a sudden what a fool <laughs> <laughs> is it not something you'd want to be careful about talking like the, the careful oh no, you about? want to let everybody know it's plausible deniability who would brag about such a thing <laughs> <laughs> to be a fool <laughs> talking like a man that's been to court your honor yeah. you think my client is a if, if you truly think my client is foolish enough to do something like this then can we really try him as a competent <laughs> adult man really I mean, they, could, they could genuinely make a point for this show where they'd be like your honor i present to you another truthful section of the show <laughs> where kyle <laughs> pretends to be a retarded person competing in the nfl let's watch <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, yeah, yeah, that works. That 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 passes muster. Oh God, yeah, no, I had a plan. If you, after the TTE, <laughs> yeah, I was totally normal before I got tackled. 
<laughs> um, I don't believe yeah. him. <laughs> Look, anybody out there who wants to actually make a good grilled cheese, it's mayonnaise. It's mayonnaise. That is the ticket. And it's Duke's mayonnaise. Get rid of the butter. Especially, look, if you really hate the taste of mayonnaise, just put it on the outside. You don't have to put it on the inside. I always put it on the inside because I love the, the tangy zip of Duke's mayonnaise. It's amazing. But don't Forget you get all of your shit. hands by putting mayonnaise on the outside of your sandwich? You grill it. It's yeah, going. Yeah, it, it, it dries up. It, like, oh, like, just like, like, like butter would. And it browns. Yeah. It, 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 nothing browns better than the mayonnaise on the outside. So the outside of the sandwich is going to be this golden brown uh, color. If you watch any like professional chef make a grilled cheese, if you find like Gordon Ramsay making one or something, he's going to put mayonnaise on that motherfucker. Gordon Ramsay makes beans on toast. I don't care. Well, yeah. he <laughs> ma- clearly he's retarded at cooking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've he seen ma- him do all sorts of things. I promise. He makes mayonnaise. beans on toast badly too. He puts beans in like a oh. pan, so like they get. Like crisp, ah, oh, fuck that! It's it's not. It, it, I your I beans aren't even girl. good. You want like, them soggy? Like, I love beans. Okay, and, and like southern style barbecue beans are like sweet and spicy with like bits of pork in them. They're delicious. and there's there's more brown sugar in those southern style beans than there are beans. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> they're so they're so good. They could you could smell them from across a household, and you're like, mm. somebody got baked beans in here. They're nice. I mean, yeah. when I eat beans, I feel like you know that blueberry girl from Willy Wonka. Yeah. <laughs> like I feel so bloated when I eat beans. So I beans just, and I, rice I, can be good. Beans and rice are amazing. What's I, the I, Brazilian restaurant that has all you can eat? They come around your table and I can't pronounce eat. it correctly, but it's a uh, folk to show. Okay, they have beans and rice there, and I like it so much. That I devote some of my precious stomach space in an all-you-can-eat meat restaurant to beans and rice. It's just very good. That's how yeah, they get um, you. Growing up, yes. like like my dad grew up super poor, so a lot of like his like favorite foods are like poor slave food. Um, so like he loves cornbread and milk, which is like the poorest of the poor things. It's what you do when like yeah. you have nothing. Um, oh. He he likes. Um, Does he um, like fried bologna sandwiches? Oh yeah, like, like like yeah, absolutely. Or just or, and my grandparents would get along swimmingly because they, they grew up. They grew up like barely able to like feed themselves, like like um all sorts of like preserves and stuff like that, and canned vegetables and shit. But um um pintos and uh, cornbread. So it's it's literally just like pinto beans and cornbread like mixed together with and uh, with like chopped raw onions in there. And uh, I love that shit. Like like I ate that growing. Like there would be a. So, um, my mouth's watering. Some some families would have like, oh, it's pork chop night. But every now and then, my mom would be like, "You guys want pinto beans?" And we, like, yes, oh yes, because like I would just have this big bowl of pinto beans with like crumbled up cornbread in it that she would also make, and I chop the raw onions up in there. And you know that uh, Texas Pete stuff that's clear with little green peppers, yeah, that like pepper sauce. I dump so much of that sour, spicy shit in there and just eat. I would make myself very sick. I would eat so much of that. I've never had that, but I remember like thinking that fried bologna sandwiches were gross when my grandpa was making one when I was like seven. And then I ate one and it was, I didn't know bologna could be so good because I don't. Yeah, it's good when you fry it. Like, like it's just, I just think bologna as a product is kind of gross. Um, but, but yeah, that, that shit's really fucking good. And, uh, but yeah, like, like and ham hocks. Like like I, when I make pinto beans, I haven't in a while. But last year, one of the things I made when I got out of prison, because uh, I made this big list of foods that I missed, was uh, was some, like southern pinto beans. And you take a couple of whole ham hocks, and which is like a pig's knees, and uh, you mm-hmm. throw them into the uh, the bowl of pintos, and they boil for three and a half four hours. So like by the time you're done, the ham hock is just like giving up all of its delicious salty pork flavor to the beans. It's really. I'm good. surprised your your dad wasn't into like fried chicken liver even i love fried chicken liver no i've never heard of him even eating that i don't think they could afford chicken oh yeah when my grandparents were little they had i remember like my grandparents when i was little they would tell me a story about how excited they both were and they were different ages obviously but like when they got running water instead of having to use an outhouse yeah and yeah. it was like like I, th- I think my grandma was like 16 when they got like indoor plumbing and she's like, and we just felt like we were the queen of England in there. <laughs> oh, you need to go to the bathroom middle of the night. Well, you don't need to go out there and check for, for raccoons and, and rattlesnakes. You just oh, go, man. go pee in the house. <laughs> my family was poor and Jackie's parents were, and, but it was a different thing. Like, of course they always had running water. They're city people. They had running water from mm. the start, but they didn't have warm water. They only had cold water, cold water, flat stuff like that. 
<clears throat> and uh, it was like a mark of shame, though. Like the people, other people mm. had hot water, and mm. they didn't want them to know that there was no hot water where they lived. Like that yeah. was the the vibe. Yeah, they, did, they never sense. had hot water. My my grandpa and grandma would tell me how, or no, it was my grandma. She would be like, the way they had to bathe was they had like a big tin bathtub, and they would have to like go to the spigot and get buckets of water and like fill it up slowly and by the time it's all full it's i mean it's already coming from a spigot it's not hot but it's like actively cold now and you have to sit there in the yard cleaning yourself and she was like and i was the oldest and so that meant i got to go first and then my two sisters afterward would get to go after me but we use the same water because i'm not walking back to that spigot 16 times and it was, it was like that fucking sucks yeah that blows yeah. we are so but lucky they had showers lucky. cold water showers but if you think about it these people that we're talking about right now eating cornbread and beans and, and with their cold running water or their buckets of water they could go out and get are light years ahead of the people who came before them who oh, didn't yeah. have any of those wonderful things. They're like, <clears throat> you like, y'all got y'all got beans? <laughs> <laughs> what is that thing you have there with the water in it? This is a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> you know how hard it is to get water back home in a wicker basket? <laughs> you gotta be uh, quick my grandpa's my, my grandpa's family they, they kept they kept a ton of photos throughout like <laughs> from like, uh, <laughs> you gotta run <laughs> like my, my grandpa's family like they have photos going back to like the point that they could like afford to get their photo taken yeah and so like there are some like it's pictures like me and my brothers and all of us goofing around and like their family and then like older generations and there's one of like my grandpa's grandpa like on next to like a, a horse and wagon like and he's like yeah and he was a uh, he you know, sometimes they would get involved in a little bit of you know ruffianism as they called it but mostly they would uh you know help volunteer to build railroads and so they would take that buggy over there and they'd help build. And it was like, it was just neat looking at that and being like, I don't know what the fuck your name is in this picture. I don't know who you are, but like, you're kind of in my family somehow. Mm -hmm. And similarly, as generations pass, like the only record of me will be me being an absolute retard on this show for years. Oh, damn. That is weird to think about. After we're dead, this is going to be our legacy. Oh, think about me. What the fuck? <laughs> Tell my grandkids. My, my, my grand grandfather was hot as shit. Yeah. <laughs> my God. yeah, actually, your your act is going to age really well if I'm if I have my finger on the pulse of what the kids are up to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll all be we'll all look like Fenster in another five years. <laughs> I almost had the opposite thought because my my thinking was like it's gonna sure it's gonna be more in fashion, but it's gonna be less of a spectacle because it'll mm -hmm. be more common. I guess maybe I'll be out of the job as soon as... I always had this theory that, like, there's gotta be, like, a thousand people that, like, would look far better than me. Or, like, tens of thousands of people, millions In the more. world. Yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, you know, the, you're you're the, the like, hottest one here. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> my ego. Um, but there's gotta be, like, a, millions of people that are, like, would do this a lot better than me, but they just won't because of, like... Because <laughs> it's so stupid. Like, it's so not normal right now. They may just never think. It may never cross their mind. Yeah. But, like, it, there's, it, if there, there aren't classes in school, they're like, hey, do you want to be an electrician or yeah. maybe HVAC repair? Uh, I'm going to be a fem boy. <laughs> 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 exactly. Oh, yeah. Well, head right down the hall to the fem boy class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some people are going to be, like, just genetically gifted. There was, I mean, gifted in this in a weird way because, like, if you kind of go like, ah, this guy's 5'2", he's got really narrow shoulders, wide hips, and his jawline is really not quite there. Mm -hmm. There's a career path lined out, but most <laughs> stuff is not going to work out for you there. And that guy's going to be like, I don't want to be a fanboy! Yeah. <laughs> I want to be an alpha! How, how tall yeah. are you, Finster? Is it difficult to get clothes like for wimp? Or I'm like 5'10", 5'11", like on a... Okay. A generous oh, yeah. day. That's not girl size, though. <laughs> yeah, no. that's very tall for a woman. Well, weirdly so enough, it's tough. like, yeah, weirdly enough, it's like I wear like medium to large in women's, which isn't like the worst. Usually, like medium everywhere besides anything that covers a shoulder. I think, I think what they need to know here is how much you weigh. Oh, I'm like 70, 70 kg now. 70 kg. That's not a number. Is... 
<laughs> that's like that's like 160. 165, 170 pounds. Yeah. yeah. Which isn't, I don't know. It's healthy weight, normal weight. Yeah, that's healthy at 5'11 for sure. Yeah. Oh, at 5'11 for sure, but it's on the bigger side for a girl. Oh, yeah. Well, but, yeah. You know, like the bone shorter. structure and stuff. But he's still got the, the heavier bones, the bigger shoulder. Like, you got, you got the man weight in there. Let's try not to, uh, let's try not to sugarcoat it. I'm, I'm, on, I've talked to Carl about like, <laughs> Some st- I talked to Carl about like losing a little bit because I used to be like sixty, and I'm still like mm-hmm. in a dress. I'm still what like skinny, but I don't. The thing is to look like a woman as a guy, you need to be like on a deficit level. Like you need to be really quite skinny. Like mm-hmm. as a guy, I'm a skinny guy, like fairly. As a girl, I have packed on the pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, you need to develop an eating disorder. You'd be smoking. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I need as, as soon as I can look like Belle Delphine, the better. Oh, shit. <laughs> God, how she is she doing? Really nice. She's she British too. Isn't mashing she? it when she I, first did porn, and I haven't heard about her since. Uh, she kind of she takes occasional breaks. I think the last time I talked to her was like I th- she was on Twitter, like uh, like the four the fourth month. What is that? April. Last time she was online, she takes these breaks and then types set everything up when she's back. But she's always active on like her OnlyFans or whatever it is. Hmm. Um, my God, the day that I got, she followed me on Twitter and I use Twitter quite a lot. That was a weird fucking day. Because I, I think my first DM to her was like, I'm not going to ask for nudes. I just want to know what, where the wig's from. <laughs> and she was really nice about it and she linked in everything. And we had a nice chat. There was a, um, as we were speaking though, so, the girl I was talking to at the time, the girl I was interested in at the time, um, I I was talking to Bella following back, and we had a conversation, and then it ended with like Bella had invited me out for drinks where she lived. The the girl I was talking to went, "You are not fucking going. <laughs> You're not going to be this woman." Uh, so I, yes, uh, I am. <laughs> yeah, I really. I'll do it. my makeup. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have the most successful OnlyFans of all time. <laughs> God, oh. that's been a thing that I've asked, been asked of me. Oh, are you? Oh, do, you, you don't do OnlyFans? No, God no. Yeah. Did you operate uh, from all of this? You were you operating under the assumption that my dick and balls were somewhere online? <laughs> uh, I, was I don't hoping. know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I've been, I I've been feverishly now. searching yeah. <laughs> the last three hours and thirty minutes. But uh, like, like, like. We told Woody we didn't want to see Wings Dick. Every time he sends it, it gets saved to my phone again. Yeah. <laughs> you don't like, get to it, choose if you see Wings Dick. I decide that yeah. on my own. I opened up my photos three days ago and I was like, fuck, again. <laughs> 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 because WhatsApp saves everything. So I just got Wings Dick in my fucking. I got Wings Dick and a just glut of shirtless Kyle. <laughs> I so went to the $50 bad. Discord well, looking for it, thinking it would already be there told the boys how disappointed I was in them and they got it in minutes. Well, seconds. I didn't think it was cool. So I was kind of like, like, hey, let's not do this guys. You know, I didn't, pass I didn't, I hadn't seen his reaction to it yet. I when I saw I him sort of like being more playful about it and uh, being silly about it, I, I, I loosened my thought process about mm-hmm. it. But like I found out, out about it while I was streaming and they were like, have you seen <laughs> wings dick? And like, there's enough of them saying it that I knew it was real, but I was just trying to ignore it. I was like, Anyway, so uh, we're gonna play a little <laughs> poker, uh, and it's just like wings, dick, wings, dick, wings, dick. <laughs> like, All right, so apparently wings, dicks out there. I don't want to talk about that though. It's a little fucked up. Uh, I don't Another know how it got. I don't know Twitch. why, but I mean, if he's like responding now in a more playful, like agree and amplify style, that's the way to handle something like this. Yeah, probably. Like agree and ample. It's like it's like the to bring up South Park again when Mr. Garrison is talking about how to like counteract like ca- Cartman be like suck my balls and Gar- Mr. Garrison be like present them. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd be like, agree and amplify and it shuts it down. So That's, good for Wings for for taking a good approach. He could monetize that. I don't know why he hasn't. If it's already out there, surely like only could... fans with one picture ever. Yes, <laughs> exactly. But how good would that be if Wings had like a whole? He just really went whole hog. And really <laughs> whole hog. hog. <laughs> if Wings and his wife had an OnlyFans, oh, it would. Be I would successful. make an account. I've never I heard would, of a would... parody OnlyFans account. But... <laughs> I would have to sign up if they started an OnlyFans. I would I just would have to. Yeah. I don't, I, don't, I don't have to. You guys are. 
<laughs> You'll link me the photos. I will not. That is no matter how much I tell you not to, Woody will. <laughs> we're, 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 we're pro porn stars here, as wings mm -hmm. should become. So uh, you I don't know if you're aware of this, Spencer, but but years ago when he was still on this show, um, we did one of those. You know, tonight we had the discussion: how much to get breast implants. We all, we did that little thing. We had a similar question: how much to do a porno? And uh, we all gave our number or whatever. Wings' number was shockingly low. He said five thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. five thousand I mean, dollars. There's not. There's a lot of people that could immediately fork that they up. They did immediately. <laughs> immediately, like like before the next week's show, it had been arranged and set up that he was going to make a porno with an attractive like woman. Um, you need and, to uh, pay her more, right? Uh, shockingly, no. That's <laughs> Like in this, oh. sort of, in, in an instance where like he's kind of the draw, like I think she's getting that st standard like six or eight hundred dollars or something like that, oh. and he would be getting five grand. Whereas normally it's the inverse, right? Like the guy is getting paid like mm. maybe fifty dollars, mm. but it, you know if you're actually some kind of a draw, maybe a, a yeah, hundred. We had a, few a hundred. fan who knew a producer who could really make it happen. Yeah, it was it was ready to roll, and uh, and he immediately backed out. But he he never knows how to like back out without. He always leaves a trace of like, oh, I don't know about all that. And it's just like, what you need to be is like, guys, I was joking. I thought about yeah. this more. I can't. I can't do that. That would be on the internet forever. I can't. For $5,000, it's really not enough. I, I was just joking. <laughs> Look, I was or making go the joke. other way. Be a lie. Be like, you know what? I said five grand. They tried to come in at four. No. Five is five. Get off my yeah. dock. He could have done any of these things, but instead he sort of like left this sort of hint of like, maybe I will, maybe I won't. And so it like mm. kept snowballing and becoming mm. this whole thing. Mm. And, uh, and, and of course he didn't do it, but, but like, man, maybe that was just a marketing play. That's what, that's, that is what Belle does where she's just like, eh, maybe, maybe not. And then yeah. she did it. Maybe it's just waiting for like, I don't believe prime, this was quite as calculated. I don't think wings <laughs> knows what the word ploy means. Uh, <laughs> Could you spell it? <laughs> I can. <laughs> Top <laughs> topic. And change? you use it in the sands. Yeah. What do we got? John Jones is in a bit of hot water. What's he I'll doing? I'll do my best to lay it out as usual. Expected to be hashtag about winner. Eighty percent right. Hashtag champ. Uh, John Jones gets inducted into the Hall of Fame here in La here in Las Vegas. Here, uh, he goes into the Hall of Fame. There's two ways to get in it: one for a career, one for a particular fight. His was for his fight against. Gustus, Gustus, Gustus Finn? I can't say it tonight. Gustafson. Gustafson. And uh, uh, that was a fight in which John Jones got all coked up, drunk before the fight, had a struggle. It was an epic battle where uh, Jones came out ahead. It was close, but I had Jones winning that. And uh, anyway, so he, because of this fight, he gets into the Hall of Fame. Cool. Afterwards, he tells his family, tonight is my night. This is kind of a big deal for me. I'm going to take $10,000 and go to the club. I hear that. I hear a strip club because I don't know why you need $10,000 at a dance club, but okay. Even bottle service, a couple drink that much. Mm -hmm. A couple thousand. So he takes $10,000 in cash and goes to the club. Um, while he's gone, his family i think this is his wife and a kid if not it's his serious girlfriend and a kid go down to the front desk and they say can we have new keys to our room and this is just me talking i think what they're saying is can you change the locks on our, our on our hotel room you know when they ask for new keys so that presumably this is me bridging some gaps here john can't get back in the person working the front desk sees her like split open lip and bruised face and says, are you okay? And someone requests that the police get called. His child. His child. Yeah, that's right. You're right about that. Ooh. So his child says, will you call the police? All right. So the police come in. They see the room. They see the woman's bruised face, her split open lip and blood all over the bed sheets. And they say, you know. This doesn't look like a good scene. John Jones gets called or returns back to this place or that maybe the police go to him. And he's like, how dare you guys fuck with me? This is my big day. Why are you ruining my good time with this domestic abuse nonsense? Seems so, like a narcissist. Perhaps, perhaps, maybe a little, maybe a little. And uh, as the police the try to restrain time. him, he resists arrest. 
Uh, for some reason, he headbutts the car, which needs automotive repair afterwards. And uh, that was now the second he... win of the night. <laughs> the, we don't know. He might have had three. Cars in the check garage. The kid. Cars still in the garage getting worked on. Okay. <laughs> when your opponent is in the hospital days after the event, I call that a fucking win. I saw John Jones in the mugshot. His forehead didn't even have a blemish on it. Girlfriend. Mm-hmm. I bet she still don't look right. All right. That's win number two. If, I'm not even counting what, what the pussy he I guarantee he got at the strip club that night. That's win number three. That I, I bet her, I bet number did. four, he just got inducted into the, into the Hall of Fame. Four for four that night. And let me tell you, the man was looking for five for five because he told those arresting police officers while he was hand, handcuffed, I bet if you uncuffed me, I could beat you all down right here. Look at that. I mean, all right. I he's, mean, got, all right he's got a little blemish there. All he, right. He's definitely I, wrong <laughs> because they have guns. Well, he's not. <laughs> I mean, and I, tasers. He, uh, I, I would I would put my money on John Jones versus. I mean, cop. John Jones seems arrogant enough to think he can take someone with a gun. Did you say he tried to hit a car? Like a like a, he he did hit he a car. He head butted the he did car. That little mark on his forehead. So he beat a car as well. Or not. He beat Wait, the car. Wait, that, that video I just saw of a naked guy running around head butting a car that was actually John Jones. No, no, that was not. <laughs> oh, okay, because I just saw. Okay, I didn't think so. Like, Look, uh, the man is a fucking winner. He's never lost a fight. He's. For, he's looking tremendous these days. He's trying to go to 275, which would be god mode if he got to that big. He's he talking can. about cutting to get to 260. 265. Beautiful. Yeah. 265. I mean, he's he's oh, still yeah. back, which he's would be still, like 275 has got to be like the perfect size for like like heavyweight if you're still mobile and fast cuz like you're as big as you can be while not having to do a real weight cut. 10 pounds is nothing. Especially I mean, being, being that, this the early percentage of your body weight, you know, like, like 10 pounds to a featherweight is a big deal. 10 pounds to a heavyweight is light work. Calling yes. him the goat is interesting <laughs> because it's like, like we have sports history. Like the UFC has evolved so much. Five, eight years ago, they were saying Ronda Rousey couldn't be beat. She was the best of all time. She's the best. One. Oh, it turns out she's not very good. You know what? You know what's happening? John Jones is the best baseball player. In 1944, it's John going Jones. to continue to get more advanced, get better, and in 10, 12 years, they'll look back and be like, "John Jones was great for his era," but no, he couldn't beat John you know, Jones' career yeah. has spanned four eras, though. He was the youngest champion ever, right? Like at like 20 or something. Like, like uh, I want to say, I want to say yeah, he was the youngest champion ever. Definitely in his day, he was the youngest. Right, ever. right. Has anyone younger since? I don't know. Uh, Champions don't tend to be that young. They don't. It um, takes a while to get a title shot. Yeah. Youngest champion ever. And he he's had some close fights. His last two fights versus De, De Santos and uh, maybe Johnny, something or another, that ugly fucker. I can't remember who the other guy is. I can picture him in my head. Ahead. The there's, ugly fucker. There was that big fucking like Cuban looking guy who's like brown, light skinned, who um, like ended up blowing both of his knees out in the fight. Tiago Santos. Tiago oh, Santos. Was it him? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, was yeah, it? you got it. Um, and then there was. Um, the uh the other guy but both those fights were very close and i do agree with woody like it could have easily gone the other way on the judges scorecards but this current version of john jones who i think is on steroids again and getting fucking huge (laughs) think i do think um Uh, but where name seven telltale signs (laughs) right (laughs) oh Uh, normally big is anyone dumb enough to get caught for steroids Four times though. Did, you should have seen, did you see him on Instagram with, with I, it, I I don't know if he had two plates or three, but he was just like, I'm taking all this and I'm putting it into a positive place, and he's fucking cranking it out. Um, <laughs> he he looks tremendous and he looks lean. Does he look, look lean? He wouldn't yeah. put a video of himself up yeah. doing he, two he doesn't plates. Look like, like he doesn't look nothing. fluffy at all. So um, I don't know who who knows how many reps he's doing though, right? Like yeah. like and um, he's very so long. Uh, very long. Yeah, yeah, that makes like, bench press a lot harder. Yeah, my it's anyway. Uh, it's it's hard to do bench press when your arms are long. It's a lot of travel. Uh, I I I, and I I wouldn't want to be one of those stubby fuckers. But whenever I see somebody in a video who's got like fucking twelve inch arms and they're just like four hundred, yeah, d- think done it. It's how like, how long are your arms, Kyle? Do you know? Um, really, really long. Um, I've never. On a boat, you'd know. Do you know I you didn't uh, measure until I got into the. I, I bought an archery bow today, but like I, I always just because I'm six feet tall and that's seventy two inches, and so I assumed like okay, then my wingspan is probably seventy two inches. I, I measured it. It's actually seventy five, and so my my arms are are longer than my body. I didn't know that, and so I had to get like a longer draw bow. Yours are probably 
like what? Because you're six two, so you're need, seventy four inches to think tall. If I so. have, I'm trying to think if I have any way to measure. I'm gonna go look for a tape measure and like do my wingspan on the wall and make a little mark and do a whole one thing you there. could do easily yeah. is just do this floor to ceiling, stand next to it and estimate. Brilliant. That's Unlike that's videos. That's actually a much smarter way to do it than what I did. <laughs> <laughs> There's, did you manage? Did you get a, a recurve bow, or did you get a? Uh, I, I got a. Uh, I bought a recurve one. bow, so I bought a PSC Nighthawk recurve bow. Uh, I, I went for like thirty pounds, super light. I want to. I, I had a very friendly guy on on Twitter. I want to make sure I got his his name right. Who was like sending me videos and helpful things and like tips about archery which was super kind of him. Uh, Ash the deer guy, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And he was telling me like, and he basically laid it out. He's like, you, just because you know you can, you know, bent over row a huge amount of weight if you're a big guy, if you haven't done that movement before, you need to start low. You need to make sure that you're not doing bad form and jerking your back and doing all that. And I was like, that makes a huge amount of sense. So I have the 30 pound bow. It's a takedown recurve. 30. Okay. Yeah. Which means that I can remove the the limbs on it and replace it with higher resistance. I'm, I'm waiting until I feel like my form is perfect. And then I'm going to go up to 50 because like, honestly pulling the 30 is like, it, it's unbelievably easy, which means it's going to be super comfortable for me to get, you know, used to the the movements, and everything, and so I'm, I'm I'm super excited about that. I bought the the PSC Nighthawk 62 inch longbow, uh, 30 pound draw weight, but because it's 30 pounds at 28 inch draw, and I'm drawing at a 30 inch draw, it's actually like 35 pounds, uh, which isn't a huge difference. And then my wife, who is there with me today, she obviously can't shoot right now or anything because of her her spinal issue, but uh, she was was messing around like kind of semi pulling on it and huh. she wanted a compound bow because it was much easier and so i bought her like a Good. youth uh compound a genesis something like my bow was only like 130 bucks hers was like 160 and it's like a a youth training uh it can go 10 to 20 pounds and that's perfect for her uh so yeah i'm i, I bought a target i bought the little wrist uh block thing today i got the I don't remember what it's called, like the flipper thing. I didn't go for the glove. I went for like you didn't buy aluminum you arrows, pull. you pleb, right? I don't <laughs> believe so. I, I believe I bought the the carbon <laughs> ones. I got a dozen of the. The guy was like talking about the arrows, and he's like, "And so, what do you want? Like three of these?" And I was like, <laughs> "I've never done this before. Give me a dozen." He's like, "You planning to break a bunch of these?" And I'm like, "Yes, <laughs> yes, and, yeah. That's isn't that how you learn archery?" And so, and it, it fucking sucked. I. My wife and I, we just went earlier today, and I was like like a kid. I was so excited. We're driving to the archery store, and I want to get home. I was going to skip my workout today, so all the hours before the show, I could go in my yard and practice shooting my bow. I'm happy for and, you, because adulthood rarely feels like this. Yeah, it feels. It was awesome. I was so excited. <laughs> and then I, as we're leaving, or as I'm checking out at the archery store, it starts to be like a torrential downpour. And so I'm like having to run the equipment and the target and everything out there. And by the time I get home, everything's so sopping wet and it's still raining. I'm like, I guess I'll just go do pole day and wait for tomorrow. So tomorrow i'm really hoping i can get out there and practice with this recurve bow because i'm looking forward and it's i was i was doing like the sample draw at the the place and the the arrow kept coming off the rest because i wasn't because mm. i was gripping it i was like instinctively trying to grip it instead of keeping my my hands apart like you're supposed to and so that's going to be a weird muscle memory thing to try and learn because i instinctively want to want to grip the arrow but if you do grip it and touch it, it just immediately falls off but um yeah it's it, kyle you weren't here i got a psc nighthawk i got i went for the 30 pound pull because i want to i want to like it's a very good it. looking bow i like it a lot uh i i want to get my form perfect before i move to higher stuff and 30 sense. pounds is like i told them it is a joke to draw yep like nothing like a, like a children's <sighs> bow for me it, at least it is uh, yeah, I, I'm stoked. Like, I love when I get into new hobbies, and I hope that I'm I don't get like frustrated ten minutes in. Oh, you're glad you bought a lot of arrows. I, they, I think yeah. I wanted to sell you three, and my first mm -hmm. thought was, oh, so every three arrows you have to go get the arrows. That's, That's the what thing. sucks. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. you want to shoot yeah. twelve arrows per walk, not three. Yeah, I I, I bought a dozen, like I told them for, for Kyle's benefit. Uh, and I just know I'm going to shatter or whatever nah, happens to carbon arrows. Tough. 
No, you'll be fine. You're not gonna. You think so? Um, we'll just flex. Yeah. I, I shot a little. What if I? What? Because because my the way my target is in my yard, I have like a, you know, the big bag thing. It's probably like two and a half feet wide, two and a half feet tall. I wanted to get a big one. It's because because I'm gonna start shooting at ten yards, just trying to figure out form and get it consistent. But like, it, it's still gonna be hard. You'll just to retreat. Get into. Trust me. Like, like you're gonna hit the target. You're gonna figure out ten yards in ten minutes, um, and you, so? you can't you can't break those arrows. So like, but but having a lot of them is is nice. Carbon arrows don't really break. Like you've got you can shoot a tree with those things and pull it back out. Uh, like, like you oh, reuse them. I thought they would like use. splinter and stuff, and like it was in extreme to mess cases. With. Like like uh, I've seen them like go into a deer and still be hanging out to some extent, and then the deer like clips that against a tree and that'll shatter it. But like we'd reuse them after it go through the they, they usually go through a deer. Mm-hmm. And, and it goes all the way through the deer. It sticks in the ground. And you just pull it out, and like it's usually still all good. I mean, the, the broadheads in the back with the string goes into it. Um, I knew it was called a knock. Um, I should have just used it like I was a pro. I think I've broken a <laughs> knock or two. Mm-hmm. I don't know how. <laughs> they they yeah. say that, except the thing I like, they have a huge okay. gamut of carbon arrows you can buy. And the most expensive have the, uh, the feather fletching on there because it like, folds down as it's going through that section of the of the bow i didn't get those i went for the like the cheapest carbon ones because i figured it wasn't worthwhile for my skill level to invest in really nice arrows i hope it doesn't like just tear those like plastic wings or whatever they are no those are called veins and uh they're gonna be fine i mean you've got like Hmm. two up and one down it's like that so like the one down just goes through the uh the rest anyway so like like it's gonna be fine my wingspan was 75 and three quarters but the um the uh the, you're gonna have fun with the bow that'll be cool yeah yeah i'm gonna uh, it's gonna be like a fun said, i'm gonna i'm gonna get one soon i'm gonna get one soon i've got a yeah. i've got two and the, oh, awesome i've got a recurve bow and i've got a compound bow i vastly prefer the compound bow <laughs> because it's i hate i was sitting there when you were talking about it, like oh compound bow little oh no, sorry recurve bow 30 pounds little bitch bow only a, a fucking child my <laughs> wife it, n- anyone could pull this thing and I swear to God, I have a 30 pound <laughs> recurve bow <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be a dick about it. <laughs> <laughs> but the difference is the compound bow is I've got one that's uh, 60 or 70 pounds easy as heck. And it feels like, listen, as a Brit, the deadliest any normal person can be is just holding a kitchen knife, mm-hmm. right? I've never shot a gun. I've really wanted to, but you just can't really do it in the UK. I've never felt deadlier than with this fucking Hawkeye-looking bow. The compound bow, it's got like a red dot sight. It's so fucking cool. The arrow moves faster than any object I've seen in real life. It's <laughs> what, uh, incredible. What, when did you start? Like, kind of getting oh, into it? Not too long ago. Or maybe like a few months ago, but... Getting I'm going to be talking to you about bow shit now. <laughs> you on Discord. <laughs> the di- yeah, the difference is getting into it with a compound bow is just you pick it up, you shoot maybe one shot, you're like, okay, I get it. Because it's just a sight. As long mm-hmm. as you can, you've got it dialed in already, as long as you can hold it and like, funk, it's it hits the mark almost every time. It's definitely like the smarter, like I don't plan on hunting at least. Like if I'm going to hunt, I'm going to bring one of my guns, frankly. Like I, I haven't, I have no plans for bow hunting, but I, I've I, everywhere I've read on the so forums fun. has said like it's way easier to learn a recurve and then move to compound than it is to learn on compound and move to recurve. Uh that seems like it'd be true. I really want the clips channel that you ha- guys have to get one title that's like PKA destroys crossdresser libtard about my- <laughs> <laughs> about guns. <laughs> yeah, some shit like that. Like, uh, I'm sure I could come up with something. Like, I, I kind of prefer the way you, the UK does gun laws, uh, which might be a device. No! Yeah. <laughs> I need that to be a title. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. I mean, I think that, like, because of the way it works here, at having an... Oh, by the way, bows and everything, crossbows, completely unregulated at all. You can be... I think you... I don't even think you need to be 18. You can just oh, wow. get this thing, and they're, they're deadly. Um... But, like, the state of the UK is pretty much, like, no one really has their hands on weaponry that can really uh, do damage. There's, mm-hmm. like, what, three gun deaths a year in it in each city or something? Mine was, like, the t- top, because there was three gun deaths in, like, 
a year, you know? It, it's kind of nuts like that. But with an arrow, with an archery, I feel like there's a barrier to entry where it's not like, oh, I'm going to just, I'm going to fuck this guy up. I'm really angry at him. Let me just go learn how to use a fucking recap bow. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's, it's kind of nice like that. Since no one has them, there's nothing to really defend against. I love that. I'm tempted that. to go to the UK with a recurve bow. Pull off a <laughs> massive school shooting and prove Finster wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot yeah. doesn't know. No. <laughs> <You're just laughs> <like> <laughs> <laughs> you've already that, you've the most that thing devastating that guy school shooting in world history carried out by a former minecraft server owner <laughs> who did it and i quote for the memes <laughs> <laughs> to spite another minecraft server owner yes. <laughs> have you ever There's seen like the one uk guy with a gun there and you just <laughs> just neck him with an arrow yeah. have you seen that guy on youtube who's like the fucking badass of all badasses with the with a recurve bow and he holds oh. the arrows between his fingers yeah like, like he's just got a big clutch of arrows and he's able to so 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 he literally shoots faster than legolas like like they, they like put legolas and him side by side split screen and he's faster it's the one that like curves arrows round yeah. shit as well yeah. yeah oh my god that guy's he also shoots a he exists in a world of his own. It's it's a different guy, I'm sure, but there's this guy who has like a trigger set up to launch things in the air and then he shoots at them. Same guy. And he'll have video. That's oh, it's cool. the same guy? Yeah, he'll shoot aspirins. Yeah. yeah. With a bow. Oh. He and there yeah. was one I, I saw recently, like you know, those those saws that you put in your obviously like your your what whatever the table saw, I guess. And he like Sounds had like it, you're doing it. Compound miter saw. Is that miter saw then? Like just a, <laughs> a solid circle about yay big. And he had it launched or he threw it and then he waited for it to start coming down and then he shot for it to come down and slice the arrow in two. It was so cool. That's really dope. Yeah. That's a, lo a lot of that is repetition. But uh the, the stuff that I'm impressed by is the is the speed. The other stuff, like it's I've still seen neat, how that man. stuff is done. Oh, it's Wait, still neat. Look. How do you shoot an aspirin? What's the trick to that? You shoot a lot. You shoot at a lot you of need aspirin. To buy four <laughs> bottles of aspirin and have I mean, a whole I, afternoon. No, they do it. Like, I saw him do it on a morning talk talk show. I don't know if it's the same guy. Ah, okay, I saw yeah. someone shoot the middle of a lifesaver. Oh, that's cool. Like what just heck? Un unprompted. He went, oh, if, I can probably if, do if, it now. If he can just do it like first try, yeah. Incredible. Yeah. He did it in front of an audience and that's different. That that is hundred percent different. But I can shoot aspirin out of the air. Yeah, there's like, like dude. I can shoot aspirin out of the air with a thousand tries. Yeah, but yeah, Kyle, you're talking about a gun. I imagine it's easier with a gun than with. It's a, a lot easier with a gun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. it's like, where is it now? And now it's not there. I shot it at where it was in the gun. Oh no, there. no, I could like like using like a 22 rifle. Like like I could definitely like toss aspirin. How, how oh you like you just throw it out there? Yeah, I would throw them. Like like I, how I many tries would it take you with a gun? I definitely do it within 20 tries. Like 100 that's pretty good that's really impressive yeah. like 100 percent, because like i can do gravel like that that are like only slightly bigger and, and hit those really regularly did you never think of doing like uh back when you were doing the fps russia channel did you not think of doing like a dude perfect style it's hard thing? to film that stuff and it's really? um yeah yeah it's 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 hard to like get that actually filmed correctly so that it doesn't look like it's been it's 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 too easy to fake that stuff uh, and and that that's and people will always just just call shenanigans when when you uh, when you do something like that like it's just too easy to fake yeah, because like, like yeah. even if you have like a slow motion camera just catching an aspirin coming through the air and getting shot like all we need is like to get that footage and then I can be like throw the fucking aspirin like do a loop de loo turn around and shoot and then <laughs> cut to like slow motion footage of an aspirin get it exploding like. It's it's too easy to fake. And I went like, on like uh, a spree of your videos where you did that, where you had a mannequin at just an impossible range, and you were like, "Let's see if I can hit that guy," and then it just hit him square in the <laughs> forehead. Not a cut to different shot. There's no yeah. fucking way. It'd oh, be no. fun if you did oh, the I... dude perfect thing. And that the first shot job. seemed pretty legit. The second shot, like really, and then you go into the obviously I'm faking it <laughs> like phase of this, you know? Oh like, yeah, yeah. Across the ocean, I don't. Yeah, know. yeah. Like, I got another <laughs> state. You're on the phone. You're on the phone with the guy throwing the target. Did you throw it? Yeah. Uh, Finn, when you when you're shooting your bows, what distance are you doing it at? Just like plinking around practicing. Well, I live in the UK, so our yards are really quite small. But I've got um, I wouldn't know what it would be in 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 feet, but it's I think like meters. Would, that's about like a yard. Yeah, what, what I guess maybe like twenty meters. 
Okay. Pretty- yeah, that, that's where they say but, like ten to twenty meters or yards or whatever is kind of where you want to be practicing. Yeah, it felt like I've but I've missed as well, and I've got a fence. There's no. I got really. I was. I only felt confident doing it because I've got a, a fence. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a lot of feet. <clears throat> I got a fence that's um. The board, the back of it is like a brick building, like a brick shed that someone else has built. So I felt pretty confident. I wasn't going to go over that. I'm not that bad of a shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I was, then I did it. <laughs> but I, I, uh, you just have to listen for a scream. <sighs> yeah. Oh, okay. With with that compound bow, though, I'm sure Carl know that thing will go through a fence panel, like at oh, yeah. like 60, 70 pound draw right? It's it it is like a shockingly powerful thing. You know, they talk about like force multipliers. Mm-hmm. That's one I've just never I've, experienced. I've arced them up before present. and shot to see how far it would go. They just keep on going. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how far. I don't know how far. Several Ding! hundred yards. Like, in the sun. like, like maybe 300, 400? I don't know. It just kept going. That's super far. Like yeah, from, my, from that far hill at my dad's mo. house, just sort of thunk. It cleared the entire valley. And that's 250 yards? Like like something like that? Like Yeah, I, I didn't mean to imply you were wrong. Just I was surprised. Yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. I, yeah. yeah, I've only done it once because arrows were, you know, it's like, we're throwing an arrow away right now so it's like, right and, and, and especially back then like daddy was buying my arrows so it's like i don't want to throw arrows away i don't want to have to go get another dozen or whatever but yeah uh compound bows are super strong crossbows are super strong um hunting is so much fun taylor if you ever like that's the I next mean, i've step. gone gun hunting a ton of times but i've never gone bow hunting ever it's like it's like condom sex versus no condom sex like, like oh. <laughs> okay i got a bow hunt yeah, it's it, it, it's 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 like it, it's so much more fun. Like, like, what can you bow hunt that isn't deer? Because I hate sitting still that oh, many hours well, for deer. Well, bow I hunt mean, a person. I, I, mean, I guess we could like kidnap some sort of a farm animal and tie it up for you, like Jurassic Park. Like, you okay. just want to go shoot. A, okay. you go I shoot can't. A, I can't uh, be a bad pheasant hunter. <laughs> with the, with the bow, or actually, with a, be no, the with best a compound pheasant bow, hunter of all. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's guys who shoot. There's a special arrows to, to shoot birds out of the air with uh, your your that that's when you actually want a recurve bow because you need to be able to draw quickly. You know, you're sitting there with the arrow in the knock and you're ready to go. And when the pheasant flies up, thunk. can you draw faster with recurve than compound? Yeah, because with the compound you have to you have to like break um, it down and get it back, and then you, you're aiming. But with the uh, with the recurve bow, not only is the draw just a simple straight back thing. There's no mechanical stuff going on where it's like mm-hmm. harder, harder, easier. And it, 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 you can be more fluid with it, it, with a motion like this, and also you don't need to like aim. You can shoot by feel with a with a recurve bow, which is what those guys do. Yeah, I just like. Let me find a video of somebody of uh, shooting pheasant with a with a with a bow. It's it's nutty. Yeah, no, yeah that's the, uh, incredibly impressive. That's the thing with the recurve bow that I was on about. Like, I can I can if I go like whoop, I can get back, but holding it there is just awful at thirty pounds for me. Mm-hmm. But with a compound bow, or you, I can get sixty pounds back, pretty pretty simply because holding it there's like five pounds of weight, like it's yeah. It's nothing. And then you can hold it for a long time, and you, you can stand a relatively long that. time. Yeah. yeah. Taylor it's, was like, "What should I hunt? Because deer are boring." And I'm instantly thinking, like, <laughs> "Have you seen Running Man, <laughs> the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie?" I have not. Is is uh, he hunting people? Yeah. He's being hunted by people. <laughs> <laughs> well, that uh, sounds I, pretty cool. I, I put the video in there. It's time stamped. But I mean, look at that, and you can tell like what he did there isn't crazy hard. Like, just takes practice. I mean, that's that's it's a pretty good thing tough. he had a dog. <sighs> oh, actually, oh. I don't know what happens if there's no dog. I mean, if an arrow goes in something enough to like stick it there, it's probably done its damage. Like that yeah. thing's yeah. gone eventually. Especially a pheasant. That thing's already. Yeah. Dead. Did he kick it into the air in that video? It looked like that he just found one. And unsporting. Kicked it. Mm. He did have a bow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I yeah. saw you talking um, about that thing with like uh, someone spear hunted a bear. Yeah. And it was like it's a te- it's an achievement for that. I think a bow is like kind of in the middle of that, and a gun. Like it's gonna oh, be yeah. something like, especially with a recurve bow. I'm not yeah. entirely for hunting um, animals with spears, but yeah, a bow I could kind of get behind. It, like, 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 except except for like wild boar because I don't I I don't know I don't think of them as cute and cuddly with feelings. I think of them as like pests. But um, um, we were talking to some guys the other day that hunt them with uh with lances, which is a spear, and uh, and dogs. So they put the dogs in those Kevlar vests. The dogs chase the pig down. They like bite the pig, hold it, and the and the hunter comes along with a spear and he, he spears the hog to death, or he uses a knife 
Yeah, um, and, and, and stabs at Jeff with a knife. But uh, but hunting with a compound bow is a pretty big challenge. There's no compound bow hunting that I'm aware of that doesn't involve sitting in a deer stand, though, uh, whether you're hunting pigs, deer, or bear, which is the only things I would really hunt. Um, I would like to kill a bear with a bow, though. I'm probably going to make that my mission in the, by, uh, by this time next year. That would be yeah. cool. And you don't want to eat it, though, right? Rogan's t- talks like they taste good. I don't know. I bet I they. Know. I, I mean, would try you just it. Have to just prepare it. Diff- like I bet you could make a roast out of it. That would be. I good. think that's what they. I think that's what he mentioned was some sort of a bear roast. Uh, I would try it for sure, uh, just to see what's up. Um, and if you're going to go through the expense of traveling somewhere, mm-hmm. killing a bear with a bow, like <laughs> might as well eat it at that point, right? Of course, would- that's that's like the entire fun part of hunting is getting to eat it. I kind of figured that they needed to be like, I've heard the whole like invasive species thing. I thought that that was like a need for you to be able to hunt. I always kind of like, uh, I mean, I think the whole like hunting for sport can sometimes be a bit of a, like a bit of a dick move when it's like, eh, you know, they weren't really doing anything. But when it's like, you know, you hear about like this one specific breed of like, whatever is like a terror on the ecosystem. And they Mm. just tell the government just tells people fucking shoot on sight. Like that's how wild boar are work. in Texas. They're uh, yeah. they're an invasive like crossbred species that's calling call, causes millions in agricultural damage. Um, yeah. So it's a they they reproduce like rabbits and um, and they have no natural predators down there. Not really. I think there's some big cats, but um, not enough to farm, handle that problem. Farmers have kind of put the big cats out of business that used to live in that area. Um, mm-hmm. So they really don't have any true predators. Coyotes can't really fuck. With and them. like when you're thinking of trophy hunting, like I think of elephants giraffes stuff like that like there's a i think of like a chasm of difference between hunting a giraffe or like a dying lion and shooting a deer yeah that's shitty i think the whole like elephants giraffe shit like that that's kind of like a i don't know that seems Mm -hmm. shitty to me and even then when they do it the reason like they have specific like you can't just go out there and be like i bought a lion hunting permit they'll be like Okay, we need to find one specific lion who is a former alpha male who's no longer fertile, who's scaring off younger males from propagating the species. So you can kill that one. And then the money that you spend to shoot that animal is often put right into conservation. So like that's the thing that a lot of people that look down on that sort of thing don't realize. Um, I, I've told the story before. I don't remember the exact details, but there was this this species of deer or something or antelope or something where – the vast majority of they're endangered and the vast majority of them existed in Texas because of the big wild game ranches they've got out there and they made it illegal to hunt them, which now meant that the game ranches have no reason to keep them. Now they have a liability on their hands. If somebody accidentally shoots an endangered Ibex or whatever the fuck it was, now they're in big fucking shit. So they just killed them all. Like it's illegal to hunt them, but you can slaughter your property. So they just, now they're like, super uh borderline extinct because mm. they didn't want people coming to like shoot this deer uh, but but the shooting of the deer was what was keeping them in business um and a lot of those a lot of those paid hunts the money goes right into conservation that doesn't mean i like to see like fucking trump's son holding the goddamn elephant's tail though that's just mm. that's not yeah. a good look that, that's not a good look at all but like all the money they paid to hunt an elephant is or a huge percentage of it in like fucking nigeria or wherever is helping elephant habitats and they probably ate the whole elephant they use all of the elephant there <laughs> they use all of the elephant there. the truck would be made elephant. into condoms <laughs> i bet elephant <laughs> tastes like shit i bet elephant it's really like tough shit. just re- yeah it, it probably does they're, they're always so old as well <clears throat> if you're gonna trophy hunt they should like the ultimate trophy hunt should be like you're on foot hunting a healthy hippo <laughs> <laughs> like you if you kill that you deserve it i would want a big rifle the biggest. I want to be guys, able to call in air assaults. All this ancient weapon talk has me looking at throwing spheres. You can get them on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> of fucking course you can. can I, <laughs> I like your moxie. Go with the throwing axes. Oh, I just I have a uh, I have a shuriken target that I bought for my bow and arrow that would really work for a throwing spear too. Ah, I feel you. I only yeah. mentioned the axes because it's it would knock it over. I've thrown That's spears fun. before and it's hard to do um because really? it's hard to because you because you get straight like a football like, like you can't though because the football you put spin on it's it's this mm. thing where like every time you throw the spear when you're not good at it like i am i got a straw perfect it, it it wants to like 
come out of your hand like this or like this or like twist it to the left or right to get the spear to like do mm-hmm. this perfect like parabola, I guess, or what, what whatever you wanted to do, like an arrow would. Uh, it's it's hard the 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 release and everything. Whereas with the the throwing axe, you're just really stabilizing it with that flip. And there's mm-hmm. I mean there's places you can go. It became really trendy, kind of like escape rooms did for a while. To like uh-huh. I've seen so many chicks on Tinder who are like throwing throwing axes, and, and it's like a they're there's fun places to, to go to do. Yeah, alternate idea: buy the spear. But then construct a bow around it. Just a fucking a a, a, so a, ballista. Yeah, a, a ballista. <laughs> ballista. Now that okay, if someone was gonna go, I'd be all right. What with if you had a truck and... mounted ballista that like cranks up oh. like this and like, like like it's got like a rotating seat? Can you can you do that as a felon? <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Oh, it's yeah. like attached to the winch, and so it's such a fast oh, reload. Then, 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 yeah. then it Smith and Wesson will sell you three throwing axes and three throwing knives for 56 bucks. That's, That's a good Don't deal. Fuck around. You couldn't call it FPS Russia, though, if you did that. It'd be FP... <laughs> FPB? <laughs> FPT, first-person thrower. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be so good. You come back as just... you think things. like Hello, Stone my Age friend. I again. have lost a lot of rights in the last... <laughs> <laughs> well, now we are going to first test... Slingshots. <laughs> this, but it this, original, this, sling. this channel sucks now. <laughs> <laughs> I'd really like to see the take on it because you managed to make that just would like, be funny. Just, you managed to make everything extreme. Somehow it'd be a slingshot that somehow explodes a target. Yeah. Some shit. <laughs> oh god. Do you know anything that would explode from a slingshot? Would Red Dot do that? Um. Yeah, I could come up with something that would explode. Uh, an exploding projectile to come out of a slingshot pretty easily. Yeah. I meant an exploding target. Oh, a target. Um, yeah, I could rig it out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're just such a nonchalant. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, just <laughs> use, you would just use... Um, I mean, you'd essentially be making a pressure-sensitive bomb as a target. Um, a lot of so- pressure-sensitive bombs... I'm telling you this, I recognize. Like, even a shotgun won't set them off. Like, you need a more uh, a faster. So, uh, that's why I was asking about a slingshot. Like, could you rig something that would work? I would again? use 209 shotgun primers uh, placed in a cluster, focusing in on some sort of uh, container filled with an explosive like black powder or um, something like that that I won't go too much into. But the, it, the, two, the, the primers would explode and ignite it with. You can take two and nine primers and put them in a shot in a in a slingshot. I used to do this all the time and like shoot it in a brick house and they'll explode on impact. It's the part of the, you know, it's the primer from a shotgun shell. Mm-hmm. But you can buy them and back then they were cheaper. Who knows what reading, reloading supplies cost now? But like back then, I just had hundreds and hundreds of them and it was fun to shoot them and they pop. Everything on earth is back ordered right now. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Yeah, well, that sort of thing. I, I like that idea. I hope he gets into the archery thing, though. The next step is is the hunting. It's so fucking thrilling to like be in a deer stand with like a, I don't know. It's a lot of pressure for me. It was anyway, and I guess it, it's multifaceted. For one thing, I wanted to like you know, make my dad proud, but for another, like it was like it was our hobby at the time. It was what I was like hyper focused on, like getting good at and like accomplishing that goal of killing a deer was such a big deal for me that year. When I with made, a bow, it's impressive. I, f- I kind of fit into that camp of like with a gun, you're in like easy mode, but with a with a bow, I can kind of respect it in a way. If you kill a deer with a bow, as long as you're like nice about it, right? Like I've killed them with everything. Bow. Yeah, I've, I've killed That's deer it. with um with uh with bows, with black powder weapons, and with uh, center fire rifles. It's more um, fair, I think. With a with a pistol, <laughs> um, with a shotgun. You everything, I think. Hmm. I, I bit one. Bit one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he bit me oh. first. <laughs> I believe that I would. I, I believed it for a second. <laughs> the I was about to say the bow hunting thing. When I made paramotor videos, I was very aware of the fact that this is fun to do, but it's not necessarily fun to watch. It's just sky sitting, right? Uh, bow hunting is that times 10. I'm sure it's fun to do. I'm sure there's a little stress. You've got your adrenaline going. You're trying to do something good under pressure. But to watch it, oh my goodness. What if I'm shooting apples off of Jeremy's head? <laughs> oh. you I'd, you? I'd sub for that. It'd be based on Jeremy's reactions. Right, how scared he was. I Look at how much he reacts scared. with an arrow through his forehead. Ah! <laughs> you knocked my tooth out. He caught that, that shuriken. Ah! <laughs> Wait, doesn't Jeremy have all new teeth? Or am I mixed up? Oh, he's on got that? dentures. They flop around. 
Uh, we can we can get rid of those real quick with an arrow. <laughs> How much would you need to pay? Uh, was it Jeremy, the one that just held the explosive or something? Yeah. Um, that's see, uh, that's on the same level as put an apple on your head. Oh, I'm going to no, try and fucking shoot not. it. Um, really? But, like, no. And, and it's meant to look incredibly dangerous, but to be mm. wishy-washy dangerous. You know, the explosives are on the end of a stick that are stuck in one of those zombie targets, and they're in the right. zombie's head. So, like, he's separated from the explosion by, like, three and a half, four feet. Um, which might sound scary, but like <laughs> this is an explosion that doesn't produ- produce a lot of shrapnel. It's really just concussive yeah. force. So it's like there's a little little flashbang going up above his head. It's it's loud for him, but outdoors it's not that loud. It's not that dangerous. So there's but like shooting an arrow off his head. Like there's a twenty five percent chance he dies. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the wings trip. Yeah, no, the um, I I saw you blew up blew up a boat, and I think that in that moment I realized, okay, there's got to be different tiers of explosive, because you were standing <laughs> next to that, and it was it was enough. Did you blow like, up a boat, or is he? Conf- you I did blew up a boat, a, like a oh. rowboat or something, right? Bass boat, yeah, yeah. It, okay. But like fiberglass. I don't know how f- on on video it looked like you were maybe five meters something from it, like about five feet, about five 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 yeah. yards, yeah. Too close to that boat, but is and it's such a, a thing. Well, I had to get close because all I had was a dragon off sniper rifle. I wanted to make sure I hit it. Yeah, and it was one of those explosions. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those explosions that, like, you hear on on the microphone of a camera. A big explosion, is like, <laughs> but like a really powerful one, just boom. <laughs> like it's a really short sound effect, and it was fucking terrifying. Like the grass moved. Yeah, yeah, that was a big explosion. Um, that yeah. wasn't a different tier of explosives. That was just more of them. Yeah, but like, how does no one die from? I feel like that's the sort of thing I'd see and go, well, okay, anything within like a big radius of that is gone. The things that, that two things kill you from explosion there's the shrapnel, which is the most lethal thing. It's throwing mm. bits of usually metal. Um, that's the scary part because metal is hard, sharp, and it moves quickly because it's dense. But if, you're, if your target is mostly made out of light, soft, squishy stuff like foam or fiberglass to some extent fiberglass isn't ideal it it catches the wind and it doesn't go very far like like it, it reaches like terminal velocity or whatever that the whatever as fast as the explosion can make it go and then the wind catches it and it sort of loses that speed really quickly and fades out um so that wasn't really a concern there unless there was like a bolt or a nut or a washer or something that happened to be right next to the explosive charge the other thing is pressure waves and with the explosives that we're using there the tannerite you're not really creating much of a pressure wave. You need a big fucking amount of just about anything to create a pressure wave. And pressure waves will liquefy organs. They'll rupture organs. They'll turn your liver into goo from from certain ranges. And you just didn't have to worry about either of those things in that situation. So a lot of that stuff's made to look stupid dangerous, but to be, well, that wasn't smart, was it? Yeah, we're well, okay. <laughs> how much, like, how many magnitudes of that would there be? Like, how many... How many boats from that range worth of explosive would you need to be like, okay, maybe we should take a step back from this? Depends what it's what it's in. It depends like, like again, like like what it's if it's just explosive sitting naked on the yeah, ground. Yeah. I mean, I I've shot like five pounds from fifteen feet or something like that, like like right up against it. Um, and you just feel like the wind blow your hair back and you feel like a thump in your chest, like if somebody's got a badass sound system. So you can get really close to that if it's in foam. It's uh, but but like if you're blowing a car up, you need to be a good distance away in case what happened in that one video happens and a, and a door or something comes flying at you, right? Um, That's how like I introduce you. I go like, oh, I'm going on a podcast with that one guy, FPS Russia, and they go, who was that? You remember that one guy? <laughs> like the door flipper. They yeah. Go, ah, yeah. So, yeah. There's the meme like- of you sitting on the thing too. I forget. Oh, the Bofors gun. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure you're right. Yeah, yeah, forty that's millimeter Bofors anti aircraft gun. Yeah, I see that meme a lot. Um, yeah, that's a funny one. <laughs> I got the I got the I got the big Afro wig on the mannequin. Hmm. Uh, that thing just that that was a lot of explosives inside of him. I don't remember. I think that might be ten pounds strapped to his chest, and then you hit it with that with that gun. And because it's such a big projectile going so fast, it it. It allow it allows all the explosives to go off. That was a big explosion. That flattened the grass around him. God. But yeah, uh, we really appreciate you coming on, Fenster. 
Thank you I so much. It's been a right. blast. We Where appreciate is. you putting your big titties on. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for the big titties. Where can everybody find you? Uh, Finsta. It's weirdly spelled, but it's it's down there on the screen. It's with numbers in it, like an old Xbox gamer tag. And the uh, yeah, on uh, on Twitch, on YouTube, everything's basically just Finsta. On YouTube, Finsta Live. If you want to see our Megal videos, it's just Finn. F I N N, like a normal name. And if nice. you're a Minecrafter, MC Prison and Skyblocky. Oh, thank you. I'm sure Finster will hook up Colin with some ranks. <laughs> I'll get his IGN off you. I'll rank on every server, I promise. The princess pack, that's the biggest one. That's the highest tier. Oh, we'll give him such an embarrassing tag. <laughs> awesome. Very good. PKA, five, six.